디아렉스 파이팅! 디아렉스 파이팅! Hello and welcome to another day of the LCK. I am Valdez. With me is Chronicler today, and we're going to be bringing you some really great League of Legends. Some of them down towards the bottom of the standings, but some of them later on towards the top of the standings. We are going to start with DRX versus OK Brion, and between the two teams in three matches, they have one game win. Chronicler. We really get the full spectrum of LCK here today. We go, yeah. we start at the bottom, and then and we're now gonna we're go. Here. Now, and now we're here. Uh, well, we're not, we're still at the bottom. Later. But eventually, <laughs> we will be here. Uh, as we do take a look, DRX and Bro both really, really struggling. In different ways, I think that for DRX, uh, even though they have only a single game win, I think that single game win actually makes a big difference. And uh, at the same time, for, for Breon, uh, they haven't really gotten a win, and I also think they haven't really gotten that close. On the flip side, DRX has also faced off against teams like Nongshim, who also 2-0 them. So for both teams, you need a win. You know, we were a really big fan of talking about narratives and, and, and developments. The reality is, if you don't win, at some point your team is going to go boom. And I think for both teams, they're looking at this and like, if we don't win this, yeah. it is doomed. Definitely a do or die match for both of these teams, and it's understandable, right? You want to get these wins. Your schedule for the rest of the round is not easy. You have to deal with a lot of strong teams, and, you know, this is their best chance. It's just as straight up as that for both teams facing off against each other. Uh, one of them, DRX, has to go up against T1, and Breon has to go up against KT. <laughs> Where will Azir, who's on a 10 loss streak, end up? As currently a 25% win rate, who will end Azir's losing streak? Karis has played it five times to five losses so far, Chronicler. I hope uh, that, that Azir will not end up anywhere and he will be ignored because he has not been doing so hot. We have seen the Corky kind of take the place of the mid lane uh, scaling safe pick, which is able to have a really big impact later in the game. As it's really interesting, Teddy and Envy have actually completely dodged each other because back in 2022, Envy was still playing behind Ice, uh, currently, of course, part of BDS in the yeah. UFC. Uh, Teddy took a break when Envy was the starter last year around. And we will see. I think Teddy actually, I had some, some choice words for him in, in week number one. I think his week number two already looks a lot better. He was one of the uh, little glimpses yeah. of light that we saw for DRX. I mean, clearly, you know, form is temporary and class is permanent with this player, and I I'm looking forward to seeing when he will be able to show up for this team. It's not just about the individual performance of the players, though. I feel like both of these teams have been plagued by struggling to get it together as a team. The team fighting hasn't been there. The proactive plays haven't really been there either. And so DRX, you know, they've been a little bit better than the side of OK Breon, who are currently in 10th. But it's still, it's not easy going for this team. And they need to have someone really come out as the leader. They have two veterans in this lineup, Rascal and Teddy. But it still feels like they don't really have a strong direction in some of these games. And the only one who really has been performing uh, even above the level that was expected of is Pleda which is not what I would have expected coming into this roster. Satep to us, I think, the most disappointing, but that's because our expectations were rather high coming in from challengers. Um, we'll see if this is the match where he's able to kind of keep it together. I think you see a lot of tense faces here as well. Normally, both these teams, I think, uh, particularly Brian, are, are full of smiles, but I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of tension. And it makes sense, again, this is the one that if you lose, it's going to feel like, at the very least, your round one is not going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, even just getting the one win off of your back, right? Like, just win one game of League of Legends, and you'll feel a little bit better. I know that the coaching staff has been pretty disappointed with, OK, we're in good spots. We're actually being proactive, said Edgar. But not being able to close it out from some of those nice positions that they finally put themselves into uh, was pretty disappointing. So. Definitely going to be looking towards that in this game as we take a look at the key player matchup. It is Teddy who does have some very nice stats of his own. 
Again, some of the stats like damage percentage, that's you know, that can be a little bit misleading, but in terms of like damage per gold, doing pretty well. Maybe, well, maybe he's not getting that much gold. <laughs> but either way, you know, he is performing to a decent level, whereas Envy, unfortunately, not quite the same level just yet. And to me, the big difference is, uh, especially when we look at the 2v2, right, which when talking about 80 carries, we can't really uh, do enough, is Plata's performance. And Teddy, to me, he was already stepping it up. If Rascal can get it together as well, we know the heights that this player is capable of. That could be the difference maker for DRX. For Envy, unfortunately, it's been uh, a lot of struggling, obviously. Was on Sandbox, then went to LGD. Now back in the LCK at Grion. But neither him nor Effort have really uh, been able to impress. And I, they, they were kind of saved by the existence of the Kwangnong bot lane, but that bot lane has now been broken up. Uh, Bull is here. He's good. Andil, yeah, he's uh, got, great. Andil apparently is amazing. So uh, for these teams here today, I think this is the choice or uh, rather a really good opportunity to prove that uh, we do in fact improve. We can make it happen. And it's now or never. And it's 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 interesting to say because we're at the end of, of week two. But yeah. we have seen this in many leagues, in many teams. You just need a win. It's just just, just, just one. one. Just, yeah. just a win. Just a singular, even just a game of League of Legends. DRX have tasted the victory once. Breon have not. And, you know, you mentioned it. I mean, it's a lot of tense faces. It's some awkward smiles, sheepishness, you know, trying to just get on out here and perform for the fans, for yourself, and show off what you actually have. Because, I, you know, I'm sure these teams, they do pretty well in scrims, and then they come out here and get kind of blasted, and you're like, well, nothing's going right. So that can be really detrimental to your, your current mentality as a team and as an individual. So... Yeah, it is a it is a battle between ninth and tenth, and there always has to be a ninth and tenth team. But hopefully, one of these teams can bounce back and potentially use this as the foundation for a decent run here at the LCK. DRX have selected blue side, and it does feel like our teams have mostly gone back to just picking blue side in these uh, games. The red side, it feels like also they're getting better at punishing the bottom lanes uh, on the red side against the red side, so that has been uh, maybe part of the reason. But let's take a look at what this draft is going to bring us. So the main development of the second week of LCK has been the rise of Corky and us collectively realizing again that there is a free item combination that makes him unfun and not great. Now this Oriana Ben can mean one of many things. I think Oriana is uh, probably the most well-rounded mid laner that is there at the moment. I don't think her peaks are as high as Corky, but I do think her early laning presence and her combos with things like the Nocturne really put her over the top. But it also scares me, because if this is an Oriana band to set up for a, a zero pick, then it would fill me with sadness and dread. <laughs> and I don't it think is. that it will end up going very well as this is a very heavy focus here from DRX to try and get Teddy in a situation where he does have a big impact. Really raises the impact of picks like both the Kalista to me is, is the standout, right? Kalista Draven is a handshake that we might be looking at. But otherwise, Ash is in a really interesting position where she's made it through more and more drafts and when she is picked, she also doesn't look that amazing. Now yeah. we'll see if that's the priority here. The other obvious one to me is Milio. Haven't really seen a counter to this and uh, this is a much more aggressive. So you either go Callista Renata or you go Milio, and then you probably pick up an Aphelios and go from there. But DRX, uh, show of confidence here from Teddy. Definitely putting their eggs into a certain Teddy basket, and I don't think that's a bad idea at all. Um, I do worry, like you, Chronicler, that we are just going to see the Azir slammed here okay. early as well. Um, Zyra Khan has been very high on the win rate stats. Uh, they are the most winning bot lane. Rakan right now is 11 and 2. And Zaya herself is seven and two. So a lot of winning there. Obviously not the strongest early laning phase, so you might get punished here by the Kalissa Renata. And we are saved from the Kara Sazir because Satap picks it blinds. And the crowd goes mild as another Azir pick is locked in. Corky's open. I uh, wonder if we're going to see that, but no, Who's not going to be the case here. Especially given how many, how much issues both these teams have had with closing games out. I just feel like Corky is such a no-brainer, but 
probably going to be a ban in the second rotation here. Now, the Ash was available. The Ash actually started coming up as a pick specifically into the Rakan because of how much damage it could do. Early level 1 is one of the places where the Rakan can be quite weak. I think that the Renata is much better when it comes to these early skirmishes, but definitely not going to be as aggressive as uh, the Ash would be in the lane. Does have a lot more longevity though. Ondil still f uh, fresh at the forefront of our minds with some amazing ultimates yesterday. And for o uh, OK Man Brian, it looks like they're just going for a very straightforward teamfight composition. Keeping it easy, keeping it simple when you are in a very, very deep hole uh, when it comes to getting wins, I think is a good call as the Corky is unsurprisingly gonna get taken away. Yeah, I mean, Maokai is really strong as well. So they just prioritize that and maybe, you know, we don't really know what Karas is comfortable on. You would hope he's at least comfortable enough to play Corky as ear after all these years, but maybe he just didn't want to. They wanted to prioritize Gideon's Maokai and we're gonna be seeing something new from Karas. He has played Akali in the past. There was that one play on Hanwa. Yeah, everybody remembers that one play. That one time, and it was that that, if I remember correctly, Setup actually had an incredible amount of difficulty against. But I do want to reiterate, if this Akali gets locked in, Setup got solo killed a bunch of times by Closer. Closer, for all his faults, is the type of player where if he gets a solo kill on one of his melee, you, you, the game's just done. That's just, that's how it goes, right? I think Closer isn't a very, uh, a player with a lot of depth. But he does do that one thing. He's great at that. Very, very well. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I do think that Karis' performance hasn't given him that much faith in Akali. I also think playing Akali into specifically the Renata can be quite tough because so much of your value comes from being able to very, uh, very effectively eliminate targets. Uh, Sponge actually going to the Lee here is quite interesting. Really trying to go for a more aggressive style. I do really like that with Renata and Kalista though. Trying to play very much for the mid game here. Given how hard it's been to finish games, I don't know if that's enough. As these Oregon. solo lanes, <laughs> they have a lot of they have a lot of potential. But the play that we've seen out of Morgan and Karas would give me a little bit of pause when evaluating this. I mean, Yone and Tatrox, great. We've seen it win a lot. Yone right now is four and zero, but Morgan's pulling out the Yone. This is yes. something and I don't know if I've ever. Have we ever seen this? I don't Has know. Has he ever played this champ? And I also want to reiterate that, I the want to know. that the inventor of Yone into Aatrox is Zeus, who is also not generally the guy you want to look to. Yeah. Because he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's built different. We'll see. I do got to say uh, the composition of the RX will have a lot more agency, but is riskier to me. I do think you reach a point in the game eventually where if you make too many mistakes, which we have seen from the RX in their game against Firax, for example, uh, it could be a problem, but you will have a lot more impact in how you play out. You can go for early skirmishes, go for early fights with this Lee, Renata and Kalista, and you can really break open the game. Now, the side laning the one for one power is amazing for Brian, but I actually really like their initial instinct of just going for straight up front to back team fight. And that they did kind of pivot away from. They definitely did. And Morgan, this is his first game of competitive Yone um, ever. So we're going to see how that works out for him. I'm sure he's played a lot, solo queue, scrims, etc. But he is moving away from the Renekton one trick moniker. We are moving on to greater pastures here for this player. But guys, we have game number one on the way. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Game number one of today. We've had a couple of longer days here at the LCK. Friday, Saturday, were you were getting your money's worth, you know, if you got tickets. Um, we had six games and then five games. What are we expecting today? Is this one going to go long? I feel like Bro in the past have been known to kind of sit back and not try to bring the action. Um, Dear, I have struggled a little bit with that as well. So I am worried that, especially in this first series, we might see a little bit of slow gameplay. I am very confident that it'll it'll be a it'll be a three in a row of, of long days, Feldas. <laughs> um, and and if you're lucky, uh -huh. you know, and and you. Uh, you were a challenger official. They get four long days in a row with uh, 
to Monday, uh, tomorrow, Monday, of course, also a lot of gameplay happening there. But for today, I, I gotta say, particularly with how DRX, uh, their match against Foxes went, there was a lot of upside, but the way in which they try to close out some of the games was not necessarily faith-inspiring. So I do think that that's going to be the case here. And the same, honestly, can be said for Brian. Obviously, they haven't been able to get a win, but even at their best, Brian were never known for being a fast team. Outside of the what, one in like 10 games where Umti just went full general and... Yeah, he just ganked every just, lane and then it ended in 20 minutes. Yeah, that's happened a few times. As, yeah, that, and there, this is not one of those lists where you're like, oh, all of these players would have BDDs in there. Like a Faker's in there, Showmaker's in there. Um, these are some, some, some experienced players that are also on good teams that still lost on this pick. Hands are, I, I want to say, apprehension when they got locked in. Yeah. The, the groans sadness, from the crowd but... kind of told the story. Here comes Sponge, he's on a ward. And Gideon can just mostly ignore that. Might have to give up his wolves, but that's better than losing his tree life. And he's going to spot him here. They don't have any prow on bot side, of course, so Sponge can kind of just... This is his jungle, actually. He, he's just moving into his jungle, thinking about if he wants to farm some of his jungle. But eventually he does move away, and Gideon will get his wolves. Well, I actually would have loved that they went for an invade there. With the amount of jungle prior they have, I think they really could have bullied uh, Gideon out, because now you've wasted a ton of time. Gideon is going to be able to just resume his full clear. And with picks like Granada especially, I think trying to go for these early invades and forcing Gideon to back actually wastes a lot of time. Could have been really valuable. The one upside of this is that Plata and Teddy know that Gideon is uh, towards the top side of the map and is 100% not going to bother them. So they can remain... Very aggressive in this 2v2, which is uh, idea to what you want to do on the Kalista. Yeah, they're definitely doing a good job of that down here in the bottom lane. Gideon was able to move into the river with some help from Morgan and pick up a Scuttle Crab and just go back to farming. So no real effect uh, from the Lee Sin onto the Maokai. And Gideon just gets to basically full clear his whole jungle, which is what he wants to do at this point. Karis does take a bit of damage, but Sitab is a bit low on mana, so... Yeah, I would expect this to be just fine in the mid lane. Yeah, big reason here as well is that Envy and Afro don't have to be worried about them getting dove on this wave, uh, even though Pl Teddy and Platter were trying to stack the wave because they also spotted Sponge as so, Gideon. Sponge, I mean, this is on the side of the map where Akaris is, and Setab is able to get over and just hop on over to Setab, so I suppose he stole some of those, but... Gideon spite is on cooldown, so perhaps not. Yeah, he did. I, I think he got some small ones. He definitely didn't get the big Raptor, though. Gideon uh, smote that one away. And it's, again, I, I don't want to see this type of apprehension from DRX, uh, given that once the burst comes through, especially from Gideon, like the early cooldowns of Maokai are actually quite high. Could have looked for something there. But Satan didn't have a lot of mana, so I think this specific instance does make sense. And... At the same time, DRX are starting to build some leads, right? We see the bot lane in particular working out quite nicely as Sponge is going to start up this dragon. And you don't have to dive. You don't have to uh, go for these early all-ins if you can just start stacking dragons with your Callista Renata very early on. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, the dragon stacking, I think it got nerfed right in the preseason just a little bit, some of the individual dragons, but... Still, it's still good. Yeah, <laughs> and it's much better than the void bubs. The void bubs are nice, and you see that Gideon's getting them because you know he might as well. He doesn't have much of his jungle to farm at this point in time. There's nowhere to gank, so it's kind of just like a consolation prize in my mind most of the time when you are getting these bubs. And now he's just going to go back and go straight to his gromp and continue clearing it out as you do. They really do do their best, but they just can't quite stack up to. Dra you know, Dragon's getting A's. Straight A's, excels at yeah. everything. In the grubs, they're like, you're a hard worker. Like, that doesn't... They're like a solid B minus. Yeah. C plus, and they're, you know, they're doing their homework, they're working hard, but it's not quite... It's just not the ...working. Same. <laughs> <laughs> they're not really getting much out of it. But, yeah. It, it can be... I feel like it's very win more. You know, like, if you get a big play, and then you're just... You take down a turret because you have a bunch of buffs, that feels very nice, but... Especially in the LCK, sometimes we just don't have that wild swing 
that some other regions have where it's like, okay, uh, you know, we made a huge play and now we're going to get something big off of it. It's like, oh, we traded one for one and now we're just going to go back to our lanes and kind of do our thing. And I do, I'm do. i still happy they are there because in the past what would have happened is you draft Callista Renata and then you just get all the dragons and the enemy team doesn't get anything. Yes. Well, they get Herald, but obviously Herald is a lot later. You can always sometimes. already be... And also sometimes, yeah. You can already be on your second Herald at that point or uh, on your second Dragon rather at that point if you are very quick, like we saw here. So... Uh, I, I am happy that the objective is there, but yeah, in terms of power level, I don't think they're supposed to be even, but it's very, still very heavily skewed. Although this is the LCK, and we do love just waiting till, like, Fur Dragon before anything really goes down. As Sponge would find Gideon here. <laughs> Gideon just bramble smashes him as he comes in and gets every single Raptor, does Gideon. Red buff is up. Sitab is like, maybe I can make something happen. That? We saw Canyon. Uh, make in his ear look silly with his uh, little. Yeah, that was a little close. Advance, but yeah, he's fine. If if Sponge gets that Raptor and he hits six, Gideon Ooh, might nice die. Teddy here, ignite as well, but Teddy will just hop away. Plata man, great handshake there, keeping his eighty carry safe. Sponge does now have his kick available. It's also ult here for Teddy. They might look towards something, but with Gideon showing. I don't think they want to run the risk. Yeah, it looks like Teddy wanted to back anyway on half health. And he will do just that. Level 6 hit for the bottom lane of Bro. So that was a nice little power spike. Neither side going for any aggressive plays just yet. It's top lane, the Yone going even with the Aatrox so far. It's still early days, but yeah, not really seeing the effect of the Yone counter pick just yet. And generally, this is what you'd expect from the lane. Obviously, we've seen specific matchups. Again, most notably Zayas, who start winning the lane at like level 3 or 4. Uh, that is not something that we'd expect. And Yone does skill obscenely, or particularly when he has a lot of setup, like the Rakan and like the Maokai as well. We'll see how Teddy is able to deal with that. My big issue, though, is that it is a Yone pick into Renata. And that's always something I'm going to be a little bit apprehensive about. I feel like Granada just does such a good job at negating picks like uh, the Akali, like the Yone, which are so reliant on getting these big bursts yeah. of damage. And then you get bail bailed out. And it, it feels like cheating, like a bailout does. Renata's really good against Yone, Maokai, Akali, Rakan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Zaya's like, okay, like, kind of. But also, she does ult in a straight line oftentimes. And you know, if she goes up in the air, maybe you've got a little hostile takeover going, and then it works out. Morgan is uh, not winning these trades. I think you were very on the money, Valdas, with your assessment of this match and its pace. We're just hanging. It's it's a lazy Sunday. It's a bro and brew. It's a bro and brew. What, what, what did you have? What did you have? Did you have a coffee or, or a tea today? Something I didn't nice? have any coffee today, actually. I, I got a lot of sleep, and I was like, you know what? We got a lot of time today. Um, do get the knock up here, as effort is going to go in for the ultimate and then just run away. Um, but yeah, I had a, uh, <laughs> I had this. Well, I'm not going to name any brands on the stream anyway. But I did have some a tea. nice tea. I had a nice iced tea of some sort. Um, no sugar, of course. Zero calories. Just hanging out, enjoying some time with my buddy Chronicler, watching some League of Legends. That's what it's all about, right? It is. I I, uh, I just had a lot of water. Uh, I did make a really nice vanilla latte, uh, latte mm -hmm. um, a, a, for my partner, and then I realized that I wanted to make one for myself, but it was actually time for me to go to work. <laughs> so then I, I had like one sip, and I'm like, man, this is delicious. I got like the you know the real vanilla beans. It was uh, it was amazing. Very very happy. I didn't get to drink it though. That so sounds very nice. I, it was. I'm yeah. a little sad. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I'll make one for myself tomorrow. Yeah. But that would that, that would have been yeah, that would have been good. Uh, instead I just got, you know, one of the espressos at Low Park, which they're fine. They do the job. They're fine. They are coffee. They are coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the uh, the greatest compliment I've ever heard for a uh, cup of espresso, but But I mean it's it's it's, but what, it's true. It's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad by any means, you know? Yeah. It's just it's 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 fine. It's there. It's good enough. It's good. <laughs> Why not? 
just Why some not? Wall Park Espresso. Now this Infernal Drake is being taken by Bro. The backs of the bottom lane of DRX, not well timed. So they're not gonna get in here and challenge this at all. They're just not here. And so that's a free Drake for Bro as now we have the World Ender coming in. Morgan doesn't seem to care about that as he gets Rascal very low. And Rascal is gonna have to fly away. Still his old. Rascal does have his flash available though, so I imagine yeah. he feels confident as long as he can flash that, yeah, he could end careful. up overextended. That's, ooh, cannon not being seen. But yeah, you were on the money with that one, uh, Valdas. Teddy and Pleda not being there means a free dragon nicely done there by Breon. He's... Oh, oh. look at this. I don't, but yeah, he doesn't... That's nah, fine. He would have yeah, teleported the to the turret anyway. Doesn't really so, matter. Yeah, doesn't really change anything. He's just bro and brewing. Just hanging out. Yeah, not gonna get there on time. Um, is Ocean Soul currently the weakest soul? Or is it still Chemtech Soul? In... Oh, that's it. That, I, I think it's, it's comp dependent. Mm. But I think that they are contesting together, yeah. <laughs> for for uh, the, the un... You'd say it's like a ninth viable versus title. tenth place Drake kind of situation? <laughs> <laughs> I could say that. Yeah. Um, with, uh, I, I think Infernal, Hextech are always going to be, you know, those are going to be the Golden Boys. Clouds. Because big, really big damage is, is great. Cloud to me is like the sleeper OP pick where you're like, everyone is severely underrating this. Yeah. Movement speed is broken. But at the same time, it doesn't have the same impact. Hmm. It's fun. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. But you're you don't not. don't feel it. Yeah. All right, here we go. Morgan does have his ult, but he gets kicked against the wall. And he's just waiting, unbound soul. He doesn't care. He doesn't even use his ult. He does have to flash. And now he's considering going in for it. Now Gideon's here. Ult comes in, and the ult of the turret is perfect from Morgan. The timing is actually insane. As Rascal with the bailout is not able to get it done. And it's a double kill for Gideon. And the two of them, Gideon and Morgan, just play that perfectly. And the timing there from Gideon in particular, absolutely impeccable. If he doesn't ult at that given time, if he's like a second earlier, DRX back off. They realize that Maokai is there. But the unfortunate thing is that Q from Sponge hitting and them going back in happens at the exact moment where Gideon ults. So Gideon with pixel perfect timing, the fact that Plata is there doesn't end up mattering at all. And that is a gold lead now coming into fruition for Brian. The only downside, small one, but the downside on the nest is that the gold went to Gideon. And really, if that's on Yone, you're going to be feeling yeah. a lot. Like, that would have been a best-case scenario because getting it on Yone means that that 1v1 for Aatrox is going to become nigh unplayable. I yeah, think this is a I really snobbly matchup. Look at the Still way that really Morgan good. plays this. It's actually just amazing. Bubble Able it. to He's like, buffer and then here. Let's this. go for it. Okay. Gets them ready, Whew. walks away, and oh, the flash as well. I mean, that nice was nice like nice. eight out of eight bait nice from nice Morgan. Nice. Really nice. Really nice. Said it's really nice. Really, really nice. Both of them are just like, wow, that was insanely nice. And Not just your average nice. No, no, this is this is an extra level of us. It also means that. We're not going to be breaking any first blood records in this game. <laughs> Series is not, not over. yet. <laughs> yeah. Once the teams get a little bit more apprehensive by game three, I think we'll <laughs> we'll wait for it then. It might still happen in this game, Valdez. Yeah. So with that extra gold, Gideon already has Frozen Heart, which is pretty good. And the Bombing Sim there. Here is a very nice little drift from Sponge. So after that play, DRX just decide to group up for the Rift Herald, and they're going to send it into mid. They're getting some good value out of this. Already half health is the tier two. So getting some value on the map at least, but that side lane with Morgan now with the Blade of the Rune King already and up a level here on Rascal uh, can become a bit of a problem for DRX. And right now, you can also see the setup from Brian actually looking great here towards his objective. Something that I have been doing, I think, consistently a whole lot better than DRX is the vision control. Uh, already setting up a full amount of preemptive vision towards this dragon. Want to start that stacking early. 
and you were asking me, you know, the, the value of an Ocean Soul. If you're something like a Yone and you're going to be side laning a lot against an Aatrox, getting that extra sustain, absolutely huge. As they try to gank Morgan. Ooh, miss on the chains, and Morgan's just going to ult away. Just playing it safe. That's straight, though. Yep. And bottom turret. It does look like DRX want to trade for the top turret here. 4v2. Should be able to get that. Oh, able. I hope Envy and Effort don't walk up too far, but it looks like uh, they are... Oh, no, they... Renata's there, guys. Oh, TP teleport coming, coming in. in. They're going to get the knock up here, World Ender Prox. And after all that, they're going to keep this turret alive for now. It does look like DRX not 100% sure if they want to go for this. Kind of just stacking in the brush, but that ward is going to be huge from Effort. Nice timing spots, two of them and sees them rotating out, so just a turret advantage here for OK Savings Bank Breon. And coming into this draft, you were talking about DRX, they need the early agency, they're now down a dragon. Uh, they don't really have a substantial gold lead on the opposite, they're, they're in a small deficit. The lead that Teddy had has kind of evaporated. The solo lanes are either even, like in the case of mid, but that's not a winning matchup in the 1v1, or behind. So DRX... I, I'm going to give him like 15 more minutes, you know, because I do think that you can still get a big fight where Teddy can pop off if Brion overextend into like a bailout or a, or a big ultimate from Teddy. But after that, it does become difficult. The one saving grace, I think, is that azir Renata combination. I think that into Brion, that's always going to have value because they are extremely short-ranged and they're not going to have a choice at some point. But if your sidelines are losing this hard, Morgan can just keep that prio inside, yeah. rotate over first, and it's going to become really hard the moment that you don't have teleports, like for example right now on Satab, and you want to contest an objective, because Bro actually have been, I think, particularly given, you know, the, the what we've seen out of these two teams so far, have been great about proactively setting up, uh, setting up objectives. Yeah, no, I think it's a, a nice little glow up for them. Um, they have been the team that was painfully passive for a lot of last year and even the first week, but now they've kind of figured it out. Maybe they, you, you know, they got some success with it in some of their games. They didn't get any wins, but they were getting some leads, and perhaps Edgar just told them, just do what you were doing when you were winning that time in that one game. And it was working out. Uh, I'm very worried about the side lane as well. Rascal keeps on trying to take aggressive trades against Ione, who is very far ahead of him at this point in time, and it's understandably not, not working out. So uh, if that keeps on happening, as you mentioned, the side lane for Morgan is just going to be putting on more and more pressure. Taurus is doing his best in the side lane, and DRX are going to be on the back foot. Now, it is just the Ocean Soul, and I do believe that between these two teams, you know, souls and compositions aside, I feel like anything could happen. Anything can still happen at any point. Oh, yeah, uh, because absolutely. mistakes happen at this level, and I, I think that um, both of the teams are just going to be trying to avoid those as much as possible, uh, so they do not get taken advantage of. Some very faker level advice. Yes. Like don't don't, don't get hit mistakes. by the skill shot. Hit your skill shot. We got a little one-on-one -on -one here, but we got some friends on the way, and it's Gideon alone. He doesn't have many, and the handshake is perfect, as it is predicting of the flash, which was very obvious, but nicely done by Pleta regardless. And that's just a tree in the wrong forest. These are the moments we're talking about. Right now, it doesn't matter that much, I don't think, outside of the gold, although if they can get a catch of Morgan. Trying to get on to save tap here. He's going to ult back on the sponge, but the Q has landed already. Nice Q3 to get out from Morgan. And he is quite slippery here on the Sione, so even with three people coming on over, it's not going to be easy to lock him down. But him getting chunked still was a win because it means that some gold does come back into the... I actually thought that we we're going to get the turret. Not going to be the case. But what we see here as well is that unless someone on Brion get caught, actually pushing objectives is so hard. Both outer turrets are still up because what happens is Satap walks into a lane. Doesn't matter if it's Morgan or Karis. Doesn't win the one one. So he has to forfeit prior of the wave. So you're always going to be behind the play. And very similar for Rascal. Maybe eventually, um, if he builds towards it, can cannot be instep caught by Akali. I think it's Yone is always going to lose. I don't know why Gideon was this deep. There wasn't really a lot of vision or setup or teammates. He just walked into the blind jungle into the red. Yes. Uh, 
Not again. That's it. That's I, all that happened. I'm not gonna not gonna question it too much, Val. It's just gonna accept mm. what is unfolding in front of us. But if someone oversteps, DRX do have a uh, still at this point really respectful amount of damage. And one big win for them is that the kill did go to Teddy. It and did. That's, that's something. I, I don't think it's enough, but yeah. it's a start. So we have this Lich Bane build again on the Azir. I think it's okay in this game. It's a better position from the last time. It's we a saw lot it, better. Which yeah. was against two tanks. Um, that was not good. This time it feels a bit better. There aren't as many tanky members on the side of Bro. Obviously, there are some. Um, in terms of Gideon and even the One, Morgan can build some tanky items if need be. Now, this is only the second Ocean Drink. And DRX have everybody here to get this. So Morgan says, okay, well, I'm just going to take a free turret. And that he will, even deny some of the CS. And yes, DRX will get the individual Ocean Drake. But we talked about the strength of the Ocean Soul and even the individual Ocean Drakes. It's not that high. So, bro, just let it go. Karis, let it go. I know you're a Kali. I know you're slippery, but... Okay, does let it go eventually. I thought he was actually going to make a big stand. Do Baron. Things going down. Yeah, they spot... Spun to spot. Just do Baron. It's fine. This is great. Karis is TP. And, and he's even delaying Spuns from getting in. They know now. We see the pings going down, but it might be too late. Uh. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about this one. No, you didn't delay him. Oh, he kind of did. I don't think it was necessary. But they got the Baron. That's a win. Hey. Nicely done, bro. As a team. That was a good team play. It would have worked without Karras going in back with that E. They would have never been in time. But he did it, and that's what being a bro is all about. He was just sending it for the bros, you know. He just wanted to say, hey, I'm part of the bro family. Let me show you that. That I know this is not necessary, but I am willing to do I'm going to put my life on the line for you guys. <laughs> and the rest of you is like, no, 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 but you don't have to. And he's like, no, I'm, I'm already going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. You can't stop me. Yeah. So, you know, outside of that small mistake, this is still a great macro call, no, the call from was the good. side of bro. The call is awesome. Uh, identifying that the enemy jungler is on the other end of the map, DRX heavily overinvest because just getting that turret by itself, already a big win. And then this is where, again, look at how far away everyone on DRX is. <laughs> yeah, Baron was at like 5k health when that happened. Yes, we had, uh, we had some great observing showing that. But big win, gold lead now getting bigger. Bro, do have the composition that I do think scales better when you look at the individual champions by a pretty substantial margin. And might we be on the cusp of the first bro win of 2024? It's looking pretty good. Ooh, nice divide. That's going to get him to safety just barely. You saw that Sponge and Pleta were coming down. So Morgan just really exerting that pressure. I mean, he's already level 16. And he's such a menace in the side lane. He has done so much for the team in terms of just drawing people over, uh, taking 1v1s, really trying to just put on as much pressure onto these objectives, onto these turrets as possible. Look at the difference in gold. He is the, the largest by far. We do have some skirmishing here in the jungle, trying to get on top of the Zaya here. Envy still having Featherstorm, and they went so deep for him. The Renata ult is pretty huge, though, and Morgan is going to go down. Kars is out of the fight. Bail out! Penny is still getting damage done. He is still alive in the back there, and they just went way too deep against the Renata. And now DRX are going to move ahead. And we had been talking about it, but I was starting to lose faith that it would happen, Veldes. But right there, the value of that Renata, absolutely ludicrous. So much burst goes down. Sponge is the one that starts off that play. Envy right from the get-go, already going low. And Freon, you, you don't have to fight in jungle. You're Baron buff. You can just shove the waves, get free gold, but instead, these type of messy fights, look at the value of this Renata ultimate. Look at the bailout there from Planet. Waiting until the very last second, and then Teddy, the movement, actually stays alive. Yeah, We're not done. Got Gideon in trouble now, just trying to save the turret, and it's not going to work out. TP comes in, and now Morgan TP's behind them, but can he get anything done here? He's trying to build up that Q3. They're trying to get Rascal, it looks like. He is the one straggler, but he is running north at this point in time, as that is the knockup landing from the Yone, and they at least will get that shutdown. Just got a bounty, man. <laughs> Why well, you gotta kill him immediately? 
Um, so the gold's even again. The drakes are even. I, I really gave a big edge to Breon's comp, but seeing that, I'm like, you know what? It's, it's, you never know. It's a close game, Valves. <laughs> That's what we're learning here as we do see Gideon, uh, even with uh, some attempted assistance from his team, not actually able to make it. And then DRX feel very safe. This is an Azir turret, not a real turret. So if Rascal just walks out with the rest, he's fine. Doesn't really need a die. Could have been a free kill, but instead a shutdown for Karis, who needs the help. I haven't really seen the Akali been a factor in this game. And now, yeah. Satap, uh, really, I got to say, bot lane, obviously, as they have been in, I think, most of the recent DRX games, actually are looking quite great. But but Satap specifically hasn't died yet. Almost getting towards that death gap. For Brodo, trust your composition. Rascal in a bit of trouble. That's the CC chain. He's just trying to get out, but it's not going to happen as Karis and Morgan come in. They even had effort as well, just in case. Didn't even need the Rakan. And now a little push going. This is a decent wave, but they're not going to commit to it just yet. They do want to reset here as they get the kill. They're going to get this Ocean Drake here in a moment, and they'll just take the win and run with it. And the misreads from DRX kind of continue. I really like how much Bro is able to, to push this. But it's also, you have two people on the top side of the map just taking farm and like shoving a wave, which, sure, you don't, you're not in a position to fight for the Drake. That's not the end of the world. But then why is Rascal here alone? Um, I do not have the answers to these questions. I do not know. <laughs> and I don't think we will know as uh, Satap just takes a sad look and Aatrox, his buddy, lying on the ground. Fortunately, he's already back. Death Cap's almost done. You know, that's big. I, I don't know how to judge this game, Veldas. I'm a little bit lost. I think we just got to wait for the next team fight, you know? Let's not jump <laughs> to any conclusions. Both of these teams in a very even game state. You know, as you have mentioned, Bros Comp, 1-3-1, scaling. Feels pretty good for them. They should be as they a death be ball out of the clear at this point. As a death ball in a five v five, though, you've got Renata ult, which is insane, and Setab is pretty fed. So I do feel like DRX have some options, especially with like Aatrox resets and stuff like that, um, depending on how the fight plays out. So yeah, basically what we're saying is anything could happen from here. Thirty minutes in. I'm trying to look for the angles, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Get that protractor out. Right now, oh, these type of solo moments could be big. There is a more of Momorsha's though. Car is also going for the Void Staff, so 100% going for that mega all-in potential. We've seen a lot of Crypt Bloom, but I think in this scenario, it makes sense that you want to go for as much pen as possible. Going in onto Morgan. He's just going to ult out as Gideon goes in. That's confusing. Uh, Gideon is going to flash away as maybe a bit of a split call, not wanting to fight just yet. And as Satap actually doing an incredible amount of damage, we do see the Zaya can really struggle into Azir because of the range disadvantage. And oh boy. Satap's death cap, I'm pretty sure, is done. There is no ultimate on Morgan, no ultimate on Gideon. He doesn't do too well against the tanks, but I mean, that's, you know, he doesn't have the Leandries at this point, but he definitely chunks the squishies. This Baron getting pretty low, but the engage is so good, and Satap, he goes down immediately. No reset comes in, as it is chaos here in the pit. Morgan trying to get some damage in, but not quite as much. Will be flashed on and will go down, but Rascal, take a look at this Aatrox. He's getting some resets, but it's not enough. Envy and the boys will take it down in an ace in favor of Bro. And it's effort that starts the engage. Gets on top of Satab and one of their biggest damage threats immediately taken out. And with that, Breon sees their opportunity. This time around, there's enough space. Not everyone gets caught in the choke point. Not enough value from the Renata. And again, the damage needs to be done here by Satab. We see Kara is also doing a good job. DRX just a little bit too much. Satap goes down immediately. And you see, they know the necessity of trying to go in here, but it's Envy doing so much damage here. Look at how many orders he's still able to get in. The ultimate, the Fates Call, unfortunately, not enough. Just a second, you know, on Callista could have been the difference maker. But it's Morgan doing so much damage, actually going for both Jack shows as he just now finishes that, yeah. as well as Iceborne Gauntlet. So in these longer fights, so hard to reliably take down. 
And I think Breon have done it. I think they have rounded the corner. They should be good from here on out. Another Baron saw in about a minute. Things are looking good here for the bros. Yeah, they're looking really good. I mean, Morgan is basically a tank right now, and Envy's positioning in that last fight was, was pretty spectacular. And Satab just has to be a bit careful to not get 100 to 0 like that, maybe relying on the Renata to potentially give himself a second chance, but it did not come through. I thought maybe Rascal was going to do some crazy Aatrox things at the end, but the fact that Envy was still alive till the very end uh, kind of meant that consistent damage was going to be enough to take the fight. So Bro now 5,000 gold the lead. They have the Baron. So far a 2,000 uh, gold here on the power play. But maybe just waiting for this Drake and they'll accept the Ocean Soul instead of trying to make a big play with the Baron just yet. And DRX very clearly are still trying to take this game into their own hands. But, oh, love this. Look at this from Brian. Actually using their sideline pressure. There are no answers to either Insane. Morgan or Karis, but definitely not to Morgan as we see here. This is under the turret. He doesn't care about the turret. He has so much armor at this point. It's like Rascal can't stand there. Nobody deals with Karis. And DRX are playing for a single Ocean Drake. They don't get a soul. They're just denying Bro's soul and they're losing their whole base. So as long as Bro don't fight here, they should be good. Yeah, okay, you got the dragon. <laughs> Guys, your base. The TP's gonna come in, but I mean, Rascal is about to get 2v1. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do against a fed Yone. TP canceled? I think they can just end. Yeah, they're just gonna end. 2v Nexus at this point. Down will it go, as the redemption is not gonna matter. GG, Breon will take their first game of League of Legends. A very necessary win here for Breon going up 1-0 in this battle between two teams yet to find a series win. And I think Breon, even though they took a little bit of a risk with those side lanes as opposed to going for a full team fight draft, actually played to their outs fairly well. There was obviously the one little kerfuffle in the bot side jungle, but... They kept that cool, played to their outs, and for DRX, now they are staring down an 0-1 deficit. And I think they tried to bite off way more than they can chew with a composition that relies on you to win in early to mid game. Look at look look at that little little 1k peak there at 13 minutes. That was yeah. it. That that was the moment, and it didn't happen. It didn't uh, yeah, happen. I, I, I mean, obviously. The vote here Morgan. is um, it's Morgan. It's Lord Morgan. It's more. It's well, twelve out of twelve. There is, there is that. That's, that's uh, twelve out of. It's gonna be one media vote for effort. No, it's okay. No, I, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It, it happens to the best of us, uh, guys. That was game number one. So, bro, on the board with a one to zero lead at this point in time. We're gonna take a quick break and come back with the space. We'll be right back. Okay. 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 Okay.
얘네가 많이 급하긴 해 얘들아 아, 야, 야, 이번에 용칠 거야 얘들아 근데 얘네가 치는 걸 기대해 치는 걸 아트너플 아트너플 혼자 아, 아트너플 오케이 아트너플 오케이 아트너플 오케이 기다려 야, 아, 야, 야, 야 끝내 갖고 보자 아 끝내 갖고 볼게 우리 집 끝내줄 수 있어 집 끝내줄 수 있어 집 끝내줄 수 있어 집 끝내줄 수집 끝내줄게 끝내 내 끝내줄게 아직 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 끝내줄게 용 주고 용 주고 용 주고 끝까지 근데 아직 잡아야 되나? 어 노플이야 노플 얘들아 얘네 어, 막 끊어 아, 집 끊어봐 집 끊어봐 나 아직 끊을 수 있어 아직 끊어 아직 끊어 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 
Hello and welcome to the space. I'm Wolf filling in for Atlas today. I'm joined by Ox and Huni, the best space duo here. And we just witnessed Bro taking their first win of the season. We had some thoughts on the draft. Huni, tell me what you thought about the Akali pick that came through. Well, I mean, the Seitop, the last time he played, especially this way, he brought up the uh, Azir into closer Akali and then he got actually kind of stomp in lane, which is like, it can't be allowed. That's what I, exactly what I said, because I still remember I was also spacing there. And I mean, it's really, it was like great to step up that they actually opened the Akali intended it. And it's like Azir, he played really well, especially today at least. And I think he, he could probably pressure like even more, but I think I really like the draft from the Brion, like, as soon as like, I kind of came out, like I kind of like I was I have a question mark, but as soon as they fight pick with Yone and as like the compositions like as a whole team, it made more sense. So it's like I think the synergize is like built really well. Yeah, I think the solo laners uh, they gave themselves strong matchups. Obviously, the Yone and Aatrox is something we've seen Zayas play a lot to great success. But also the trio who aren't with the solo laners, the bot lane and the Maokai are really stable together. It's very hard to punish that and find an engage. So it meant that they could create space, you know, hold down an area, maybe defend a turret while the solo laners were getting work done. So we did have a ton of back and forth, obviously, in the early game. Morgan was the, the main character uh, a lot of the early game, but then we did see a big bounce back by DRX. But ultimately, the game really came to a head at this 30-minute Baron fight where we saw a contest come through a little bit late. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of hiccup before, like, actually, at DRX, they were trying to dive top. So the, the, you guys have to see eyes on just, like, Morgan. He's, like, really, really fat right now. And he didn't really actually have a mistake that he was being farming nonstop. And I think he had a really, really great engage with the Rakan engage that started off. And Morgan is just not falling down, be able to put the consistent DPS with the unit top and his build was like pretty good like I think to, to be able to get the, the consistency of DPS. Yeah, and I think particularly with Isaiah as well, like those two, if they're not focused down early, they will win those longer fights. They'll just keep getting down rotations off. And the Yone was pretty fed already by that point, but just ended up being a monster by the end of the game. Yeah, Yone was huge. Uh, the Akali gets to sit in a side lane. And then we had this Drake contest here that ultimately didn't go so well uh, for the side of DRX. Walk me through what went wrong here. Well, I mean, it would be more make sense if that Drake was Elder. That, that was just an ocean soul, and it's like, ah, uh, I don't know. Like, even like, I think the Brion, like, we hear the team come, they were like, oh, what are they doing? We just canceled the TP. We can just look for end right here. Like, the game was not actually over, over yet. And it's like, I think that it had really, really poor decision making from the DRX. They went just go for the, like, the, the Drake contest instead of just defending the Dexes. I think it's like as far as souls go, like Ocean is definitely low on the totem pole. Game is not unwinnable if you let Ocean Soul go, but the game is very unwinnable if you let your Nexus go. So maybe the priorities need to shift up there a bit. Yeah, it definitely did seem like there was a bit of an issue there in sides. Morgan dominating the side lane the entire game long. And even though we didn't see that much action from Karas in the team fights, you know, he was able to get down there and end up taking out the Nexus there with his teammates. But we do have the POG ready. Let's see who does end up picking this one up for Bro's first win. Morgan, unsurprisingly, will be their first POG. Yeah, I mean, it's really obvious. Like, our actually the original, like, we're, we're taking off. Like, this, this moment was like, oh, we were like, oh, the game is actually really, really over. Because it's like, this Yone into Aatrox matchup is falling down like this much, like, one time. It can't, it, it's just like possible, it's just not possible to come back. And also this was like just two kills straight up 2-0. And they you know, they used so much of top side. And this thing actually consistently will happen like later on the game until game's end. Like just silent prior was like, it actually happened like all the day. Yeah, and I think it was really sharp the ults throughout team fights, but it's the fact we have like the strong lane performance, the outplay and the skirmishes, and then the team fight delivery as well. It was a full package, which is why this is no real surprise. 12 for 12. So we do know we got the update that DRX will actually be going to red side with their side selection here going into game two. What are you guys' thoughts on red side right now in this meta? Because we are seeing it actually way more than we've seen it in previous years. I mean, they are, I think they're just getting uh, really tired of just getting counter pick, right? I think the also, especially the solo laners are not secure just that actually having the lane phase, even though it's like the opponents are not actually really strong teams. So I think they're trying to secure lane phase as much as that can. And as I, I think it's still, I think DRS still have a point that, oh, they're still, they still have a strong bolt lane to deal with. And it's like they can actually look for team fight, the small skirmishes. I think that's the, like their main takeaway. 
Yeah, I think for me, like the terrain changes really help to even out the sides, like when you're approaching the neutral objectives. Uh, and on top of that, I think there's a lot of powerful counter picks in the meta right now. There's a lot of situations where you can get a leverage from blue side if like first pick Milio. But we've seen things like, you know, the Lucian Nami get counteracted by Milio Felios. And it definitely feels like having the edge in your lane matchups goes a long way. Do you guys have any thoughts on the Azir? The loss streak does continue here. Do you think this is really just a player issue in this particular series, or is it Azir kind of dragging these drafts down? I mean, for me, it's like, I think the people just picking it because like it's up, you know. Like I don't think it's like Azir is like that much OP. That is like if it's up, you have to play. Like it, there's so many counter right now. Like even we see sometimes then Kali and it's like Yon, and also like there's a Quirky as well. They had to throw a ban on the four or five because they pick Azir. That means like it's not like broken jam. I think honestly, there's too many counters right now in the meta, so we always see it picked so early, and often there's a response that comes later. Maybe if you leave it later, it could have some value. And also something I hit, think hit the Azir really hard was the uh, fact that you no longer have stopwatch and you have to buy the full Seeker's Arm Guard, because a lot of those aggressive uh, shuffle plays are kind of secured by having the stopwatch to get out of that bad situation. If you misplay a shuffle, you're just dead now. Yeah, he definitely has a kind of, I can go in, but there is no emergency button to get out. Well, Bro took their first win of the season. We're going to find out in just a moment here if they can close it out and take their first series here when we jump into game two. Take it away, casters. Thank you, Spacers, for that wonderful breakdown. Wolf filling in for Atlas, doing a fantastic job. And now we do move into game number two. Where Dirac's definitely looking a little bit out of sorts in that first game. We'll see if they can hunker down and just try to solidify their macro play because Bro was definitely getting the better of them for the majority of that one. And I wonder what the takeaway is going to be from Dirac's and Draft in particular because we always go back to this if you are, uh, if we are casters watching LCK teams that struggle. This game was completely winnable. I'd say up until the very end. And, and obviously it was very bro favored, uh, given the composition, but let the early comps game, uh, or the early compositions go. Let, it's too much. You're asking too much of yourself. You need to just figure out how to play together as a team. We'll see if that lesson will be learned here by DRX, because in theory, and piloted by another team, that Renata Calista Lee might have been Absolutely suffocating for Brian. Didn't get to play the early. He got like dove on wave three. Then from that point on, did he get to play? But that's not what happens. And that's not why DRX should aim to go from here on out. They do have the opportunity now to counter pick here on red side. And those counter picks, particularly towards the top side of the map, very relevant. The Akali was there. Didn't really have an impact one way or another. But obviously, Morgan having an absolutely stellar game on that Yone. First game of his career as well. It's going to be a tough one to keep that average as the Renata does get taken away here. And I want to see some Corky. Why is my boy being ignored? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the teams are just not used to playing it just yet. The Oriana is available this time because the, the bands chained up a lot here for Bro on the blue side. They ban away LeBlanc and Rakan instead of Poppy and Oriana. So they get their hands on pretty much the most stable mid pick right now. In that Oriana, it's a fantastic blue side first pick because it can go with anything. Um, there are a lot of other strong picks they could have opted for, the Varus being one of them, the Melio. You could have looked bottom lane. You could have looked for a Maokai if you wanted to focus on a top level jungle pick. If they Azir here, so help me, Velvus, I will, I will be mad. <laughs> I will, I will be very. You don't want to see Chronicle I angry. That never happened. Doesn't happen. I don't even know. I. There are a lot of picks that are still quite stronger that we can go towards. The Corky, to me, is the no-brainer, uh, given the level of scaling and power that it has. Uh, Sejuani, here for Sponge, one of the picks that he's definitely more comfortable on. Gives you a lot of leeway with what you can go for. And it's not a zero, so a lot of points from me in that regard. For now. For now. Poppy here, it's pretty early. I mean, Poppy in general is, I think, pretty strong right oh, now. Torn. Not um, Ori against Varus? Yeah, I mean, that sounds really strong to me. Do they have that combo in their wheelhouse? It looks like no. Because now you can just pick something like a Corky, and you've got, like, Lethality, Varus, and Corky, and you just ignore the Poppy. But we'll see if they actually do it, because uh, 
you know, we haven't seen the Corky prioritized in this series just yet. Udir is going to be taken, oh! and they slam the Azir into Oriana after losing with it, with Corky available. It's 11 games in a row, um, Valdez. It's 11, 11 games <laughs> in a row. I don't know what to say. This matchup isn't even good for us here. No, no, He it's gets not. bullied so badly. He doesn't get to do anything. Well, I suppose they'll try to look for some Wombo combos later on in the game. He's so uh, on, he's here. He can't even brook permafrost. No, no, I can't. Callista is going to be banned away. As they say, well, we don't want to play it this time. We have the Varus, obviously, so. We're not going to play far as Callista. Let's deny that here. Jax. Will we see any focus on a... Maybe a Yone pick for... No, I guess not this time around. With the Uzi, with the Udir coming out here. Um, I wonder if they'll go for like a Rumble, but then you've got Azir and Rumble and Sejuani and Varus have AP in their kit, so... Magic damage, at least, in their kit. So yeah. Not. Yeah. I, oh, this is really interesting. I was actually expecting them to go for Nautilus here on R4. Uh, I'm going to ignore the Azir because I'm very, very upset in, in many ways. Yes. So we're going to not just mold about that. Because um, Nautilus both is really strong with the on-hit variety, which I do think is the call here. There's a lot of beefy frontline that you have to chew through. I think Lethality isn't really going to give you nearly the value that you're looking for. And Nautilus is one of the best at reliably allowing Varus to actually do some damage. Really nice setup with the ults as well. You can start with a Nautilus ult and chain it into a Varus ult and go from there. And the Nar is a pick that we've seen, uh, I think, Perfect most notably do really well on. Uh, in recent times, obviously, some of our uh, uh, best LCK top laners are great Nars as well. Say this also comes to mind. And the support counter pick being saved, I do actually quite like. Uh, Phalios, Mil the fact that Milio has just made it through both these drafts untouched is... Doesn't make any sense at all. It's it's kind of mind-boggling because this priority that we've seen from these two teams is so markedly different from what the top teams are picking. And we'll see if it ends up working out for Brian. You know, especially what I expect Milio gets locked in. Or they, they must have a plan. They must have something because this is a no-brainer. You have great front line. The only thing the composition of uh, Brion is lacking is reliable engage. Poppy is not the best. Uh, that's the only thing. But outside of that, you got a lot of range with the Melio. You got a really good front line. Bard would actually be quite nice. Wouldn't mind that. Don't know about Plata piloting it though. Bard definitely is an acquired taste, but does have a lot of agency in the lane. And I do think one of the good things. Even if you end up going for Onid Varus, is Varus is very self-sufficient, can clear the waves reliably, and Plata can try and him, uh, have an impact on the rest of the map. Because I do still think that Plata, as an individual player, still looking great. Is that going to be enough? This composition from DRX doesn't really fill me with confidence. The only one that can proc Permafrost is Mega Meganar. <laughs> half of the cha half a champion, Valdez. One half of a champion, and, Rocket. And, and the Brion Cop, you know, th there's some criticism as that you don't have a great engage tool, but they were actually really crisp on their objective timings in the last game. If you get to an objective first, you're, you're, yeah, you're and peachy. I think if you get ahead and you've got Poppy and Udir running at you with an Oriana ball, you have so much zone control, right? Like, Udir can run at you. The, the Oriana ball can sit on the ground. You've got um, the extra range from the Melio to help the, uh, the Aphelios poke. You've got uh, even Poppy to just put herself in the front. I love this, this fan sign actually having the like, oh my god, please win. Yeah, and then the the, <laughs> the haunt is actually like all shaky and stuff. That's really cool. Wow. Yeah, okay. Zone control comp here from the side of Bro. DRX have selected Azir. Let's see how that works as we do move on to the rift for game number two. Yeah, there are some fans out there who are desperate for a victory. They are not giving up, Valdez. They are unrelenting in their support, which I do appreciate. 
because it's uh, it's tough for fans of both these two teams. Teddy is going for Lethality. I do think that makes more uh, more sense specifically with Bard because Lethality has a much easier time clearing the waves without actually getting access to it. I do worry about how good that is going to be, especially if you get put behind at any point. Uh, against the double front line of Morgan and, and Gideon. And if Seta builds a Lich Bane again, especially with Ophelia Divaris, I will be... I, I will not be pleased. I will be very upset. Because then I don't think the front line ever, especially with Melio, it ever, never dies. dies. Ever. They just don't. It just doesn't happen. Actually, never. <laughs> Actually, like, There are times where we say, never. like, never, but this time, for real. No, this, for, but for real, for real. For real this time, actually, nobody will ever die. Now, we do have a little bit of a jungle swamp Oh, uh, situation. Oh, jungling. Yeah. Uh, Gideon has moved in with Morgan to take the enemy raptors, and so Sponge is going to say, okay, I'll take your raptors, which means he'll play on the bottom side of the map in those jungles. And uh, But as we see that, actually, hitting level two, Gideon is going down now towards his red, saying he wants to defend. And might not have uh, vertical training after all. Gideon does want to look. He doesn't have prio in bot though, so he's just running at him. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about this invade. Um, definitely optimistic. He is still waiting. Might look for Sponge, but I think Sponge has a lot of safety, and he also knows that Gideon hasn't left because they have a ward there. Yeah. And Gideon's just and playing into the Giga Chad, you know. Yeah. Kind of, uh, name but here. I mean, I, you can say that. I would say he's wasting time because he doesn't have bot lane prior, so he can't really do anything in the one v one. You could say that. Or that, you that could is say a way to look at it. He just said, "I'm a Giga Chad. I'm gonna give a little chance here to Sponge just to get ahead of me." I don't need to optimize my time yeah, clearing the jungle. That's a two percent play if I've ever seen one of Eldas. True. As we do see Karis, as expected, doing a great job here in the matchup. Oriana has been so strong into Azir for many a reason. Uh, initially, when this matchup started coming up, we were still very much in the Azir camp, given that, in theory, you should be able to get level 6, then swoop up Oriana, force flash, and go from there into practice. The early level of dominance that Oriana has, just from a braze damage as well as clockwork, wi uh, clockwork windup, has been such a a thing to deal with for any Zir, so that they hit six later, they're behind the tempo, and actually forcing those sums is quite difficult. As a uh, plan out to me, going to be the big question mark of this draft. He to me has an X Factor. I do think that there are a lot of immobile carries. Uh, the only one with a dash on the enemy team is obviously Gideon, and you know, he needs a target. Obviously, Morgan is, is Udir, so he'll just run away as Udir yeah. does, but. Outside of that, for Karis, for Envy, for Effort, the, the Bard actually can be a big deal. And one of the things I do love about Bard is that the melee ult doesn't have as much value. And I think that that is one of the reasons why maybe they didn't want to go for, even though they banned themselves, they didn't want to give Nautilus, but also not take it themselves. Because we do know that uh, into these multiple CC comp, there can be a lot of power. Sponge now does the same thing, uh, where he doesn't have mid lane prior or top lane prior. It's like, what if I... Yeah. And this one is a little bit more excuse because he is a level up, so he's like, maybe I can fight, but you can't. And he didn't want to get double scuttled either. So yep. he was like, maybe I can fight for this, as he just got a smite cooldown up. But yeah, pride on the lane does mean that it does go to Gideon. He does get double scuttled, but he is behind on his camps at the moment. So we'll see how that works out for him. Gideon, or rather Sponge, Ooh, is hanging out here. Like and Leta is coming in as well, looking to make this happen. Going to get the flash out of Karis. And a nice collection already. And that could be an opportunity, particularly because Satan didn't have to flash for that play. Often see Azir straight flash for flash when they go in on the level 6. Not going to be the case here. Sponge is, uh, gets cancelled by Karis. Nice little optimization there. And, uh, might even look for another one. And Sponge really being bullied here, which allows Gideon to catch up on some of the farming time that... Uh, he was uh, denied by himself uh, <laughs> earlier on. Still counts. Still counts. Still counts as a denial. And we'll see if Sponge is able to actually capitalize on this, because 1v1, you're never going to kill the Orianna, even if she doesn't have Flash. 2v2, though, uh, there might be an opportunity as Poppy. Gideon going to start up the Avoid Grubs here. I think you might as well. Um, at this moment in time, you don't really want to fight towards that dragon, so just take it here while you've got still some presence on the map. You haven't gone back yet. You know that Sponge 
had gone back due to Karas' pressure. And so you get a little bit of extra time to take down these bubs. And down they will go. So that's three in favor of Bro. We'll see if Sponge tries to make a move at this dragon anytime soon. And at the very least is going to look for some of the farm, but we'd already seen Gideon actually making his way towards this bot side. Sponge could also look for a gank. That is pretty high risk. Uh, middle ground would be taking away this Krug and then making your play, but there's a very small window where Bro is going to know, and it looks like instead just going to get Sponge back on XP parity. Should be able to make his way out there. And does now get spotted. And Envy's? that has to... Uh, Teddy has to cancel his back. Yeah, and he's pretty far up the lane. This is a 3v3 when they see Gideon, and now Pleta has to flash away from this one in a bit of trouble. Flash on in from Gideon as he is ruthless, and the chase is on. Sponge just trying to get away, has to flash himself, and Gideon is right there to scoop up the kill. And that is a really big miscommunication there, because if Sponge is actually going for the full clear as opposed to just getting the big rump, Teddy can't back. But if Teddy has to back, which he does because he hasn't backed yet, then Sponge can't go for that. One of two things needs to happen, and they didn't either, and as a result got punished pretty heavily. That's no flash on Sponge, no flash on Pleda, and an early gold lead for Breon. Again, your Gideon, <laughs> uh, very aggressive flash. They're very happy to go in, and the bros looking good here again in the start of game number two. Yeah. Gideon utilizing the Hex Flash Atlas would be proud. And we'll take another look here at this play. They're trying to set it up aggressively, but Teddy's so far behind it, and Pleta takes so much damage. Uh, it doesn't work out for DRX. Yeah, they're really big as well, is that... So Pleta actually doesn't get... He, I think he immediately wanted to Q on Envy as all the play. Trying to make it happen, but Wait. look! Effort's here, and Gideon's here again! Sponge is going to join on in, but just a little bit late, and the Shockwave is huge! Into the Poppy Ultimate! Where has this bro been all along? Well, oh no, Gideon is going to go down, but it is a trade one for one at the end of the day at least. And bro is still going to take that. A lot of investment, but flash actually being used by Satap there. Still going to feel pretty good, and this wave is going to get denied because there's no teleport available. So still a net gain for the bros, even though it was a one for one trade. Crucial as well is that even though Brian was able to pick up the early objective due to the bot side play, there hasn't actually been any attempt at Dragon here from DRX. We take another look. Play gets set up here, and they know about effort. They don't know about Gideon, though. Again, really crisp timing, and Gideon will be my front runner for PUG if not for the fact that he uh, then overestimates his damage and just gets lightly shoved by Sponge into the turret and dies. Pooped. Um, yeah, definitely not a necessary death there on his behalf or on his part. But it still is Brian looking good early. And again, this composition mid to late game is absolutely terrifying, if not for a really good Bardolt or say it's upcoming them big. But we have just not seen Azir's come up big in um, yeah. what is it, 11 games now. I mean, BDD had a couple of plays. But did he win? No. Well, I'm, does he have a win on Azir yet, BDD? I, I don't know. Maybe don't in know. like game one? That they play. I feel like probably, like week one, you know, but not sure. But yeah, it's it's been rough. We have seen some plays from Azir's, but it hasn't been enough to change the games into a win. Some nice damage already coming in here from Envy, just showing off the power of Aphelios in general, but also Aphelios Melio. And now they're just going to take this Hextech Drake. No Drakes have gone down just yet, but just pushing the bottom lane of DRX away should be enough to get this and objective. There's no six for Pleda. So without Bardold, I don't think you have any setup. Uh, Effort does have his ultimate available, so not going to be an opportunity here. And again, that's due to that early play. Working out very nicely. Bro now also sitting on the leads. Envy also playing very aggressively here, meaning that Teddy doesn't actually get to walk up at all. Ooh. That was cute. Didn't matter, but... I liked the idea. Definitely a uh, continuous level of aggression as in they go. Yeah, trying to fight this here once again is pretty interesting as Gideon just gonna ult him away. And so no real fight is gonna happen. Every once in a while, like every you know, every five minutes, we'll check on the top lane. It's, it's still going as you would imagine. It's hap it's still there. 
still happening. Yeah, they're still in the, they haven't left the game yet. That's good news. But it is Morgan who does kind of just stand there and take turns, which is pretty good just to get that slight lead in the top lane as well. And Drake goes to Breon. And now, next set of Grubs also looking like they are going to go to Breon. Although we do see Sponge and Rascal trying to contest. We have both supports on their way. Plata should be there earlier given that he is barred. But I don't think that's going to be in time. At the very least, this is going to be five Grubs. I think it's six. Yeah, it should be. You see that DRX are here, but they're not here. You got to ult. Uh, you got to do something. Who's going to go on who? The bub. Oh, it's going to go to Nar. OK, they do get one, but they did not deny the fifth. And the ult does absolutely nothing. Meanwhile, Envy is just getting free farm in the bottom lane. It's a cannon wave, so Teddy at least won't have to pay that much for his investment. But this hesitation from DRX is not something that fills me with confidence. And for, for Breon, again, they're, they're peachy. Already got an early Drake. He got Camtech out of the way, so there's uh, basically only good dragons left for your soul. Hmm. Getting on in there. That's a nice amount of damage already burning down his Rascal. Again, you don't necessarily have to net yourself the kill, but just pushing him out of lane and being more and more annoying can still be effective. The one difference with this game and the previous one is I do think that the DRX composition does skill very nicely in the mid to late game. Obviously, the Vladivarius Varus is going to be relying on, on actually hitting damage, but with the new items, I do think that there has been a, a pretty sizable increase in the length of which Varus has been relevant, which is weird because Surreal does really got nerfed quite hard, and that was uh, one of his core items previously, but Opportunity has definitely helped a little bit. But... That is relying on you executing a team fight. Well, you have these big wombo combo ults and that you can use Plata's ult to set up for Satep, set up for Rascal. But that level of cohesion we haven't seen from DRX, have seen from Bro. Yeah, it's also rough when you're behind as DRX because sometimes even if you hit like the Bard ultimate or the Sejuani ultimate, you can't really follow up on it easily. You know, if somebody has their, if they have all sums available and flashes available on the side of Bro and you just flash an ult, it's like, okay, well now, well, now you can't engage. But you still got to do it. Yeah. That's 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 the point, right? But if they dodge it in their head, you can't really force it from there. All right. Well. <laughs> I mean, this is this is what we're talking about. Like, it's a poppy. OK, like you did it. And, that, you know, there was no play by play follow up because there was but no gameplay follow up. I know it's Poppy, I know it's hard to engage on, and Milio is in the vicinity, but at the very least, have them for something. They got Flash. You know, they that's, got Flash. That, that's something. But that walks into the jungle, Valdas. I'm any second now. Uh, something's, <laughs> something's gonna <happen>. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Trying to go for that play, I, I feel like if Teddy is right there and you have the damage, like, ready to go, and uh, Satab is in position to shuffle him or to Emperor's Divide him right when the Bard ultimate but, ends. Like, Sponge, but Sponge had his ult. And he could have, like, moved behind him. They could have CC chain. Yeah. They could have. But instead, they just said, oh, it's, it's not a high enough percentage play. We're just not going to go for it. But unfortunately, when you, you know, if you're looking for plays and nothing's really working out, then you just don't do anything. And that that is also not going to win you games at this point. Bro have set up here for the Rift Heralds. Oh, possible fight this time around. Plata almost has his ult available. Yeah, there is Vision in the pit. This is pulled out. The ult does go into Morgan as uh, Sponge does come in, not get the steal. And now they're running away. They don't have the Sejuani ultimate. In goes Gideon and Morgan. Look at Teddy. He's alone. He has to flash away. He can't get away from the Zudir. As Morgan continuing to try to get some damage done. Maybe he overextended a bit, but he's fine because he is Zudir. Oh. Maganar. There you go. The ult comes in. A chance. But Gideon is just going to play bodyguard, and they do not commit to it. And the Rift Herald goes to Bro. No commit, no loss. Also, no win, but we're gonna we're gonna gloss over that. As a whole lot is used, teleport investors, Teddy has to use both sums. And for Breon, they're vibing. They've got a herald. Just hanging out. Although I don't think they were able to actually pick up the eye. So that is something. 
that the Rx were able to deny. Um, but they, flash. they, yeah, they did invest heal and, and, and again Teddy summoners uh, NTP and didn't get a whole lot out of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe next time. Gideon was on a ward. He actually replaced it there, and it immediately got um, swept. So, Skim Tech Drake individually, Gideon might be able to try to threaten a steal, but he's just not gonna take the risk. What it'll be? Mountain Soul. Ooh. Okay. Well, now if you, okay, he's going the Andres though, right? So yes. Yeah. For it's... Sid Tab, it's gonna be nice, but you still have this Lethality Varus, and if Bro get Mountain Drakes with Poppy Udir. <laughs> You're, you're not killing him. It's not going to happen. No. No. He definitely won't. Um, Koenig Rooken alone makes Morgan nigh unkillable by Satab. Items not with And that's not even taking into account the gold lead. And this game, without a shadow of a doubt, is going to last another, um, what do you say, 25 minutes? I think we got like 20 minutes. I have faith in Bro, they're being very proactive. Here's Rascal, he's getting a lot of hyper procs, actually doing damage to an Udir. One of the first times ever in the history of League of Legends. But yeah, Rascal, nicely done, gonna push him out. There's a TP coming in from Karis. And he will take over this lane. That is a possible hint at what might come in the future. Rascal actually might have enough items, I think particularly with Black Cleaver, to chew through Morgan in long lanes. Start winning side, and you need a pressure point somewhere if you're DRX. Uh, we also see that Teddy's damage still is pretty uh, respectable. Now he's playing into uh, Red Gun. There is also effort with his heals available, uh, but at least Teddy can still chunk a decent amount. I do agree with you, though. If DRX keep the Drakes away, there is definitely a possibility here. If more Drakes than one go over to Breon, I, I don't think you ever have the damage. Um, and, and even with a Wombo combo, I don't think there's enough burst. And, and the Wombo combo is easier to set it down into Milio mm. and Poppy. Yeah, definitely is. Here's Rascal with Teddy just trying to poke down Envy. It doesn't really work out. Morgan is alone in the top lane because of this, but Rascal pretty fast can just hop up to the top side. And it's not a big deal. Both teams just posturing about around the south side river here. Sponge electing to get into a little bit of a scuffle with Gideon. A lot of fighting, a lot of trading going on. There's no objective here, just trying to chip away at their opponents. Maybe Bro would love to take those tier one turrets if possible. Gideon is going in pretty deep, and he is tanky, but is he that tanky? The answer is no, and ult's gonna come down. And now a chance here for the Meganar to get this one as the wall up into Gideon, and there it is, Rascal will pick up the kill onto this Poppy. And Breon, not gonna be more than just a kill, but still, bit rough there. Unnecessary overextension from Gideon. Definitely wanting to Poppy a little bit too close to the sun. Gets punished appropriately. And that is a kill going over to Rascal. And that's big. Rascal getting more fed, I think, is one of the uh, Used to be a really reliable win condition. Obviously, uh, the Rascal as of late hasn't really been able to replicate that consistently, but having a Gnar in the side lane that is actually able to chew through again, as soon as you get what I assume will be a Black Cleaver, uh, with enough time, he will actually be able to do so. Could be quite big. And here we see Gideon go in. Uh, if you go and sweep out Vision like this, that alone, you're probably fine. Going in by yourself uh, into the Bard is definitely not the way to go. And then. As soon as the Barnacle lands, Gideon is basically dead. A lot invested here from DRX, but they can't because there's no objective on the map. So they don't have to be too worried about a counter punch coming through. And that means that Baron is up 20 minutes in. It's 2-2, two to two, Veldas, with one Drake apiece. <laughs> the golds, slightly in favor of Bro. They do have that. Kriplum finished already for Karis. So Teddy went Serpent's Fang second. Yeah. There are some shields. You know, you got the Melio, you have uh, the Oriana, the Udir. You know what? There's also Locket bought first by Gideon. Hmm. Um, I still don't think it's good enough. But 
There are actually a lot of shields. At least there are shields. When you no, build but like, the item. there's like a lot, right? Because there's a yeah. the poppy shield, the passive Lockhead, Oriana. Uh, really, the only one that doesn't have a shield of his own is Envy, and he will just be perma shielded by Mr. Effort. So it Mr. makes Effort. sense. It does. It actually does. Um, is it the best item he could have built? I would have liked Opportunity more, I think. I think Opportunity is really good. Or, you know, uh, just finish your tier item. Never going to feel bad about that one. But he is still pretty far away off of finishing that. This Drake must get for DRX. And for Breon, it's not a must, uh, must take. So I, I'm okay with them letting go of this one. If that's what they choose to do, I think now they do. Yeah, I mean, DRX are going to get the Drake, right? Yes. It's getting pretty close. Gideon is kind of running in, but he's not committing to it. Team here for the side of Bro has grouped up in mid, even a TP I don't know committed about that. to. And now Gideon's taking some damage already. As now they do have, you know, the five Void Buffs, and that is going to be a lot of damage into this mid tier one. They take it down. Meanwhile, Rascally just ignores the whole play, doesn't have TP, just sits down on bottom side, and he'll be happy to do just that. As uh, Gideon. In the face of Sponge. Smited and slowed down. That's the ult on in. And the damage from downtown from Teddy is good as well. But it's still Poppy and Gideon will survive. Really nice little sidestep there from Gideon. Completely distracting from the fact that he should not have gone for that play. Uh, if he gets hit by the Bard ult, he probably still ends up going down. Not going to be the case. And the Bard ult not being there in that mid lane play actually was also the reason why uh, Bro did a great job of pushing aggressively there. If Bard ult's there, you're definitely in a lot more risk as Morgan sees them, uh, says you're not allowed to back there, and then is greeted by his greatest enemy, Walls. So we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. And now DRX have delayed the loss condition and are starting to stack up. And hey, Mountain Soul always going to be good. Obviously, Breon will have uh, has two carries that actually do have enough damage to chew through. But I do have to say, we see Cribloom for Karas, which doesn't have as much pen. And the damage of Poppy and Udyr is relevant, but not if your opponent has a Mountain Soul, right? Eventually, like, the, the, the burst and the chip damage that comes through isn't going to be enough. As Teddy! Uh-oh, he is very isolated here. Wants to flash to this. Doesn't even have to. Just gets to the magical journey, and Morgan just doesn't do anything. <laughs> He's taking a bunch of damage on the backside here, too, from Rascal and Teddy. So that collapse is not really going to work out for them. And I thought they might have tried to go for it with Meganar and Flash available, but DRX are looking for a higher opportunity play. Haven't found it just yet, Veldas. Yeah, they don't want to go for that 80%. They want that 95 plus. And I suppose that is okay. In a game that is pretty close, I think it's decent to not take any too big of a risk because that could just end the game even if you were in a position where you had a pretty good chance. So I don't mind it. The poke damage that is coming out from not only Teddy but also Satap and Rascal is quite annoying when we do get into 5v5s for Bro as they would love to, you know, run at the opponent's control space, but you don't have any engage. And then Varus is hitting you with arrows, Satab's hitting you with soldiers, Rascal's hitting you with boomerangs, and you just kind of try to run at them, but it doesn't really work. So a lot of um, posturing, you know, waiting one of, around. One of the really interesting things about human beings, and this is a, a well-studied uh, and very interesting scientific phenomenon, is that we don't deal well with a lack of, of input. You know, yeah. like, we, we, we don't really thrive when there isn't anything to listen to, to hear, to see. Um, and really, this game so far is really providing an excellent opportunity of what what happens to two casters. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, just when they're deprived of <laughs> any, they're deprived any of input. Action. Yeah. Any second now, Veldes. Any yeah, I mean, second now. Yesterday we had a game that was 1-1 at 20 minutes. So hey! I suppose this is better. They're going to do the Baron. Oh, man. But they know this is happening, so... Can they actually commit to this is really the question. TP is ready. TP is ready. Now we're waiting for it. Damage. is coming in. Gideon's getting pretty low. He's absolutely going to have to get out of here. And that leash not going to be utilized by DRX, but Tab says, okay, let's start up the Baron now ourselves. 
take it down from 100% health. And, you know, they might just be able to. Gideon is pretty far away from this one. He's being zoned by a bard. Lada has to use his ult here, surely. He's got to get Gideon away, but Gideon has wrapped around on the right side. Could try to flash him with the damage. Has stopped in the Wobble Combo. It's huge from the side of Bro. And now everybody on the side of DRX has to get out of Gideon flashes away from Baron, who actually does damage now. And nobody does the Baron, and nobody dies. Baron's trying to save us, Veldas. He's trying to get us some kills, and it just isn't happening. Why didn't Plata just ult them when they were approaching? Why didn't they go in when Gideon was almost down? I guess the Baron wasn't low enough, but you can you can try to ult Rascal, like you here. Rascal, you Mega Refresh. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Bro just ran at them and they had the Orianna combo with the Infernum Moonlight Vigil. It's it's fine. Tell us, it's fine. They get DRX get the Drake. It's it's a it's a it's it's a ah, good play. They, they were the just building up to getting the third Drake. Yeah. You see. Nice play from DRX here. But I, I've been looking at this like a checkers match, but they're playing four dimensional <laughs> chess fell this. This is on me. You, you gotta, you gotta see the lines. You have to find the lines here. I'm not sure if we've done a good job of seeing them yet. But yeah, second Mountain Drake for DRX is pretty good. The items for the carries of Bro have been utilized to deal with the Mountain Soul, so that is good. And even as the game comes along, they are going to scale really well. But again, like I said at the top of the day, I think it just comes down to which team plays better. Uh, yeah, even in this game, who knows? Uh, if Mountain Soul is picked up, I do think DRX are actually in a really good position. Rascal already is a really big nuisance in the sideline, and from that point on, he's going to be even harder to deal with. And if Breon's damage on Gideon Moog isn't enough, then it is all on Karus and Envy, who do have an incredible amount of, of reliable damage available. But actually getting access to the backline should be quite hard, because there is a lot of threat. A lot of innate safety with the bard, the range that Teddy will have, given that he is Lethality Varus. Satip also going for a build that I am actually happy about. Should go Death Gap and then Void Staff. And then actually able to chew through these frontliners. Yeah, that would be ideal. Um, even especially as the game comes along, you're going to want that Void Staff penetration for pretty much everybody. Yeah. Um, Just in case you need to fight. Yeah, in it's case more you of a, decide on attacking the enemy champions. It's more of a deterrent than anything. They see, <laughs> they see your void stuff and they go, Oh, uh -oh. I, I don't know about that. I'd rather not, actually. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'm, I'm a pacifist. I don't like fighting. If you just win the game through side laning, you don't have to fight the... We saw that last game? Yeah. You could Breon proved that. All right, we're moving ahead. In the mid lane for Bro. And Derex have not pulled the trigger on this Baron. Still waiting on the Mountain Soul, perhaps. But if we get into a split situation where Bro take a Mountain Soul, or a Mountain Drake, rather, and then they just, you know, kind of back away. Oh, they run on top of the ball! Don't do that, guys! Teddy has to flash. It's now counter engage does come in, but Gideon threatening the disengage. And you know what the problem is? Is that both sides just have incredible disengage. So nobody wants to fight. DRX have engaged, but they're not finding the angles, and they're being denied it. No, no, but DRX have positioning now, so they can turn that into a threat to Baron. <laughs> Surely they'll start it, right? I mean, they have pretty nice damage with Nar and Azir, at least. Okay, they, so Breon is actually calling their bluff, and then decide that they are not calling the bluff. Oh, the bluff was done. correct. Do they have enough damage? It's going down quickly. Satap has a great damage for shredding this. Gideon. Gideon. Uh, he does not have Bard ultimate this time around, and they have stopped damage on oh! the Baron in the knockaway. But the Baron's going to gain health, and now they're going to run away. <laughs> well, that's oh, why? No. oh, no. Um, I mean, health bars are still very low, and Gideon's like, well, let me just show off my low health bar because i got to check if they're doing Baron. Surely they wouldn't, right? We've, we've ignored side lanes for, I don't know, the better part of, like, the last 10 minutes. This is free side Baron lanes aren't real. Yeah, they get it. This is free. Again, they're playing chess, fellas. 
I mean, yeah, you, you, you poked them down so low, and then the Poppy ultimate got them away, and Bro did not commit, so you might as well just take the Baron when Gideon comes in with 10 health. If you play smart enough, you can finish your opponent without ever taking a piece. You don't need to eliminate your opponents. Just eliminate the objectives and the base. That's all you need. So this should lead to a mountain soul for DRX. In theory, they have they have Baron. They have a winning side lane in, in Rascal. So he's going to be in a side lane off, pushing by himself. They actually have pretty decent vision control towards the top of the map. He is a really big threat. So either they send over two people, in which case all he needs to do is stall. Um, he does need to keep pushing, though. I, I would love that. Not going to happen. He does have a great Narbar. So they can also just hard commit to this fight. Renwin's done. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to send it. Alts are flying every which direction. Envy takes a bunch of damage. So does Gideon. And the poke is actually sticking right now onto Bro. That's big. And Effort used his ultimate. So now there's a big play opportunity to poke. Actually landing. And I suppose this is all they had to do. Envy doesn't really have a health bar at this point. He does not have red-white either. It's Morgan and Gideon on the right side. Morgan trying to just threaten something, but... Look at the side lane. Rascal actually going in aggressively. Doesn't need to GP because he's close to the fight. And there's no snap engage from Breon. They don't have the tools. What snap engage? <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> what ability to engage in this game. Not from Bro. I mean, they have the ball. They have the shockwave. That's it. It's pretty Hey, much it. Poppy can flash and slam someone into a wall. Yeah. I like how Gideon has gone more mobs in this game. That's very smart when you're dealing with this amount of poke. And there are many times where DRX can't finish you off. But if you are there with full health, it could change the game. So he's finished that. But this is Mountain Soul for DRX. So it doesn't I quite matter. Yeah, I do think they lost the game <laughs> about 50. No, no, not 50. About seven minutes ago. Yeah, seven to 10 minutes. Um, which obviously DRX have been aware of right from the get go. <laughs> yeah. It's four kills in 33 minutes, Valdez. Now yeah, we're just uh, enjoying our bro and brew. <laughs> just hanging out. I, I have my tea. Chronicler has his big bottle of water. His big thermos thing, whatever that is. It's just a bottle. It's just a just bottle a of water. Bottle. It's not it's not uh, How much can that baby hold? Uh one liter. Really? One it's bigger liter. than that. Well, it's one liter. <laughs> That's a little bit more if you fill it beyond that. That's one liter of water. That's nice. It's not it's two, two of those, and you're done for the day. Yeah. Do you just drink two liters of water? I try. Do you ever go above and beyond? No. Do you ever try to go for three? I don't know why I would. If it's if it's in the summer, then yeah, probably. Yeah. Korean summers are hard. Ooh, the engage. Teddy. It's happening. They're running at Teddy. They got his flash, and that's it. Can they get anything else? That stun is not going to hit. And Sponge now is full health. Gideon has to run away. Morgan has to run away. They don't have the follow-up. The side lanes are becoming a problem as they have been. And Rascal is continuing to push. It's only Karis to deal with two lanes. That's not going to work eventually. There is a prophecy, Valdez. A prophecy of an objective that can get Bro back in any game. And it's spawning in four and a half minutes. It's their only hope at this point. I mean, you just got to send it on to the Elder Drake. Otherwise, I, I, this game is pretty much over. Still only four kills. I'm trying to look here at the lowest amount of kills. It was three kills. We had it happen, actually, in uh, 2022 summer. And guess who was in that game? <laughs> it was Bro. It was Bro. Of course it was Versus Bro. Versus DK. That was that game also that it, it went to the Baron without any kills, and then there was the one team fight and DK ended. Classic. That's Classic why. Bro That's game. why it was only three kills. Yeah. But yeah, we've surpassed that. So uh, no records to be broken unless we're aiming for 94 minutes, but I don't think that's going to happen either. Well, we can still set a record for uh, spring 2024. True. OK, that's good. Potential records to be broken. 
don't think we've had this low of a kill game yet. We have not. No. And you know what's good is we have a potential game three as well. I so know. This, we could even Aww. break a further record. Jason as well saying stay hydrated. Check Very your important. posture, chat. Stay hydrated. Get a nice glass of water. Get those shoulders back. Yep. Chest out. Absolutely. Make sure you do some stretching. No you don't slouching. Stay, you don't want to sit for too long, you know? Maybe get up, you know, walk around for a bit. Do some knee raises. Yeah, because we are we are in this for a we're in for a long day, chat. If you're just going to be sitting, that's no good. Yeah. Make sure you rest your eyes from time to time. Get that blue light filter on, you know. Make sure you have your brew for the bro and brew. Get some water, you know. Yeah, or just some coffee just, or, just or anything for, else. For reference, the lowest kills in a game this season was 11. <laughs> so, we're, we're, we're at a, you know, almost a third of that. There's a chance we get a big team fight and then, you know, a bunch of deaths happen. Yeah, it'll be like maybe nine. One way or another. I don't know who. If it's a but clean ace. Yeah, surely. This is why this Warmonks is so critical for Gideon, because he has to be the person who runs at them. And if he doesn't heal against this, okay, that's the cleanse and the melee ult used. Sponge is impenetrable at this point, it seems like. And, oh god, they both got hit by that. The follow-up should come in here, but Satep says no, as the Poppy ultimate knocks him away, and Karas is TPing in. Now Morgan gonna get into that back line. Gideon is so low, but it's, oh, it's Satep alone. He's gonna go down, as Morgan was zoning everybody else away, but the health bars are so low here. On the side of Bro, another stun into the wall, but it's Meganar eventually, right? Right, Rascal? Do something oh. with it, hit them, and they will take down Envy. That is the person they were looking for. Low health bars on both sides now, but Teddy at full and Sponge at full. The tank DPS combo will push Bro away as oh, he had two kills. Two more kills, Feldess. Action the likes of which this world has never seen. Unbelievable. As Baron gets started up. They gotta be careful about this timing. No, they got it. Well, I mean, they're gonna get the Baron, but, but yeah, no, you're right. You gotta get the Baron. Oh, you probably right. wanna go back, and then you gotta be ready for the Elder. And you don't have Save Tap, so the damage on this Baron is not great. So, okay, they're gonna back and run at the Elder. They should be there on time, but the setup might not be great. So here we see some miscommunication on DRX, their part. Initially, I think they actually played this quite nicely, try and play it slow. Then that play from Sponge is quite big, and then um, Satab goes in alone which would have been fine if anyone else was there. But Plata went back to keep Teddy safe from Morgan, who walked around, and then Rascal eventually showed up. There we up. go. Elder Flip. It's beginning. <laughs> the Elder Dance but of Doom. We, Breon can now just have done to them the same thing that bro, that, uh, that, the, uh, that happened to the Rex last game. I think Rascal's just going to end the game. Yeah. Uh, TP from Saints have pretty interesting. Definitely committing pretty hard to trying to end the game here. They and, can though. Yeah, I mean they should be able to. Can anyone else go back? Morgan, I don't think he's enough. I don't think he's enough to just stop them alone. The same ending. It's the same ending, except there's an Udir involved. Oh no! As down will go the Nexus, and we will go to a game number three. Six kills. In the contest, nobody dies in the Elder Flip, including the Elder Dragon. I'm sure he's pretty happy about that. And so our DRX, Rascal left with his head scratching, but he got the win. And that's and all that matters. That's the only thing that matters. Um, definitely a memorable game of League of Legends here, Feldes. And I gotta think about who uh, I gotta vote for, for POG. Oh. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'll give it some thought. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, Rascal. He, he did stuff eventually. Maybe, maybe Teddy for the damage. I'd, I'd say Teddy. Teddy for the damage. I'd say Rascal probably. I'll, I'll I think go the side lane Rascal. pressure. He was winning a lot of trades. He was getting a lot of side uh, objectives down. He put the pressure on. He was the one who probably called for the ending. Teddy was like, okay. 
but sometimes his positioning was off and he had to flash away and it was kind of awkward. It's definitely not safe tab or sponge. Pleta is like not on the same level as Rascal or Teddy. I, I I'm, imagine I'm, it'll be I'm, Rascal. I'm fine or Teddy. with either of those. We'll see. The best part is we're gonna get another game. We get a game number three, and that is the most important part of this whole day. As guys, we'll take a break and we'll come back with the space. We'll be right back. ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、ね、
밀어본다. 아이고, 아, 락성 쉽게 했어. 오케이. 야, 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 이거봐 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 나이 삼조 이거거든 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 어 기마라 어 뚫어 뚫어 기마라 당신도 나라게 할수 있다 Hello and welcome back to the space. We have a series on our hands, gentlemen. It was a bit of a comeback story here for DRX in the second game of this series. Bit of a wonky one, bit of a low kill game, very long one. What are your thoughts going into this draft here in the second game? Yeah, and actually the now the lowest kills of the split. Um, yeah, very slow paced game, I feel like. And honestly, I think Bro just really struggled. Um, like, I don't think their draft is, is, is bad at all, but I think you could see they didn't have any clear engage tools, you know? If they had something like a Nocturne paired with the Orianna or, you know, just something that could provide that immediate engage, I think they would have a much easier time because you could see them struggling with the side lane pressure, but also, like, the Varus poke as well was a constant threat. And I think, like, as a five man team composition, if a team runs into Bro's composition, I think they can handle it pretty well. But they just didn't have the agency to push in. And I think they struggled with that. I, you know, and I think they should just make it simpler. Make it easy, draft better, engage. Yeah, I mean, it, that's exactly the point. It's like the Bro, the, the comp, the, the concept is like, actually, they have to make the comp into them, like, which is like, oh, they have to control around the object and they have to get the first set up, playing around, like, actually, the pressure, the prior they had. But this game, they actually started really well. But the thing is, like, the basic, the fundamental of playing around the object, like, was uh, so lacking off for Brion. Like, it was, like, really... I was like really sad to watch. Like they had a 3k goal, but the 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 snowball like was like actually just keep like, the, the, actually meeting uh, the middle. The DRX was able to caught up so easily, able to just pressure the side lane. And that was the big issue, right? For a lot of this game, there was absolutely no side lane control for Breon whatsoever. We roll this clip where you're gonna see what happens in the first major Baron fight of this game, and this is one of those moments where you know, as you guys could could see. Bro can't get a handle on how to control this game. Yeah, I mean, you know, you see initially, like, the ult comes out from the Sejuani, they managed to use the melee ult to disengage. But, like, the Poppy is just basically getting one shot here. Like, your front line's getting massacred. You don't have the tools to dictate going in. We even see a mistake from the Azir going too aggressive. But in reality, all you need to do is just keep applying this long-range poke, and you can see, like, the Varus doing so much work over the course of this fight. Yeah, I mean, this is the same thing. As soon as they kill the Azir, like, just take it slow. Let them just come in. If they can't win after, just get reset. And it's a 4v5, it's still a game. But Brion's just like, they were just too desperate. Like, just keep chasing them. And it's like, I mean, also, no wonder why. Like, let's let's see, like, what the actually Poppy build, I, the item build. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's see what, what the build That's here for mind Poppy blowing. was with this Wormogs. Any thoughts on this one, Ox? Um... Yeah, so he, I feel like one of the big issues with this is the poppy was so squishy. We just saw in that clip how quickly it died. And you might think, well, okay, Warmogs, uh, well, that's good because then you can sustain after the poke. The problem is they actually up the health you need for Warmogs to activate. It went from 1100 to 1300. At no point did Gideon have enough health for the Warmogs to actually be able to heal him. So What you're saying is he just had a lot of health, but he wasn't able to actually proc the regen. He didn't yeah. have enough health. He had a lot, but not quite yeah, enough. Yeah, not quite enough. And the locket as well, you know, we actually saw Varus build a Serpent's Fang, and it kind of just 
made the locket kind of null. And we see these this build is really common. It's like the frozen heart, Kanek Rukin for tanks in the jungle. And you know what it does? It makes them tanky. So maybe that should have been the approach because he was just so squishy this game. So both of our games had a pretty similar ending. You know, our script writers will slacken off in this one, I think. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we saw, once again, with no control over the map, the blue side team, This in this case, Bro, is unable to defend their base. We'll take a look at what goes down. This time, it's an Elder Dragon, so a little bit more forgivable. But Huni, walk me through this. Uh, it's really my bad, because like I actually, the, previously, I said, oh, he's not even Elder. So I think they actually, they, they, I think they hear me that, oh, it's Elder, so we got to do this. We gotta burn the Nexus. We gotta burn Nexus for Elder. That basically is what happened. I think this showcases really, really well that right now, like bottom of the team, like the basic from, like playing around objects are so weak. I actually the plans are so declared that it's just like really, really depressed. Yeah, and it's so clear that like it kind of caught them off guard because it took so long for someone even to kind of return and deal with it. But it's just, I think what makes it even more infuriating because again, it's more forgivable because it's Elder. But the the opposite situation happened last game. Like, you know, you saw a Dragon for Nexus trade and you fell for the same trap. Yeah, definitely not learning very quickly. Because of this game's really wild nature, as well as the, its strange ending, I think this POG might go several different places. Let's take a look at who gets it. It will be Rascal. Uh, I, Huni, I spent a lot of time talking to you about Rascal's NAR performance. He's actually at a very low win rate across his career. He's actually, uh, you know, sitting at a about 33% win rate. Any thoughts on his NAR performance here? Uh, yeah, I mean, not be able to pressure Udyr in, like, in the lane phase as well. And it's like when he has an item, like, I think, at least I think he saw lane really, really well. That actually the game kind of, it was like hard, he made the game hard for Breon. So I think until the game end, I think he was also not grouping and just playing for side lane. Like, I think that's good. But I think a lot of time, I think he should have just pressed R a lot. Yeah, I ended up going for Teddy here, and there were a few votes for that. I feel like even though we didn't see too much fire, uh, like kills actually come out from it, I think him consistently landing a poke was really massive. The Serpent's Fang itemization works really well. I, you know, I checked at the end of the game, it reduced shielding by like 5,500, something crazy. So a lot of value Big from value, that. value, for sure. Well, I wouldn't call this series necessarily a nail-biter by any means, but it has been very close. We're going to send it back to Valdez and Chronicler to take us through the concluding game. Thank you, Spacers, for that wonderful breakdown. It was also nice to get the confirmation that Gideon was, in fact, not healing. I'm like, yeah, that's a great item. And then throughout the game, I'm like, wait, he's not healing. Um, yeah. So got to be careful for that. And it's good to be tanky if you're a tank. That's kind of what I learned from this space. I just want to commend the space for being able to identify what the breakpoints were in such an action-packed game. And I can't wait to see what the next game is going to bring us, Feldus, because you know what also happened in that game? The bird won. Oh, the reign no. of terror is over. The losses are broken. Wait, but now they're just going to pick it more. I know. <laughs> I'm just prepping That's the everyone problem. that is watching right now that that is what is about to happen. And Orianna's banned, so at least they won't be able to pick it into Orianna. Um, but pretty quick bans here so far. The Renata Glass is going to be banned away this time instead of the uh, Varus, which was banned by DRX in game number one. Will this final third ban change for the side of Bro? No, it will not. They also banned Poppy third in game one. And Sejuani is going to be slammed down. They say the one consistent thing is that Sponge plays Sejuani, and that's all we care about. And normally, uh, you would expect there to be a high priority on Chromafrostable champions, but we've already seen it. That isn't necessarily the case. Now, there is a champion that has... Oh, okay. Yeah, that has great range. Love that. That's... You know, I, wa I want to see Corky, obviously. I want to see Jinx Corky specifically. But this... This is a good start. We're speed running this draft. You have one form of outranging. Please, I beg of you, okay, man, bro. Ban Corky. Do not let them play Corky into Zaya. They'll ban it, right. I think I think that already Azir into Zaya, we saw some of the issues where if the Azir can get a couple of soldiers down, it can be hard for you to impact the team fight. But Corky is that bird like a million times worse. So ban Corky Azir. Jax. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Jack Sejuani. Synergy. It's a, good, it's a good combo. Taking it away. Rascal, you know, uh, has played great games of Jax in his career. I, I don't know about recent, but definitely in the past, Aatrox seemingly something that DRX might want to go for here again. It is noteworthy that Brion went for the red side again, which has been the only side that's won so far. Counter picks. I don't think they mattered that much in the last game, uh, but they definitely mattered in game number one. And it's LeBlanc instead, which hints that Brion are going to pick Azir here on R4? Or they, they, they pick Corky and they're like, I don't want to play Corky into LeBlanc. That's a good idea. I wonder if Cars can play the Corky. Again, it's, it's not that difficult. You just got to be good at hitting the rockets, basically. Um, Tristana banned. So it will not be denied at this point in time. And it's Azir. Hey, you know how long Azir's win streak is? A game. One. For Alves. <laughs> he won a game. One. Uh, this is, uh, I think, not the best Akali angle. No. Say, he is one of Sadab's better champions. We're seeing a lot of chuckles. I do think it's going to get locked in because you're playing into, me uh, into specifically the Maokai as well as the Rakan. But. Sejuani will have permafrost value, and I think Sejuani Akali actually is quite strong. So that is something that's good. What they should do is slam Corky. Slam, slam Corky. But that's not what they're going to do. They're going to pick Satep as Akali. And they still have a range advantage in the Jinx, as well as the Kench. And Yone is banned away. This don't do it, Morgan. Morgan, oh, I... No, no, no. <laughs> no! God. The Renekton! The Azir! Why? <laughs> oh no. The flips for objectives. <laughs> there, there won't be any flips for all this. You see, lost two games. Yeah, that's true. This is a different team. I'm saying old Gen G. Yeah, so Renekton, we've seen it once. Morgan played it. It was really not good. That was into Udir. Um. And I guess the idea was that, okay, you can have some lane presence, you can break some of the shields, and maybe you can trade. It didn't do any of that. Against the Aatrox, I, you know, in general, um, the Renekton, you know, you can dash around, you can make it kind of difficult for the Aatrox, but doesn't necessarily stomp lane or anything like that. And it's not really a strong pick in this meta. So very much just Morgan saying, okay, well, you denied me Yone, so I have to play Renekton. That's all I can do. It's the only option. Comfort is king, Valdez. That has been the approach of both of these drafts. B1 Sejuani for Sponge. And the fans of both of these teams, you can feel the emotional investment. Because we have fun. But the reality is this is an incredibly important matchup for these two teams. Winning this could be what... I don't I don't know about turning your season around, but at the very least gives you something to cling on to. Sometimes you just need to win. And one of these teams is about to get their first. It's going to happen. Let's hop into the rift for game number three. All right, here we go. Game three. We broke the seasonal record for lowest amount of kills in the last game of six. The previous record was 11. Uh, the all time record is three, as we said during that last game. So we're. I don't think we're going to break that anytime soon. I think it's very difficult to end the game with only two kills. So <laughs> I also think it's very hard. I just to hope we get above to six. end the game to end the game with three kills, Feldes. That doesn't sound reasonable either. Ward is placed. We'll be able to track Gideon here, and when it comes to the bot lane, I do think that there is a ton of value. The one downside of this Kench specifically, even though we'll give Teddy a lot of innate safety is that I do think that Brion actually have a lot of team fight damage uh, and you some of the big threats are Urzaya, uh, Zair, as well as uh, the Renekton. And both of those are actually pretty effective, right? Zair obviously with his soldiers and his swoop, uh, Morgan with his Q and his ultimate in team fights. 
And Kenshi's, I think, at his best when you're playing like Vi, Akali, these type of picks that are very single target focused, have a lot of burst, but still going to give Teddy a lot of extra safety. And Teddy's play today, I think, has been good. Even in that last game, wasn't flashy by any means, but he got the job done. And that's what matters. Junglers are going to be the main difference maker here for me. We do have tracking of either of them. There is a ward on the Raptor pit for Sponge, so they know that he started at the top side of the map. Obviously, Gideon got spotted while doing his red, which means that Teddy and Bledek can actually abuse the level one advantage that they have. There's a range advantage for Teddy, plus the fact that Tom Kench's level one is obscenely aggressive and uh, not something that Effort and Envy really want to mess, uh, mess with. Yeah, they did a good job of putting that pressure on early on here. Bleda hitting some licks already. I'm curious about the top lane to see exactly if this Renekton can have much value at all. Mid, it does seem like Seitab pretty comfortable on the Akali. You can see he's already putting pressure on Akaris and looking for some aggressive trades. Can't be difficult for Azir to trade back on those. Rascal did not have a fun time against the Yone. Uh, as the game went along, especially. Morgan ended up at, like, level 18 super early on. He had four items. He was just dominating in the side lane. He was very tanky, so he could team fight as well. And so Renekton is kind of... I'm not sure about this champ. I, I am, in a bad way. Um, oh. I, and, and not in general. I'm not a Renekton hater. But I do think that Renekton right now just isn't in the best of spots. I don't think Sundered Sky, for example, is as good as Effort. Oh! Well, he's Rakan, so he's fine. Um, and and the Renekton is one thing. I don't really love it. It, it is comfort for Morgan. He has been able to have consistent team fight uh, presence in the past, so that's something that hopefully Bro can rely on. What I do want to highlight, though, is that even though we are uh, collectively, I think, in uh, agreement that Corky is definitely the way to go in this matchup, because Corky in general is absolutely ludicrous and. If, if, if all two of your previous games have gone down, uh, come down to stalemates, maybe getting the best poke character in the game would have been good. But no, Seitab actually does go way back. Like, has had amazing Akali games in challengers over the last couple of years. And it also is a good matchup into specifically this year. We already saw that in game number one today. And I also don't think there's as much safety for Brian. Obviously, Envy has his ultimate, but that alone isn't going to be enough as uh, that permafrost synergy. Oh, well, it only works if you auto him. There you go. I, I feel he did it. They could have committed to that <laughs> a bit more. No, that is too scary, Chronicler. I guess. Don't force don't, them to don't do something they, they don't want to do. Yeah, they, they, they don't know where, where Gideon is, so they didn't want to get caught in a 2v2. Losing that 2v2 would be potentially a game ending, so understandable. It does mean the wave state is a little bit rough, but then, as I say, that Morgan dashes in, and great trade, but does mean that the wave state is going to be a little tough. Uh, that play from Sponge does relieve some of the pressure, as Satep does not have a Shroud. Normally, when uh, you go that aggressive into some soldiers, you do, so it does take a decent beating, but he does still have Teleport available. And post-6, this matchup obviously tilts heavily towards the Akali. That's really what Satep is looking for. Yeah, unfortunately for him, he's not uh, clearing the minions to hit six. And he is taking quite a beating Just still. About. He's almost there. Should get it off of like three more melees, maybe. There it is. And that's going to mean that Karis will back away. Morgan is doing the Void Bubs. Actually utilizing his ult there. And this is kind of cute. Because of his uh, Empowered W, he's able to kill the shield. So he actually kills these very, very quickly. So, well done. Uh, AoE of Dominus also means that you don't take too much damage there. So, that's before his first back as well. Uh, as uh, Satan is in called shopping. So, nice little win for Breon there. Might have been a predetermined strategy that only a Renekton connoisseur such as Morgan would think of. Yeah, he just gets it. Teddy just take a big chunk as Pleta goes in right onto the chompers. We got Sponge here, but Gideon as well. Three on three. And effort being slowed down quite a bit. Has to run away from this one with his flash, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. He does get a W. Oh, oh. that flash lick is insane as Pleta. Unbelievable. This guy can carry on anything. Very nicely done there as, oh, a play in Karas? A Aatrox gink? Okay, well, it is Azir, so he just he dashes out. But big win there. 
Doesn't go to, to Jinx, which obviously would have been the best case scenario, but it still puts the Brion back, uh, bot lane on the back foot. Assist for Teddy, still going to be big. And Plata are going to be a little bit tankier in these ensuing fights. And early lead here for DRX coming out. Yeah, it's going to feel pretty good. Spin lane continuing to go well for Setup after he TP's back. Has that alternator up and running. Looking for those chunky trades as you do. Top lane, you can see that Rascal, he has fallen behind pretty far in terms of CS. It is pushing into him, but yeah, it's not easy. Even with some uh, some help from Sponge that one time, if you can call that help. Um, yeah, it's not going to have a fun time in that side lane. But at least it's not Yone, I suppose. It's not. And whereas Yone is also uh, capable of, I think, winning this matchup for basically indefinitely, I do think it gets better for the Aatrox. Once you get max points in Q, as... Oh, I, I actually wouldn't have minded if Satop tried to look for a little bit more there, but there is a decent amount of vision available, so don't know if he could have really gotten an angle. As we take another look at this, and it's effort going just a little bit too far. Also uses both Battle Dance and W. Uh, or rather, Battle Dance is back afterwards, meaning that um, he is the one trying to tank for Envy here. Doesn't actually have a reliable way of getting out anymore, even given that Zyrakhan is so much innate safety. No root is found, and then Pleda <laughs> with the flash lick, really big there. You see effort last minute trying to get behind those minions. Not gonna be the case. I think there was a rocket in flight, but maybe it wouldn't have killed him. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the play from Pleda was correct there. I don't, because Teddy also had not back chat, I think, at that point. And even if he did with just the long swords, I don't know if that would have been enough. And guaranteeing the kill was more important than uh, ru running the risk of it not going over. And for Breon, that by itself, not really cause for great concern, but definitely not the star that you're looking for. As I would love it if DRX tried to use this bot side prio to play towards a dragon, but Gideon is continuously in the area. And uh, that might be enough of a deterrent. Yeah. It almost feels like the junglers are living down here after the early game. Just wanting to get some pr uh, pressure on the streak. And, you know, will they actually use that pressure to take down pressure the objective? Pressure is a tool in of itself. We just need to think further into the future, Valdez. Okay. Well, Gideon's going to go in there. Gets the Scuttle Crab, he's going to make this happen as Morgan is here. And now Sponge, he is flashless, he is dashless. Oh, actually, he does get over the wall, but he's not getting away for very long. But down he will go. Morgan picks up the kill with a nice little Renekton play. And it's a roam of Lord Morgan. Doesn't FTP, doesn't care, just walks down, really catches the RX of guard. Sponge is very far up thinking that... In the matchup, he has an advantage as, oh, they're going in. The rocket blocked. Smite is... Are they going in? Zion. Okay, we're going in onto this one. There is the gobble up onto Effort, and down he will go. That's the trade, I suppose, as the kill is handed over to Satab, but the Infernal Drake goes to Bro. And that is, I think, going to be a slight win for DRX. The Drake going over is rough. But we have a good Drake on the Docker with Camtech already being taken out of the equation. It also equalized a lot of Rascal's disadvantage. Even though the, the gold, I don't think, is going to get a lot better. Rascal was really far behind in experience as well. The one plate is going to mitigate, and the CS disadvantage isn't as big as it was. So that Sky done is going to be really nice for Morgan. But because of that kill on effort, I do think that the RX are going to take it, and it means that they do maintain the gold advantage. Yeah. Sponge going to get to work here. On the, on the, I almost called them the Scuttle Crabs, but no, they're the Void Bubs, official name. And yep, yeah, gonna take them all down. So we're just gonna trade three for three. It's not gonna be like game one, where I believe Bro had a bunch and we're able to push in the side lanes with those. Teddy is, uh, I thought maybe he was alone, but he does have Pleta nearby. Just farming it out. No objectives at the moment. We have also reached unprecedented levels of fighting already in this game, which I think is really exciting. Uh, very nicely done here by Bro.
super straightforward play. They're up a member. They know that there's no teleport available for Rascal, so going in really hard on this, particularly with what Renekton, an active Alan. is a great choice. Sponge could have flashed towards the Tom Kench. Yeah, I, I, I think the, they were afraid of the zoning, but that would have definitely saved them. However, fortunately uh, for DRX, they're still able to find a play here as effort does get gobbled up. I do think, though, that they could have also just kept going and, and tried another play and extended that because the health bars were so low and saved up still had a second dash available, but they didn't want to run the risk. And as a result, we now have still Teddy and Plata doing a good job of keeping this pressure up towards the top side of the map. And that gold lead to me really is the biggest one. The 500 for Morgan, that's nice. But Saitep sitting already on 700. In a side lane, he's going to be really hard to match. I think Morgan might be okay, especially if he builds some Amar, but that's going to hurt his Aatrox matchup. And Karis is not having a good time. And that that's not yeah. going to get better. Already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the more items Saitep gets, the less the Azir is going to be able to do because the, the kill pressure will just go up and up and up. And although, you know, in an extended fight, if the Akali misses everything, perhaps then you could win, but not quite going to happen. Sponge is about to find an angry croc in the bush. Here is Rascal as well, though, trying to turn it onto Morgan, but Sponge is taking too much damage, and down he will go. Morgan, another play as he hides on bush. And now Rascal here, he's got Setup. That's a big rocket of damage as in goes Setup into that back line. They already take out Morgan and Karis is going to be second. And Gideon is left to the Wolves here as well. Does not have Flash. That'll be three kills now for DRX. Can they get any more? Doesn't look like it, but a nice turnaround here from DRX. And DRX starting to pull ahead in this game number three. Actually playing towards the Akali seems to be working out for them very nicely, but to me the main difference maker has been Pleda. So big on these plays, actually saves it here as well, keeps his Akali alive. And Sponge ends up going down, but you always have to be really careful. I think the previous example was a really good example of a kill on a tank that is worth it. Because they knew there wasn't a risk of a fight because they were a member up. But here, look at how much is invested just to kill Sponge, right? Uh, Maokai already used. We have the Dominus already used, and they actually took a pretty decent amount because Rascal has just been able to play without too much of a butter. And then the moment that actual reinforcements arrive, fight is already lost. Setup gets to do a ton of damage here. Uh, the Azir doesn't really do that much at this point with only Nashra's done. And that is going to be the Herald also going over to DRX. Two kills for Rascal also completely obliterate the Goldly that was there for Morgan, which is one of the win conditions yeah. that Bro had set up for themselves. And Satab, again, this Akali is going to be something that's really hard to deal with. And, and even if they do, I don't know what the gold lead is. I'm sure Teddy is still sitting on like, yeah. I don't know, eight, eight, nine hundred gold. We're starting to run out of options for Bro here. Yeah, that's the issue. I mean, there's just a lot of threats, right? It's not like you're running a comp that um, they had in the last game where it's like you've got this Oriana and you've got, you know, not that much consistent damage. You don't have a reliable engage. This time it's like you've got three different types of damage dealers, you have a Sejuani at least to throw in an ult, and you have a lot of ways to get on in there. And as you mentioned, Rascal pretty pretty happy to take fights at this point. He is going to get rooted up a couple of times now as he is being chased, but will he care as the Aatrox just gobbled up here by Pleta, getting in position, gets spit right back out into four people as he decides to do that. And now the damage though is coming in. Nice rocket here from Teddy as he has a very strong front line as well. And Morgan, he's just going to be left alone this time around. As one by one, the dominoes fall. And they'll give this kill over to Teddy for the double. And now he is on the board. And second time in a row, the plan of sacrifice front line, win and shooing fight is working out here for DRX. This time it's Rascal that's the sacrificial lamb. And I, I, I think they knew as well the moment that Plat out went for that. Oh, uh, that bite. Good flash force, though, from effort. That's, that's yeah. what you're going to be very happy about. But it's somewhat mitigated by the fact that Tom Kench exists within this game, right? And, and alone, that's not enough of a win. No, not a dragon. It's going to go the way of DRX. Teddy's going to get the first turret of the game. As we take another look here, 
and uh, throwing everything into this level 11 Aatrox actually is deceptively tanky. And it's the same story where, yes, they're eventually able to kill him, but Plata buys so much time that it doesn't really matter. Plata and Sponge do a decent amount of damage, and then at this point, with Teddy arriving, you see some efforts just like, guys, what are we doing? Are we going in? Are we, are we backing out? I think they just had to like hard commit, try and do something before the, the 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 Akali shows up, but because yeah. Akali is so far ahead, like that's also not going to work. Nice. Give it to Teddy. Give it to Teddy. You said, and they did. <laughs> the Jinx has two kills. And by the way, if that fight broke out for any longer, if that was like a longer fight, Saitab was going to be there first. Oh no, he was because he, he he is super far ahead. Yeah, and Karnas is just here. He's like, oh, I blind picked Azir. I thought this is unbeatable. Right? No. And it, it and there were a lot of other picks they could have gone for as well. <laughs> and, and I find these situations hard to deal with because you got to imagine the teams are able to make the same observations that we are, right? Uh -oh. As, oh, Rascal. Nice sweep at least. Going to buy some time here for cars, but an ult is right on target as Sponge. Just going to sponge him up in the top side. And down will go Karis. Yeah, so as I was saying, in defense of Azir, uh, unfortunate timing, but going to follow through with it nonetheless, is that when you get to this point, I think every player is just completely lacking any form of confidence, which is why the games have played out the way that they have. And it's understandable that as a coach, you'd be like, you know what? We are going to put you on comfort, and then hopefully that's enough. But it's just not. It's just not enough. And right now, Teddy, who doesn't feel like the focal point of this game at all, this is a 2.3k gold lead. That's a 2k gold lead. Jinx, Feldes. 2k? Yeah. This ult is really nice. He got sponged, man. He got sponged. What he does. <laughs> sponge is just going to sponge them. And there's no counterplay. Struggled a bit in the last game, but you talked about comfort. I mean, certainly Sponge loves his Sejuani. And he was first picked it here in this game, so. And that's that's the a good job. Yeah, that's the flip side, right? Like we talked about comfort, but Sponge is B wanting Sejuani. Yeah. And Saitep is playing Akali. <laughs> uh where, whereas yeah. Corky was open. So it goes both ways. And I think it's always important to remember that. But yeah, the Azir specifically also taking into account the context of what we have seen and how much this pick has struggled. And even domestically, our best Azir players are just not able to replicate big level plays with it anymore consistently. And and we we're so used to it in the LCK, basically being meta for I don't know what last three years. Forever. Yeah, mini rework. There was a couple of years there where it was since like a the little dawn bit. of time. Yeah, and then when you go back before that again, <laughs> it was just. Azir Corky, as far back as your time loop goes. Yeah. It goes back pretty far in this case. It does. Here's the Baron. Hello. Hello. There you go. Nice little bowling alley. Need to add some entertainment, you know. We're beginning to see this game take shape the way we expected it to. Um, that ult's not not great, but if he had caught him in midair, man, that would have been that would have really cool. Would have been dope. Yeah, I would have loved that. He just get some chompers down and he's dead. I mean, he's just a Rakan who rushed Mikhail's. So every every time that happens, he's just a Rakan. I have to think of that Corky threat about him just being a Yordle in an, a stupid Yordle in an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> he's just a stupid Yordle in a plane. Yeah. We, we you know I. Thoughts, I think I need to reevaluate. I'm actually happy that we didn't see the Corky. Because we can look at it as like, why didn't you pick Corky? But we can also be grateful, thinking, they didn't just, pick Corky. I just want the teams to pick the right champs, you know? <laughs> no, Valdez, I'm the coping. Ones that make I'm sense. coping, man. The ones that make Come sense, on. please. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have Lich Bane here for Saitam. Saitam's been getting more and more popular. And it's certainly very good on certain champs. We, we saw it on Gragas, actually, recently, and that was great. Willer, yeah. He <laughs> did, did uh, some he big did, boom boom. Very well. It feels very good on Akali. Um, obviously, you know, you're not really going to do too much to the tanks, but as we can see, there's not a whole lot of MR that's been built just yet. So if you can go, like, third item Void Staff or Crypt Bloom or something, 
should be okay. And for now, in the super fed state that he's in, he is going to be one comboing Chorus and Envy and Effort, essentially. Yeah. So, don't mind it, personally. No. I, uh, I personally think that, particularly if you want to be doing all the side laning, the extra damage helps to take down turrets as well. Obviously, Storm Surge is good, but honestly, when you're this far ahead of the curve, as you were saying, I think you one tap everyone that you want to one tap anyway. So doesn't matter as much. Uh, the Ocean Dragon, as we have mentioned, Ocean Soul, not the best. Going to feel great with specifically Rascal. Maybe Sponge if he goes for Warmox in a in a way that the Warmox actually activates. That could be good. You know? <laughs> Amp that up even more. It's hard to do that now. Yeah. By those uh, elixirs of iron. That we actually sold that. Uh, the, I, I remember that. Yeah, it was yesterday. Well, all it's going to be thrown out for some reason. Um, just trying to prevent them from taking the turret. I, I guess it is going to work. From Gideon, I mean. He just throws out yeah. the alt uh, and he says no. And and for DRX, they're happy as well because they got a teleport out of the Azir. So it's a win-win, truly. Which we all know don't exist really in League of Legends. This car is going for Void Stuff second. And... I don't love it. I think that Void Staff uh, is is still a really good third item. I think there are situations that you're playing into like double frontline can be good. But here, particularly given that Aatrox isn't building any MR because he's playing into Morgan, I would have much rather have Leandris, which also does a great job of shredding through tanks yeah. without having to give up. Uh, obviously, Void Staff is going to scale really well. Um, so that optimism is great. That is, that is, that is valuable. Uh, Vel, I don't give me that look. <laughs> don't give me that look, Velvas. Understanding that the game is going to go eight years. This is a nice little uh, flip into the turret. Now Santab's in some trouble, but he's a Kali. So he will be able to get away here. Doesn't even have to flash, but it's getting a little bit dicey. Hey, and that's the upside. He is doing almost true damage uh, with the Sword Pen Boots, as well as Void Staff. So I'm be feeling good about that at least. And this mid lane turret is still standing. The problem is that once Teddy hits his third item, which I assume will be rapid fire, I do think things are going to get considerably worse for the bros. Because it will give a lot of extra poke damage, which is going to force them to engage. And they are sitting at a pretty substantial deficit as we do have a trap is being set as Effort just walks past the trap and just gets <laughs> free vision in the Baron pit. <laughs> Yeah, as you do. As one does. You know, he was a little bit far away. A nice new Baron Pit helping out with that as another ult going to be traded here. Ooh, that spot. was right on target. Nicely done. Yeah. That's big. Maybe that's enough for them to decide to start pushing this mid lane and getting a turret. I'm not going to... No, 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 Baron. That's too much. That's, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's too much, though. No, you can't do that. No. That's, that's not allowed. All right, let's see it. There that's it is. Fire Cannon. The poke, RFC. the range. Yep. And now, in certain situations, uh, some champs like Envy, who doesn't quite have the range, uh, won't just be able to freely farm. If Teddy's there, he's going to get poked away. He's going to be pushed out. And it's going to just add even more pressure uh, in this mid lane, probably, you would imagine, with the 80 carries at this point. I like this new pit because you can... Never fully deny vision, it feels like. Whee! Which, you know what that means, especially for our weaker teams, is that nobody does Baron. <laughs> no, but... No. <laughs> That's a risk, Velvet. Yeah. Because they might have vision. Everyone knows League of Legends is a game about risk management. Mm. Can't take too many risks. You gotta make sure that the risks that you take are calculated. Not too spooky. Not too spooky. And that you don't take... Yeah. Really, any of them is, is the takeaway from this series. Yeah. Karis is the one person that can match Poke with Teddy. He's doing a pretty good job of that. Although, uh, ult is going to come through. Up on the top side, MV is going to have to get Mikhail's on that one. And he doesn't have his ult quite yet, but in goes Satan, nearly dies, gets devoured. And with that shield, is going to survive. That was pretty deep in there. And Envy, I mean, he didn't even have his ult, but he got it right at the end as well. That was very risky. Little dicey there from Satap. Wants to make the big play. Yet again, showing that going for risky plays won't get you anywhere in, the, in this game of League of Legends. 
Rascal finding Gideon. Oh, I don't um, know how going back in there. But uh, Rascal doesn't hit the Q sweet spot on Q3, so Gideon does get to walk away with his life. But Satap did get devoured. Plata really crisp timing there yet again. And should be still enough here for DRX to take control of the pit because they still can't match Satap, even though his back was unfortunately not that great because was forced to back, sitting on these items before as well. And with the sideline shoving, he should be able to at the very least set up the threat of a flank. There's no devour right now, so maybe Bro was looking for that. But then they actually do need to commit because side is not looking good. And in the longer yeah. trades, Teddy is going to poke you down. And they are kind of kind of paralyzed right now. They don't really know what to do. They're just going to go for an engage here onto Rascal, who is just kiting them away into their own jungle towards Satan and saying, okay, if you want to go on me, I'm going to bring my buddy over as well. And Sintab is just so scary, he's getting in there. And now Morgan and everybody's just routed. They're all just having to run away. Somehow they all get away, which probably shouldn't have happened, but a lot of flashes blown there on the side of Bro. Just to survive, a couple of them going as, ooh, that was pretty close. <laughs> The amount of zaps and, and super mega death rock and set have just been fired into the ether. But DRX show us again. Don't need to get kills to get objectives. Soul point picked up here by Sponge and Rascal as the attempted collapse on the Aatrox not actually working out. And the gold lead remains at a steady 4.1k. Yeah, just hanging around at that level. Uh, we are going to have a death cap here eventually for Satab. And still no Void Staff. I guess he'll go fourth item Void Staff. Uh, you did see there as well that his damage to the front line isn't actually going to be as big as you might otherwise want, but it also means that Karas, Envy, and Effort will pop um, to an extreme degree. A sponge. Knock up on a sponge here. He is very tanky. I mean, look at this. Not really doing too much. And they just turn it on to Gideon. He just gets blown up. There's no committal. They say, oh, sponge doesn't deal. He doesn't take damage. Now he's taking some damage, but the Devourer was always there. And with TP coming in and a knock up here from Plata, it is pretty huge effort trying his best, but nothing they can do. Cars puts up the wall, and that doesn't do anything. As down goes Morgan, and Rascal is still on the chase. They will get away, but this should be barren for DRX. And it's Paletta again with a crisp, crisp chomp there. Finds his buddy Sponge. Crispy. Eats him up. Yeah, we, get, we go back to the Apple conversation later <laughs> on. I'm sure Kench has some choice thoughts on that. But crucially, even with Sponge missing the re-engage onto Envy, the moment that they try to go for that kill with Plata there, you already knew it's it's just not going to happen. Teddy is just free-firing the whole time. And the target selection from Brian in this game, unfortunately, remains less than ideal. As we look here, a lot of them, it, this is fine if this is just Sponge. But look at Teddy. He's just standing there behind a rock, free-firing. Sponge, obviously, uh, even if you do hit that Q there, I don't think that necessarily sets up the play, but it doesn't matter because Plata's there, eats him up, gets the knock up. I don't even, I don't even know. I think so. What happened there in Karas's defense? I think he was trying to preemptively predict Satab going in with the E uh, and then counter that, but it it did look uh, rather unfortunate. Now the Red Bull Baron power play coming through, ten to three. Soul point in about two and a half minutes, or soul rather in about two and a half minutes. And I think DRX are looking to be the team to finally get that first win between these two. Yeah, and you know, DRX was the overwhelming favorite in terms of the analyst predictions. Uh, there was one person on the Coco. Korean side, Goko, who did go for Brion. But it was closer than I thought it was going to be. I mean, this game isn't over, but there is certainly a pretty overwhelming lead right now for DRX. Can they close it out from here? They're feeling pretty confident. Teddy is on Jinx, and now he's going to just force an all from Envy. This is what I was talking about. In a 1v1 situation where Teddy's able to poke, the Zaya just sits there and dies. He doesn't really have any function. Envy can't do anything about this either, right? Like, that's yeah. the problem. That that's just a matchup thing. Teddy at this point is just going to take over the game. And all the gold that was invested in him early works out very, very nicely. Yeah. Look at those autos! Gonna come out 
And the autos are getting pretty overwhelming. Again, Karis, the only one to match, and will chunk down Teddy quite a bit. DRX still trying to break out of the base. They do have Rascal on the side lane. Look at the timing of this, actually. He's got a really nice big wave down on the bottom side right as the mid lane is crashing. Very nicely done by the side of DRX on their push. This is the way you got to do it if you want to be as efficient and clean as possible. You got to tighten those waves up. And they have Teddy for the seeds, essentially. Everybody else can just provide a front line, and he's just there shelling everything. If it's a turret, if it's a champion, he doesn't care. He'll take it out. And that is two inhibitors that will go down here into the pockets of DRX. The Fountain Laser fighting freely, knowing that Pleda has his back no matter what. Lockett's done on this Kench. Pleda has been uh, keeping... I, I, he ate, Did he even eat Teddy at any point? I know he's in Rascal Sponge and Satap. I don't, I, think, I don't so. think Teddy has actually been threatened in the This is the ADC's dream game. Where you're just sitting there and they're going on other targets and you're like, I'm right here. <laughs> you can't ignore not, me. They're disrespecting him by not trying to take him out. And Teddy is about to have a full inventory of completed items. Yeah, he's already uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty strong, mm -hmm. I would say. But it's about to get worse. It is. For bro. And it's rough. You know, both teams are 0-3. This win is the one that is going to sting the most, particularly with how the series has played out. As I don't push. Trap. You see how many question mark pings are there? <laughs> I think. From they, the blue team? I think they have an inkling. I think they know. Yeah. Sponge. Just walk into them. He's oh, he takes a lot of damage, actually, from Envy. Jesus. Envy does have some nice damage of his own. Rascal's going to be pushed away. He's not in this fight, and it's taken by Gideon, who will take the objective bounty. So no Ocean Soul just yet. Look at the waves. They Morgan. can play the slow. Uh -oh. Yeah, he's being kited out. Morgan's just left to the fishes, and down he will go. And here is Rascal. He's going to be isolated. He is Aatrox, though, and does get away. It's now on the flash. Teddy not going to hit that zap. Desperate for the engage is DRX. But it doesn't look like they're quite going to get on top of this team. Satev is very fast. He's got that Lich Bane sprinting at them. Teddy's done 9,000 damage. In one fight! In one fight, and Satev finally finds an enemy champion. And that should finally be the nail in the coffin on the series, I believe. Satev threatening the flank. There is a little bit of a wave as Car is. That is a bit of a sweep as well, but he immediately goes down as he does not get Teddy, and that's going to do it, guys. Down will go Envy, and that will be game number three going into the hands of DRX as they take the 2 1 victory over Breon tonight. And it was a hard fought effort, but in the end, DRX is able to get their first victory here. Already got a match win, or a rather a game win. Now able to add an actual series to their record as well. And stand out for me today, the bot lane. Yet again, Plata and Teddy. Teddy returning to his fountain laser glory. They should just do this every game. Yeah. Just they do should. this and pick Corky instead. I mean, the, I can't really say that in this game because the Akali worked out really well. Saita played well. But against better teams, I think, you know, just pick up the Corky and you've got Jinx, and you just scale, and you rely on Teddy, just like all of his old teams used to. Oh, Outside of ice, Rascal. The days. Looking happy. Oh, the Breon camps. I was worried about these. That's going to sting. Still unable. Sponge. Was Sponge doing the faker? I don't know. I, I know there was that commercial he did where it's like, please turn off the light. I don't know. Where he like, blocks the, the light. And, and let's not forget, this is uh, this is Sponge's first series win. And yes, for Satan, I'm not sure. I remember that he fell uh, filled in last year. I don't know if he got a, just a game win because he did get POG or series win. But for Sponge, I am very certain. Plata, and I know I know that the damage numbers were that, but to me, Plata in the final game, yeah, he was uh, he was my POG. He was excellent. And give it, a gale, uh, give it away already. And give it a whale. Give it a whale. Yeah. I <laughs> To be that honest, game took a lot out of us, Feldes. This bot lane, if Teddy continues to play really well in late game scenarios, they are very strong. Now they will have to get through lane, and you know it's not going to be as easy against some strong opponents. But 
maybe they can cook something up here. Just try to try to play for that bottom lane, get some reliable lanes elsewhere, and you know, put Sponge on Sejuani every single game, and maybe you got something going. And against the top teams, we can all see that today the decisiveness wasn't there. Uh, the uh, level of play was all over the place. But against some of the weaker teams, Nongshim comes to mind. Yes, they got 2 0 by them, but in a second rematch, I don't think that it's going to be quite that simple as we take another look here at the play, uh, or the plays rather, that got DRX their first series win. Yeah, I mean, it started with some plays around this top river. There was also this one where oftentimes somebody would get focused down and then they get devoured. And even if they eventually die, Teddy was always left to do whatever he wanted. And nobody ever threatened Teddy the entire game. And he was just getting fed, super fed the entire time. And he ended up with basically six items by 35 minutes and he carried the game. And for Breon's side, we saw some glimpses, some moments, and, and that first game still is going to be the uh, the main one for me, where they actually were able to utilize the counter picks so efficiently, but the main issue for me is not learning from what they showed in that series themselves, right? Uh, particularly that Azir pick is one that I think is really going to sting. Morgan actually had, I think, as good as a game as you could reasonably expect, given the state of Renekton at the moment. But the moment that he went down in the bot side fight, kind of knew that it was not looking too good for the bros. I am curious about the Azir um, prioritization in the second series. <laughs> If we'll even see it at all. As we're screaming Azir. Oh, I can tell how much it means as well. First win coming through. Kill him. Nice. We won. Flat out, Teddy. We got him. We got him, guys. Yeah. And Teddy did some boom boom rocket damage in this game. Nobody really able to match him on either team. And I don't even, at the same time, I don't even mind your play to vote. I think it's totally fine. Guy had an insane game. And yeah, uh, that one for Teddy POG as well. I think Teddy, his position was impeccable. Yep. And uh, he did do uh, almost 10K in a, in a team fight. That'll get you there. It'll probably get you there. We'll see if it's 11 out of 12 as we send it over to the space to break down that game number three. Welcome back to the space. The first win here for DRX and the return of the Fountain Laser himself in Teddy. I'm still Wolf. I'm still joined by Ox and Hooney. And we had a game where Teddy went back to an old favorite on the Jinx, was set up well by his front line, and he popped off. Gentlemen, thoughts on the draft? You know, I mean, I like it. I feel like a lot of times some teams get so stuck into, okay, what's really strong in this patch? What's popular right now? What are the other teams are playing? Which is kind of sometimes the fault we've had with Azir, which is still really popular despite it struggling really hard. And they went for this Jinx, which outranges Desire really hard. It's really hard to deal with that. And they didn't have enough engage tools to really shut it down with our Tom Kenny backing it up. They didn't have long range options to kind of counteract it. And it just felt like every team fight, Teddy was just free hitting. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's only like the flank options or it's a Maokai ulti, but I think they also have a <coughs> Tam Kenshi ulti that has a safe, the safety tools in the team fight, no matter what. And also, if they go two full ham, they have a double melee on the top side of my map, which is like Akali and Aatrox. And Akali was like really, really fed as well into Azir. Like in lane phase, I think he played really, really well. And then Zaytop kind of, he was like a little bit poor, but also they had a Sejuani all the game, like which is like was strong into Maokai. So it was like, it was e easier for DRX. It was a m having more options for DRX to play out th this early game. They had a lot of options, and there were a lot of skirmishes that happened in the early game that defined that lead that we did eventually see Teddy get, where he started to pop off. And a lot of these fights were around the Sejuani and also the Tom Kench. Let's take a look at one of those major fights that happens here on the Dragon, uh, or near the Dragon Pit at 15 minutes. Yeah, and I think the key thing is the fact that in these fights, uh, even though we see Teddy end up joining late, it's really a scenario where he's basically untouched for the whole of it. A lot of resources are used early, a lot of health bars drop low, and it's like a perfect scenario. So even though they lose the Aatrox, you now have this Jinx coming in, and they just don't have the tools to counteract. As soon as you start getting those resets, you're just taking over. 
Yeah, it was a great Divar until actually, you know, the carry actually arrived here. And as soon as Teddy got the double kill here, he never... Teddy is like really known as like not actually kind of making mistake as well. So like it was like really easy for him to be like not just keep consistently keep farming over experience and it's like keep taking around the map like they're using the prio. I mean he is a really veteran and it's just movement, the map movement generally. I think it was a really great game. I mean, obviously a lot of the attention was on the front line, was on the tanks. So, you know, Teddy has a lot of space. Great job, of course, by his jungler there as well as the Tom Kench to keep him alive. Plata had a pretty decent game himself. But the game didn't end there. That was the beginning of Teddy getting very fed. But then we move into this Baron fight towards the end, and this is where things really got locked up. Yeah, in this situation, you know, they direct so much damage on the Sejuani, who's built to be an absolute beefcake. And it's just no way of really getting the Jinx again. They burn so much CC, they burn the Maokai all, it's blocked. And here the Renekton tries to finish off the Sejuani. The fact that you see the Tom Kel Kench ult used to save the Sejuani really shows how lacking the target priority was. But Teddy just untouched. Yeah, I mean, the, I think this is a thing that, like, the reason why the Rankton is actually not showing, or, like, or a lot of the character that has only single target, the point CC, like, these things are not actually popular because, like, there are so many tools that, like, these days, especially in the pro, pro league, like, all the compositions has to be, like, more multi-target, like, wombo combo, like, otherwise, the team fight, the value actually just kind of goes down, and it's, I think this is a like, great showcase is that actually what happened. What are your thoughts on the Renekton uh, that we did see actually come out here, Huni? It feels like a bit of a Morgan special. Is this pick maybe on the edge of coming back into the meta, or is it just Morgan things? I mean, I think it's a, personally, I think it's like really in the Morgan special, but I think if you actually pick up the Morgan like that, like at least like you actually need to play more like aggressively with the jungler that just like, it is like stronger than 1v1 after the item change, especially the Gore, you're not going to Gore Drinker. So I think, imagine you have a Ranch and Sage and it's just actually bull on top, uh, like just 100% putting resource on top side. That would be more makes sense. Let's see who ends up picking up the POG here. Of course, uh, all eyes were on the bottom lane and it will be Pleta who actually gets it here. You know, this is an unusual circumstance where I'm not actually voting. I probably would have voted for Pleta myself, but he and Teddy both had such a phenomenal game. Yeah, I really think Pleta not only had a good game here, but I feel like even though DRX have struggled so far this season, he's actually had some really good games, and it's been a bit heartbreaking when they end up losing despite the fact he's had such a good impact as a support, but I'm glad to see him getting recognized in this one, really doing a lot, not only to obviously keep Teddy safe when time is needed, but saving other teammates or at least extending their lives throughout these skirmishes. Yeah, I think it is really crazy to me. It's like the player actually just right now, like, I, I mean, as we kind of said it before, like he's the most consistent player in DRX already. And I think that it's great to see the, uh, I think DRX will be able to find out like where they have an actual team comp that is like, where is their, their win condition? It's just like bottom. It's really clear. A very split vote here, as you can see, Teddy just won off there. We also had a vote coming through to mid as well there on the Korean side. But we do, of course, have both DRX players standing by, and Deer is ready for the translation. Take it away. Oh, not quite yet. My apologies. I'm uh, rushing into it. I rushed in, guys. Um, I'm just really excited to hear from, from Teddy, or uh, from Pleta, rather, because he did end up winning that POG there. And... Uh, you know, we, we don't every day get to see supports take that PUG. It's been happening a little bit more recently. I think we've had big glow-ups from a lot of our challenger supports like Andil we saw yesterday as well. Yeah, they just get robbed so often, you know, the underappreciated role. I think we can all agree, you know, I think that's that's fair to you agree, Huni? Uh, just a little bit. A I little mean, bit. But he stole the first kill, though. Like, the Zing's already flashed, but he fl he stole with the flash kill. Kills a kid. Kills so a kid. that's why I vote for kid. Daddy. Kills a kid. Uh, Huni is uh, definitely a perfectionist here uh, on the space, but looks like that interview is finally ready. So, dear, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation. We are here joined by Rascal and Pleta from DRX. Congratulations! You finally got your first meaningful win, Rascal and Pleta. Rascal, you finally got your first win. How do you feel? I was hoping that we would uh, create more win conditions in the earlier stage of the season, but we are trying to get ourselves back, and I hope that we get to keep this up. And Plata, it must have been so hard with the recent losses. How do you feel? Just like... It was shown uh, earlier. Uh, it's been a long time since I won. 
And, you know, I was just thinking about when will I be able to break my losing streak, and I was uh, brooding over it, but I think we were really prepared for today with all the coaching staff, um, preparing for the draft, and I'm really thankful for all my teammates and my, our fans and the staff. Plata, you mentioned that you were feeling a little down. So how did you keep a, uh, a positive mindset? I think I was able to communicate a lot with Teddy. I would try to go on, on a walk um, to refresh my, my emotions and just to get a fresh uh, breath of fresh air, uh, like listening to music and such. And your head coach mentioned in an interview that mistakes from practice was shown on stage. And with the first win on the line today, what did you focus on the most? In practice, I think we... Definitely saw a lot of mistakes. So we tried to put our efforts into trying to uh, do practice as if it's the real thing. And Rascal, thanks to Danar heavily controlling the side lanes, it looks like the team was able to snowball the game very well. And Nar isn't known to be your top pick. So what made you play him today? So today's overall tempo in the game was pretty slow, it felt like. And in game two, I realized that playing a side lane champion would make it a little easier for us to gain control of the game. And game two had the least kills of 2024 spring. And instead of standing off against Aphelios, it was notable how the team ended the game through macro plays. So who made the call to backdoor? Uh, I was the one who uh, made the call. We were not exactly confident when it come to, came to uh, team fights. So just when we got the right angle to backdoor, we just went ahead and invested in fully into it. And the one who broke Azir's 11 losing streak was Seitab. So what does DRX's read on Azir as a team? I think we just think that he's so viable, he's usable. I think we were, it was quite questionable in game whether it's good in the game. And Pleta, in game three, against Zaya and Rakan, you guys picked Jinx Kench. So what makes this comp strong against Zaya and Rakan? Zaya and Rakan has pretty decent value, but I believe that James Kench has a really good push against this comp. And later in the late game, I thought that it's stronger and it scales a lot better. So that's probably why. So is this a viable pick against other comps then to expect in the future? I think we'll just have to see, but you know, there is definitely some possibility. And Plata, in game three, your Tom Kench was so beefy in the entire game. So let's take a look at the moment where Teddy and Plata's synergy just stood out. Do you remember this part? Yes, I do. So what was your calm with Teddy like here? Instead of calms, I think we were just trying to make the right decision on our own. I think we saw a good angle and we had really a good synergy here. So I think that's why it ended up on our favor this time. It looks like you two are very much on the same page. And here you said, thank God, and you guys celebrated with each other. You guys seem very close with each other, so uh, how's the team atmosphere right now? I feel like our team atmosphere has always been really good from a long time ago, and everybody has such good temperament and personality, and I think uh, Teddy is such a good person. 
I would say that we have a very good team spirit overall. And Rascal, how do you think of the team atmosphere lately? I feel like Pleta summed it up pretty nicely. I feel like everyone in the team has a really positive mindset and I, it actually gives me a good mindset as well. And Rascal, since you are an experienced older brother figure, are you leading the team? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess you'll have to ask Plita. Yeah, our older brother figure uh, players, they definitely take care of us really well. They will buy us expensive meat and such. It looks like Rascal is carrying the team in other ways as well. Let's hear what do you have as your goal for this year? I feel like our recent performance hasn't been too great. So my goal would be to win as much as possible. Or it used to be to win as much as possible earlier. But I think now that we are here, I would have to say I would like to keep up my performance. And Pleta? Of course, winning is our goal. I'm a little regretful that we weren't able to continue a good uh, start. But if we're able to keep our heads up and keep our performance and keep putting in our efforts, I believe it'll turn out great. And you guys will be meeting T1 and KT next week. It won't be an easy match, but what is your resolution? We'll make sure to be ready for that match and we'll try to do our best. And Plata? We'll try to apply our practice into the real thing and on stage we'll make sure that we do well. And this will be the end of the interview with Rascal and Pleta from DRX and Back to the Space. Great translation as always, dear. Uh, great to hear from these players. You know, I think the team atmosphere definitely looks bleak from the outside looking in, but hearing from the players, you could see Rascal is doing a lot to try to keep this team, uh, their heads level. Here are our standings. DRX, they have a tough next week with the telecom teams, but at least now they've got this one win on the board. Yeah, I know it seems like a small thing just getting that, that one win, like they're still eighth in the standings, but the difference between that and being in a position like Bro is, is night and day, and it still keeps them very much in contention for that sixth place spot. Not to say Bro are completely out, but it does make it so hard being in a 0-4 position. There's still a lot of work to do, still a lot of improvements, but a, a good day for them for sure. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is a really huge win for DRX is to be able to actually be be there on the top of the Eastern team. So I think that's got to be, it has to be the step by step, right? So they got the one step off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have our marquee matchup of the final and the final match of the week coming up next. It is going to be Hanwha Life Esports up against T1 after a pretty short break. We'll see you guys on the other side.
불이 비었을 일 유니폼도 입고 호기롭게 전투력 측정에 나선 160 초반에 앞서가나 싶었지만 연이은 실수로 결국 역전을 당한다 근데 솔직히 정부 차이다 인정? 아니 뭐 팀원들 걱정낸다 열심히 해야 한다 하더니 본인이 제일 못해 아주 그냥 블로카 젠주에서 먼저 잘리고 저러고 있어 저러고 방송 저, 저. 결국 나라 팀과의 첫 경기에서 패배하고 만다 우리 이대로 괜찮나? 어떡하지? 어떡하지? <목소리> 안녕하세요. 또 여기야? 어디 앉으면 되나? 여기 안 나오잖아. 왜 뒤에? 왜 여기? 아, 뒤에서 존나 쪼가야 돼야겠다. 이게 저번에 저희 영해 올라온 거 방송 보셨어요? 대충 봤습니다. 봤습니다. 네. 엔드에이션은 뭔가 목표치가 확실하게 더 높은 곳을 바라보고 달려가 나간다 뭔가 이런 느낌이 딱 기준치 안 맞았다고 뭔가 생각하는 게딱 느껴졌어 그럼 언제부터 갑자기 뭔가 설명을 딱 치고 말도 한 마리도 안 걸고 엔드에이션은 댓글 다셨던데? 댓글 다셨던데? 네 어, 직접 딴 건가요? 직접 딴 건가요? 시켜서 나왔습니다 시켜서 나왔습니다 <웃음> 이분은 소통을 많이 네. 들으려고 밖에 안 해요. 여기 아, 서열이 네. 와이프 분이 1위고 여기가 2위예요. 네가 뭘 알아요? <웃음> 그냥 딱 보면 보여요, 그냥. 카트 보는 게 하셨어요? 카트 했냐고요? 어, 지금 얼굴 보고 얘기하면 되죠. <웃음> 네. <웃음> 네, 그냥 그때는 제가 어리기도 했고 그리고 저는 약간 급했어, 조급했어. 왜냐면 그때 당시는 이렇게 프로게이머 수명이 이렇게까지 길 거라고 생각 안 했거든요. 그냥 빨리 성적을 내야 된다고 생각하는데 그 성적이 안 나오니까 그냥 결국에 주변을 돌아볼 수밖에 없는 거죠. 나 근데 이해는 이해는 돼요. 왜냐면 그때 이제 서로 마음가짐 많이 달랐다고 해야 되나? 그러니까 저는 꼴 받는 에피소드 하나 알려드릴까요? 꼴 받는 에피소드 하나 알려드릴까요? 와, 말해 봐. 제가 이제 연습을 하고 있었는데 연습 시간에 갑자기 성우가 사라진 거예요. 근데 이제 롤 클라이언트가 이렇게 켜져 있는데 그때 당시 이야기도 되나? 이야기도 되나? <웃음> 아, 왜냐면 잠깐만 잠깐만 지금 와이프랑 아마 다른 분일 것 같은데 <웃음> 아 누구야? 야, 아 누구구나 아, 아, 나도 나도 지금 갑자기 그 생각이 나가지고 그 얘기하면 아, 나 어, 위험할 지도 모르겠어 알았어 나 이거 그냥 스킵하자 <웃음> 이거는 아니고 오늘 여러분들한테 저희 상대 발표가 있습니다 첫 번째 경기 상대를 공개하겠습니다 어? 어? 누군데? 누구죠? 젠지 이분 아니야? 예술적으로 활용해서 <웃음> 야! 오! 와! 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 결국 최종전에서 우승하는 팀은 바로 여름의 동심의 스포츠 아카데미입니다 최재 저희 이제 농심 레드포스 CL팀은 2022년 LCK 챌린저스 썸머 우승 그리고 이제 그 멤버가 그대로 1군으로 올라갔고 또 2023년에 챌린저스 썸머에서 또다시 우승을 하고 이번에 그 멤버 이제 그대로 다시 24년에 도전을 하게 된 팀입니다 저희는 이제 항상 14시간 이상씩 아... 연습하려고 하면서 다시 한번 우승하기 위해서 노력하고 있습니다 저희 팀의 장점은 초반부터 그냥 교전을 잘하고 후반에도 혹여나 불리한 상황이 나와도 타로 뒤집을 수 있는 팀이 저희 팀의 강점인 것 같습니다 챌린저스 팀 중에서는 저희가 제일 잘하는 팀이지 않나 일곱 다음 일곱 다음 어! 아, 아무렴도 억지로 억지로 하신 거 아니에요? 아, 아니, 뭐야? 근데 이게 아카데미면 3군이에요, 2군이에요? 2군입니다. 가장 강하다고 평가를 하고 있어요. 어... 왜이 팀을 잡았어요? 아, 그래. 왜 이렇게 빡세게? 아, 이 팀을 아, 이겨야 무슨 유관종, 유관종 그 얘기 하셨으면서. 아, 팀이 이거 서로 약간 아쉬운데요, 이거? 아, 그래요? 왜요? 왜요? 자, 여러분들의 어디를 불태우기 위해서 인터뷰를 이제. 어, 다운 지금요? 인터뷰 영상을 보시겠습니다. 아... 이름 좀다 들어봤는데 캡틴잭 선수는 모르겠어요. 전체 <웃음> 세분은 좀 많이 들어봤습니다. 캡틴잭은 아예 몰라요, 그러면? 잘 모릅니다. <웃음> 로아 스트리머 캡틴잭도 모르세요? 근데 로아를 안 해가지고. <웃음> 로아를 안 해. 
중에 한 7, 80%? 저희가 한 85% 확률로 거의 99.9 이상으로 발언도 안 보고 끝날 것 같아요. 삼성 갤럭시 나르 그 스킨 제가 엄청 좋아해가지고 그 스킨을 제가 껴서 이기면 더 기분 좋을 것 같아요. 제가 본 자르반 중에서는 그때는 진짜 거의 최고의 자르반. 지금은? 어, 나도 할것 같아. 나도 할것 같아. 지금까지도 소랑에서 만나면 계속 이겼던 것 같아요. 한번 말렸을 때 와, 나, 멘탈이 너무 약하시지 않나. <웃음> 이렇게 이재훈과 딱 맞붙었을 때 어떨 것 같아요? 근데 제가 이준 선생님을 소문으로만 들었지 만나보지 못해서 <웃음> 왜 선생님이라고? <웃음> 어, 열다섯 살 열다섯 살 차이라고. 열다섯 <웃음> 살 <15살> 차이? 열다섯 <웃음> 살. 이지훈 삼촌님 아재를 드릴 테니까 한번 저를 막아보십시오. 11으로 상대팀 시식이 되게 다 풀어버리는 거? 현역 때 되게 잘하던 선수였다고. 캡진님 제가 잘 모르지만 돌킬 조심하세요. 옛날에는 메달하이프 선수였는데 지금은 캐리아 선수로 바뀐지 돼가지고 아무래도 옛날 선수들은 잊혀지니까 좀... <웃음> 삼촌분들 롤파크가 처음이셔서 경기 오래 하고 싶으실 텐데 나이 드셔서 허리도 아플 수 있고 손도 아프실 수 있으니까 빨리 쉬시라고 빨리 끝내드리겠습니다 캡틴 잭 다운 내라 다운 아니 이거 어, 뭐 억지로 저뭐 저격하라고 뭐 제가 하신 거 아니죠? 아니 저격이 아니라 너무 로아를 많이 했어 아예 저 친구들은 거짓말 못해요 참고로 노트북은 나이를 다 합치면 100살. 100살. 평균 20이잖아. 근데 저희 20이면 그때 1분. 아, 야. 아, 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 나는 이후로 가본 적이 없긴 해. 이후에서 아, 게임을 아, 못 해봤어. 저희가 또 동심에 대한 정보가 너무 없지 않습니까? 여러분들 전력을 분석해 주실 1일 감독님을 오늘 모시고. 아, 진짜 모든 게 서프라이즈야, 여기? 누구예요? 어, 누구죠? 뛰어난 배피과 뛰어난 운동 배우를 지닌 현대 지략가 노가냐 우팬님 아, 여기 오셨어요? 아, 아, 오셨어요? 아, 오셨어요? 안녕하세요. 아, 대박. <웃음> 아니, 저거 <웃음> 어디서 나서 가져오셨어요? 반갑다, 여러분. 네, 팀 160의 1일 감독을 맡게 된 노페 정노철이다. 아 <웃음> 자, 네, 내가 도착하기 전에 좀 불미스러운 얘기를 들었어. 자랑스러운 LCK 소속의 팀원들이라고 하는데 연습 태도가 굉장히 불량하다. 맞아요, 맞아요. 이쪽이. 왜요, 왜요, 왜요? 왜요? 아, 아, 아니, 진짜 열심히 했습니다. 아니, 특히 뭐 미드 지훈이가 뭐 일주일간 연습을 못 했다고. 아, 저 이사하느라고 정말 어쩔 수 없었어요. 아니, 뭐 프로게이머 이사한다고 연습 안 하나? 아... 근데 이게 이게 나이 들어서 이사하다 보면은 음. 이제 어릴 때 이사하면 좀 이제 뭐 부모님이라던가 도와주는 어. 일이 많은데 나이 들어서 하면 이제 제가 아, 그래, 좋아. 해야 돼가지고 <웃음> 그래 일단 이 말을 좀 하고 싶네 오늘 내가 이 무게를 휘두를 일이 없었으면 좋겠어 <웃음> 아니 저기 진심이야 무거워 <웃음> 내려놓고 싶어 <웃음> 좀 내려놓겠습니다 이런데 자 그러면 여러분이 상대하게 돼 농심 챌린저스 리그 팀 너네 일일 감독으로서 좀 준비를 많이 해봤다 본인이 직접 준비하신 건가요? 혹시 대본인가요? 대본 아, 지금 강의하신다 대본을 받았는데 나름 찾아봤어 나름 물론 참고한 경기는 <웃음> 결승전 하나긴 하다. 아, 그래 <웃음> 다섯 게임이니까 선수들에 대해서 한번 같이 알아보면 좋을 것 같아. 와, 아, 진짜 저 저기 국어 썸. 진짜 옛날 사람들이긴 하다. 국어 그 네. 코치랑은 그 가, 같이 계시지 않았나요? 아니, 나랑은 세대가 다르다. 아, 세대가 아, 다르다. 아, 내가 알기로 너희랑도 다를 텐데 아, 너희나 나나 그렇게 크게 차이 안날 텐데 아무튼. 코치로는 썸과 국어가 있고 보시다시피 대작년에 준우승 우승 그리고 이제 우리가 상대할 팀은 가장 최근 우승을 한 팀이다 그래서 이제 탑부터 한번 보겠다 22세? 어, 할만한데? <웃음> 아니 성진이 너가 몇 살이지? 네? 저 29이요 어, 일곱 살이면 할만하긴 하네 분당 데미지 1위, 솔로 킬 1위 무려 16회 어, 근데 챔프가 마음에 드네요 다이아몬드 챔프라 MG 챔프가 아니라 어, 할만한데 이거. 어, 굉장히 중요한 포인트였어 오스트 챔피언이 보시다시피 15승 4패 잭스를 굉장히 많이 활용했고 마침 그 뒤에 모스트 3과 4 캐릭터 뽀삐와 그라가스 올려놨는데 딱 연관관계가 느껴지지 않아? 
잭스 뺏기면 잭스 상대로 정하는구나. 아, 정답. 아, 역시 레전드. 그것도 딱 하나씩 정해놨는 AD 하나, AD 하나. <웃음> 그런 거 <웃음> 어, 그러네. 그래서 우리가 이 잭스를 상대할 거냐가 일단 가장 중요한 어, 거니까. 대맞죠 굳이 잘하는 거줄 필요 없다 생각합니다. 음, 자, 그러면 다음 선수 보겠다. 정글. 싸운다. 20세 치곤 챔피언이 좀 엠디 선수로운데? <웃음> 대회 때 나온 거죠, 저거 다. 맞아. 작년 대회 메타가 야, 저거였어. 어, 작년에 했었어야 했는데, 리플레이 그러면. 아니야. 나 되게 공격적이야. <웃음> 아, 여태까지 한 마리가 제일 재밌었어. <웃음> 아, 세주 마운. 별로 안 좋아해. 아, 근데 되게 재밌는 표현인 게 실제로 이 선수도 솔랭은 굉장히 공격적인 카드를 많이 해. 베베스가 자신 있는 카드기도 하고, 베베스를 제외하고는 메타에 따라서 탱커형 챔피언을 굉장히 선호를 많이 했었고, 인게임 내에서 보시다시피 킬 관유일이 10이다. 풀캡을 좋아한다 이거지. 정글링을 굉장히 안정적으로 풀어나가면서 오브젝트 위주로 컨트롤하는 선수. 아, 진짜 미션인데요? 아니 근데 저게 킬관이 오히 낮은 팀이 강팀이에요. 라이너들이 알아서 잘해준다는 거죠. 맞아. 음. 그래서 라이너들이 잘할 수 있게 이 선수가 동선을 결승 때 되게 획일화된 플레이를 보여줬는데 풀캡 먹고 바텀 봐주기 아니에요? 어? 안 받아 할것 같은데? <웃음> 들어가서 파종을 치고 내려와서 칼랩을 다시 먹고 이게 세 번째 게임인데 위에서 시작해서 말한 것처럼 아래 풀캠 그리고 바텀 바지 음, 어, 아래쪽 바이게를 어떻게든 먹겠다 이런 느낌이네 남은 두 경기도 실제 블루 스타트에서 내려가는 풀캠 동선을 짰어 어, 그래서 탑은 약간 정글 쪽과는 좀동 떨어져 있고 익숙한데요 익숙한데 <웃음> 그렇지 <웃음> 왜냐면 큰 정글을 하면 딜이 부족해서 딜러가 잘 거야 돼서 바텀을 키워야 돼 자꾸 딜러예요 아, 그, 그걸로는 부족해. 아, 원래는 이 대본에 그런 얘기가 있어. 이 기회가 되면 탑을 갱킹하는 것도 괜찮다. 근데 실제로 이 팀도 바텀 위주로 동선을 계속 짜다 보니까 아마 탑으로 가면 역갱 당할 일도 없고 클리니트가 될 확률이 있다. 어. 제가 의신으로 탑 찔를게요. 아, 그것도 불안한데? 세종 <웃음> 같은 걸로 오면 안 되나? 다음, 미드 쪽을 볼게. 몇 살이야? 갈릭스. 몇 살이야? 아, 야. 아, 시에스는 1위. 그러니까 라인에서 시에스 수급을 정말 중시 여기기는 하는데 킬관율도 낮고 데미지도 좀 전체적으로 좀 낮은 편으로 봤을 때는 좀 미드에 상주하는 스타일이다. 미드에서 탑라인 좀 하고 있구만 그래요. 아 그냥 먹기만 한다 이거. 스탑 어. 올라서 내가 상대보다 세질 때까지 CS 먹는. 오. 테크. 그러면 나왔네요. 정글이 바텀만 가고 미드는 파밍만 하면은 딱 이미 그건데. 성적인데. <웃음> <웃음> 말했던 것처럼 라인전 중심 크리스타나와 아칼리를 특별히 좀 잘한다고는 하는데 일단 넣어놨고 저 니코로 올려둔 건 대회에서는 활용을 안 했지만 솔랭에서 기록이 굉장히 좋아 특히 이번 패치 메타에서 니코 굉장히 핫한 카드지 다음 바텀 볼게 바이탈도 와 MVP? 아, 파이널 MVP 자 원대 바이탈이다 파이널 MVP야 그냥 이 팀의 핵심이라고 보면 돼 ACK 내에서도 경기를 뛰었었고 꽤나 준수한 활약을 보여준 선수라고 봐야 되는데 뭐 지표 이로 말할 게 없지 CS 1위, 데미지 1위, 데스 9위면 잘 죽지도 않고 심지어 챔피언이 모스트로만 쭉 보면 특징이 좀 있어 아 그러니까 제역의 스타일이야 그러니까 바텀만 봐주니까 바텀에 될 딜량 1등 하고 MVP도 제가 받는 거 아니야 DPS 높은 애들 4개만 하자 지금 완전, 완전 평타야 어. 평타. 근데 진짜 확실히 레전드 딜이라 그런가 정보 분석이 빨라 이게 내가 원래 설명을 했던 내용은 챔피언 특징이 라인전이 센 챔프들은 아니야 덩글의 도움을 받아 혹은 라인전 좀 약한 구간을 넘기고 중간 단계부터 본인이 메이킹도 하고 적극적으로 움직이면서 음. 게임을 만들어 나가는 스타일이다 근데 이 선수 캐리를 워낙에 잘해서일까? 살짝 무리하는 장면이 종종 있어. 자, 제리야. 아, 역시 제리네. 이 장면 기억할지 모르겠지만. 아, 본거 같은데. 바로 스트라로 가야 되다가. 아니, 뭐야. 들어가 버렸어. 야, 뭐야, 이거. 게임이 이미 좀 불리했어가지고 뭔가를 했어야 되긴 했네요, 그냥. 어, 정확한 내용이었어. 던진 게 아니야. 사실은 방금 말한 것처럼 앞전멸을 써야 됐던 이유는 뒤쪽에서 그라가스가 있어서 그걸 의식하면서 자기가 뭔가를 만들어내야 된다는 생각에 좀 무리한 플레이를 나왔었다. 그래서 이런 것을 봤을 때이 선수의 특징을 알 수는 있겠지. 네. 필요할 때 메이킹하고 만들어 나가는 선수다. 역으로 우리가 기회 잡아서 무리하는 걸 잡아먹을 수도 있는 거고 이제 바이탈을 보자 하는 서포터. 오. <웃음> 어떻게 읽죠? <웃음> 어떻게 읽을까요? 농심 흐흐 아니에요? 에이치 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 
흐흐로 하죠. 어, 우리는 흐흐라고 하자. 우리가 <웃음> 봤을 때 흐는데 뭐. 우리 또 지표와 챔피언으로 좀이 선수에 대해서 알아봐야 될것 같은데. 근데 챔피언 폭 보니까 결국에 정글 서포터가 그냥 메이킹 챔하고 원딜이 그냥 평타 안정감 있는 거 하고 어. 전형적인 단단한. 야, 삼성인데? 그래서 재밌는 거는 우리가 지표로 봤을 때 원래 솔직히 노틸, 아카, 렐 이러면 미드로밍 많이 하고 뭔가 메이킹하고 이래야 되는데 또 성향이 뮤티포 성향이야. 그래서 원딜 옆에 상주를 많이 하는 편이야. 미드 갈 일이 없는 거지. 바텀 이기는 게더 중요하니까. 그치. 얘기가 종합됐어. 이팀 특징이 서로 간의 유기적인 움직임은 좀 적어. 그래서 뭐 서포터가 혼자 시야를 잡다가 잘린다든지 응. 미드 정글 힘싸움을 하는데 바텀은 서포시 저 멀리 있어가지고 수처 싸움에서 밀린다든지 이런 경우가 많으니까 그런 부분 우리가 노리면 좋겠다. 또 뭐가 있어요? 아, 우리 팀? 와, 우리 팀 무서워. 와, 어, GPG이면 백전백승이라고 상대 팀만 알아보면 안 되고 또 우리 팀에 대해서도 알아봐야 되잖아. 아, 이거 재밌겠네. 팀 ALL 우승팀과 어떤 경기가 있어서 아하. 들었는데 정리를 하는데 너무 많더라고. 아, 아, 너무 많지. 아니, 저희도 보면서 많긴 했어요, 이거. 저희도 뭘 잘못했는지 알아요? 네. 뭐 잘못했는데? 체력부터 네. 시작해서 아니, 그러니까 싸움 디테일부터 못 봤고 잘리기, 음. 나르 템트리 뭐 이런 것들. <웃음> 나르 템트리는 뭔데? 아니, 생각해봐. 나르가 슈즈니 잘 맞겠니? 아니, 그냥 가본 거지, 뭐. 아니, 그냥 가보면 어떻게 남들은 최선을 다하는데. 그치, 그게 좀 아쉽긴 해서 문제나. <웃음> 난 템플릿 솔직히 게임 오래 했으면 은 바뀌어도 금방금방 알아야 된다고 생각하긴 해. 그러니까 어떤 템이 좋은지. 어... 저는 제 템플릿에 자신 있어요. 준비되어 있어. 저 그거 라이브 적용 전이잖아요. 맞아. 이후에 아마 다들 그렇게 갈 거라 생각을 해요. 어... 그거보다 좀 힘들거든. 아 진짜 꼭 그렇게 안 갔으면 좋겠네. 아, 왜, 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 서로, 왜. 아니 근데 이렇게 얘기하는 걸 보니까 유독 바텀이 조용하네. <웃음> 저요? 아, 아 그때는 좀 많이 힘들긴 했어요. 아니 네. 너무 잘하더라고요. 어, 바텀 유죄. 다행이다. 너희들이 먼저 얘기해줬어. 아. 마침 이첫 피드백이 바텀이야. 캐그베 대 얘기가 나와. 이미 게임 끝났는데? 바텀? 거리를 진짜 잘 되더라고요. 어. 어, 바텀 칼리스타 레나타 부합을 꺼내들었고 심지어 인게임을 보니까 리시도 안 했더라고. 맞아요. 상대는 리시를 했고. 맞아요. 맞아요. 어, 그냥 궁금했지. 혹시 챔피언들이 좀 너무 신식이어서 그런가. 오늘 아, 신식이라고 아니, 말하진 않죠. 아니, 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 아니. 시그레에 비하면 저... 칼리스타도 좀 신식 아니야? 아 뭘? 아, 저 c j 때 나온 개요해서 오셔고. 혁고인다혁고인다 혁고인다. 어, 혁고인다. 어, 혁고인다. 언제적인데요 칼리스타 저 출장이죠. 아 그래서 내가 이 게임을 보면서 그런 생각이 들었어. 아니 칼리스타 레나타처럼 난이도 있는 거 하느니. 단순 단순한 거. 잘 버티고 클리어 좋고. 그래도 1 1로 해? 아니 뭐 11일 아니어도 뭐 미포도 있고 진도 있고 뭐 바로스도 있고. 그래서 조합의 완성도를 위해서 그리고 또 바텀 라인들의 좀 안정감을 위해서 좀 쉬운 걸 가는 게 어떨까? 오케이. 아 좋습니다. 오케이. 다음은 이제 소통 바텀... 관련한 얘기야. 이 신의 너무 커. 이거 나야 저거? 레드 팀 친구 마냥 서 있는데 저기. 아... 이 장면이 기억날지 모르겠지만 공 유충을 싸우기 위해서 모였다가 미드 쪽에서는 주도권을 잃고 탑에서는 나래가 타워를 치고 있는 상황이라 내려오기 좀 어려운 상황에. 나 저기 왜 갔어? 비전이가 부시로 내려가다가. 눌린 장면이에요. 난 그거 정확히 기억나는데 저거 한... 그러니까 이게 소통이 안된 건지 뭐 유부남이랑 겁이 없는 건지 막 그런 유부남이 <웃음> <웃음> 왜 겁이 없어요. 반대죠. 내가 살아보니까 이게 희기동이 <웃음> 많이 잘 새기, 새기더라고요. <웃음> <웃음> 얘기하고 싶은 건 사실 이건 정글만의 잘못은 아니야. 탑 쪽에서 휴베가 라인을 밀면서 우디를 안 보인다. 그리고 미드 쪽도 이제 순간이동 복귀 타임 한번 잡아야 되는데 주도권 이미 잃은 상태라 못 가는 서포 적인 메라도 어, 이게 상대 라칸이 먼저 밀고 내려갔고 나는 이제 어쩔 수 없으니까 밑으로 가야 되는 상황이었거든. 안 그래도 이게 또 패치돼서 협곡 지형도 바뀌고 막 전령도 14분에 나오고 공허 유충도 생기고 막 얘기가 좀 많이 오가야 되잖아. 우리가 또 레전드들답게 경험도 많으니까 서로 소통을 좀더 깔끔하게 했으면 좋겠다는 생각에 이 장면을 한번 준비해봤어. 좋습니다. 좋습니다. 오케이. 자 그래서 그리고 이제 앞으로 우리가 나아가야 할 방향에 대해서 한번 총정리를 한번 해봤는데 오. 어, 오. 정글 팀이 굉장히 좋은 팀. 나는 개인적으로 좀 그렇게 봤거든. 어, 우리 팀이 정글이 점수가 제일 높아. 에. 솔랭도 많이 하고. 잘 컸을 때 리턴값도 꽤큰 편이고 라이너들이 좀 말렸을 때 그걸 지원할 능력도 있고 꽤 올라가고 있습니다. 그러니까 지금 근데 <웃음> 여기는 더 성장하지 않아요. 어. 지금 보시는 모습이 고점이니까 잘 기억해요. 정글은 이게 고점이에요. 정성형패 <웃음> 다쳤어요. 정차. 그렇게 얘기하면 얘기가 좀 달라지기도 하는데 아. 원래 내가 해주고 싶었던 말은 미드 당연히 잘하는 거 맞지만 우리 미드 성향사 또 지훈이 성향사 스탠딩 미드를 또 좋아하다 보니까 맞아요. 미드를 좀 과감하게 키운다고 해서 그 리턴 값이 확실하게 돌아온다는 반증은 없거든. 진짜 우리도 이... 약간 턴을 받는 그런 캐릭터죠. 그치. 음. 리턴 값을 미리 스택을 쌓는 느낌으로 탑. 음. 
혹은 바텀에 투자를 하는 게 오히려 좀더 우리 팀 성향으로 메리트가 있지 않을까. 사실 우리 바텀이 잘해주면 돼. 아, 맞긴 해요. 맞는 말씀입니다. 어, 좋아. 그런 부분 생각하면 이제 다음으로 넘어가 볼게. 자, 두 번째는 미드 중심으로 교전 스타일을 좀 정립해보자. 어, 어, 이게 라인부터 스탠딩 미드를 또 좋아하는 지윤이다 보니까 판타 구도가 사실 우리는 되게 앞에 거부터 어, 앞라인 싸움, 정리하는 앞라인 싸움은 제일 잘하는 거야. 나도, 나도 좋아해. 어. 나도 좋아해. 아니, 근데... 나도 딜러 교환하는 싸움보다는 어. 앞라인부터 천천히 때리는 거 되게 좋아해. 그게 좀 그, 나이 많은 스타일이긴 해. 음. <웃음> <웃음> 평생 했던 스타일이야. 아, 근데 너무 좋은데 그러면? 우리가 교전 스타일을 복잡하게 막 상황에 따르게 이렇게 하는 것보다는 앞라인부터 정리하는 구도를 한번 짜보자. 좋은 예가 이 티탄 타입도 있더라고. 이게 숫자 싸움이 순간적으로 우리가 유리할 때 진짜 과감하게 연을 리신 플레이가 1등이었는데 배달사 맞추고 빅토리 위에 있으니까 먼저 들어가서 상대 어그로 끌고 안될것 같으니까 빠져나오면서 낙단 차고 너무 좋았지. 다시 카이팅 하면서 앞라인 정리. 리신이 핑퐁 잘했지? 어, 엄청 잘했죠. 그러다 보니까 앞에는 지랄 환경을 못 만들었고 우리가 좀 앞라인부터 정리한 한타를 구도했을 때 이렇게 이쁘게 환경이 나올 수 있다. 마지막은 난이도 쉬운 뱀픽 전략. 우리 뱀픽 기억할지 모르겠지만 아래쪽 4명의 챔피언 구성이 오리아나, 리신, 그리고 칼리스타 레나타였거든. 사실 그네 챔피언을 딱 바라봤을 때 우리가 느끼는 감정은 앞라인이 조금 부실하고 시야를 뚫으러 갈때 확실한 탱커나 시시기가 좀 아깝고 서로 챔피언 간의 시너지도 조금 애매한 느낌이 좀 들었어. 그래서 우리가 물론 각자 라인전 잘하고 한타 잘하고 개개인 플레이가 멋지면 좋은데 아무래도 나이가 있잖아. 그렇죠. 서커스 하기엔 좀. 그래서 서로 좀 시너지를 낼수 있고 난이도가 쉬운 챔피언 구성을 하면 좋지 않을까. 미드 정도는 주도권 때문에 어쩔 수 없이 그런 구성이 된다 하면 예를 들어 서포 쪽에서 말한 것처럼 노틸라칸, 노틸라칸, 뭐 렐, 그리고 뭐 잘하는 블리츠, 뭐 쓰레쉬 이런 거 들어갈 수도 있는 거고 뭐 아지르 신짜 오, 오리아나 신짜 오. 어, 뽀삐 같은 거 되면 또 아지르 뽀삐도 굉장히 메리트 있는 조합이기도 하고 음. 뱀픽 숙제는 이 정도면 될것 같아. 깎아와야겠지, 그치? 깎지 않으면 이길 수 없다. 아. 깎아와. 오케이. 또 이제 다른 숙제를 좀 내줄까 하는데 홈워크. 홈워크. 피드백 중에 그런 얘기 했잖아. 소통이 좀 부족한 것 같다. 특히 이제 우리 소통이 좀 필요한 두 선수. 우리 대빵, 앰비션하고 예스. 캡틴 제 어, LCK 보물. 아니. 우리 두어 좀 해. 와, 뭐로 한다고? 뭐로 한다고? 원딜이랑 원딜이 두어를 한다고요? 아니, 근데 근데 그럼 사이가 더안 좋아질 수 있는데. 아, 아, 그러니까. 아, 그러니까. 아, 그러니까. 아무튼 아, 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 소다지 말고 숙제하도록. 알겠습니다. 둘이 네. 두어하고 보고 해. 다들 마무리, 마무리. 오늘 도움이 되는지 모르겠지만 고생 많이 했고. 아, 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 아 너무 좋아요. 우리 팀160 파이팅 하면서 마무리하는 걸로. 오케이. 네. 할게. 팀160 파이팅! 파이팅! 자, 고생하셨습니다. 고생하셨습니다. 일단 상대 팀에 대한 정보도 얻었고 솔직히 뭐 저희끼리 한다고 하면 은 이렇게 디테일하게 못했을 것 같은데 되게 많은 도움이 되었습니다. 저한테 도움이 됐다기보다는 사실 이제 저희 바텀 정글 미드한테 좀더 도움이 되지 않았을까. 그걸 또 이제 빗대어서 보면 은 역시 제가 제일 잘하지 않았었나. 네. 사실 제가 뭔가 게임하면서 그런 취급을 받아본 적이 많이 없었기 때문에 어, 좀 민망하더라고요. 어, 뭔가 그러면서 내가 더 잘해야겠구나. 뭐좀 약간 이런 생각도 했어요. 하... 관중이 걸려있는 경기. 지금도 남아있는지는 잘 모르겠지만 이제 과거 예전에 그래도 저 캡틴 잭이라는 이름의 이제 선수를 보러 많은 분들이 응원하러 와주셨었거든요. 절대 만만하지 않다는 걸 보여드리는 게 목표입니다. 첫 상대부터 좀 강력한 상대가 나오지 않았나 싶었는데 어쨌든 저희는 그 가닥이 있잖아요. 네, 재활하면서 그것만 다시 해방시키면 되니까 그거예요. 항상 똑같아요. 그냥 무조건 이긴다라는 생각으로 하죠. 무조건 이겨야죠. 당장 내 2부 승팀이 아니라 1군 상위권 팀이랑 해도 무조건 이긴다는 생각으로 해야죠. 레전드 프로게이머들은 뭐 언제나 그렇듯 지는 게임은 하지 않습니다. 꼭 이기는 그런 모습 보여드릴 거고 사뿐히 들여밟고 가도록 하겠습니다. 터졌네요. 농심 선수들의 미래입니다. 어 이렇게 뭐 그냥 아 그냥 어뭐탑아 어, 그냥 그냥 어? 농심 박달님 이제 야 <웃음> 아니 근데 <웃음> 아 저는 예전부터 좀 대회 때 긴장하는 타입이 아니었어가지고 뭐 시기 못하지는 않을 것 같아요. 저... 노장들의 힘을 좀 
보여주지 않을까 오늘? 아이고 그 무조건 이긴다는 생각을 해야죠. 어떻게 되든 이대요. 아깝이라고 얘기하는 순간 두배 잡았고 와. 캡틴제 야 선장님 나이스 아형 너무 잘했다 진짜 너 와볼래? 가가가 야야 가가가 방어 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 나이스 개 나이스 아 너무 잘했다 얘들아 
Hello and welcome back to the LCK. We're here after that short break and we're back with Hummel Life Esports up against T1. And this one is the match that we expect to actually deliver. The first one, it was fun. You know, we had some back and forth action and stuff happened. But now we get Hummel Life Esports up against T1. Hummel Life currently on top of the standings. T1 looking to topple them at the moment. Yeah, if you caught both uh, series, then, then you're a real one. Uh, prepare for a little bit of whiplash. Yeah, because we go or from a lot. The, a lot of whiplash. We go from the uh, very bottom of the standings to a possible fight for first, right? Depending on who takes it. If Humble Life uh, are able to win here, they will actually overtake Gen.G, as we can see, due to uh, the game score. Now, for Humble Life, I also think this is their first big test, because while they've looked amazing thus far, their strength of schedule has been pretty meh versus T1, who already has faced KT and Gen G. So yeah. T1 being 2-1 and only losing uh, to specifically Gen G really paints a little bit of a different picture. Yeah, how life esports, they have only gone against teams that are on the east side of this bracket. Uh, Fear X, DRX, and of course, Quantum Freaks. So um, yeah, not the biggest of challenges. This is definitely their first big one. The undefeated Orange Tank uh, Humble Life Esports versus T1 attempting for three win streak. Will the super team Humble Life Esports with three former Gen.G players surpass Zeus, owner Faker, Gumiusi, and Karia, the world's champions? And obviously, Peanuts, uh, Delight, and Doran are going to be the big ones here. These are the players that were able to best T1 again and again and again for the free beat. Uh, although Delight was only there for two out of three, but I. I still feel like he gets a ton of the credit. Was a really big part of that team. And I do think that hmm. unlike last season, as I uh, love this, uh, I, and this is also addresses our issue with the complete lack of Corky previously, um, I, I really want to highlight, I, I do truly think that this Hanwa isn't going to be like the Hanwa of old. Uh, <laughs> where Are you totally ignoring the, <laughs> the Zerky, Zerky versus, versus Farky? Farky? Yeah. I think that's, Take the away, important. that's the most important part of this point of I was going to lead up talking about how I think this Hanwa is, is more than just an East Team Slayer, but... Y yeah, Zerky versus more importantly Sparky. than that. <laughs> yeah, um, very interesting names. Now, this is really cool. I mean, Faker, we know he's number one in all-time LCK kills ranking, but he will be the first player to hit 3,000 LCK kills, and it could happen today. And he's pretty far ahead of even the second place guy who's deft and ruler especially. This is two zero two zero two zero. What does it feel like I, to lose? I, I don't know what the deal of that raccoon is, but I get it. I've been there. I've been right there where he was looking out at the apple tree. Just trying to I don't know why, because this team is doing really well, so I don't know why the raccoon is going through a tough time when everything's going swimmingly, but as mentioned, tonight will definitely be the hardest test. Now, number one on this list of kills, obviously, is something that uh, today, I think both teams are kind of gonna let go. Let go of that fifth one, though, and particularly the win rate on the Corky, that, that I think will be uh, very, very relevant to it. I just can't believe that yeah. the Cassiopeia win rate is this high, and I really figured that he would have played more games of Lissandra. I feel like she's been meta for like pretty long stretches of time. Mm -hmm. It is remarkable. Yeah, just pretty interesting, I guess. Maybe in the future we'll see more of that, especially the Casio. But either way, the Corky, Faker is on a 19-game LCK winning streak with Corky. Also, if you include MSC in 2020, he is on a 20-game winning streak. So we'll see if that happens and gets even farther. Here's how Life Esports on the left side. They have built a super team of their own and with one of the best bottom lanes, if not the best, will they be the team to topple T1? I mean, Gen.G have already done it, but Hummel Life Esports wants to add that as a notch in their belts. And we have also seen that T1 is not impervious at the moment. Their loss against KT comes about. Yes, they immediately strike back with two quick victories, but those are the moments that against a team like Hanwha, I really think you can't afford to show that level of weakness. This is, uh, even with it, again, I want to reiterate, being the first big test for Hanwha, I don't think this team is anything like last year. I think there, there were some very clear issues when it comes to the peak 
and the average level of specific players. That is no longer the case, uh, besides maybe Doran, but we know Doran against Zayas is a matchup that is shockingly lopsided, but not in the way you might think. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here's T1 on the opposite side of the Rift. You know, we've talked a bit about how they should be the favorites coming into spring, but we're not 100% sure where their mindset's going to be at. They just got this giant victory. Are they going to try 100%? Are they going to be able to put their all into these early spring games when it's such a long season? So far, you know, it's been a bit up and down, but it's also up and down against great teams as well. So can't really take too much away from them, and they're still 2-1. They're still in a good spot, still in third place here at the LCK. And just looking maybe this time to add some more LCK titles to that list. They have also been very outspoken about the fact that we're, we're taking it easy. So we always saw a lot of liberties when it comes to the draft, as we do take a look at this. And these stats, I, again, I, I do think Zeka is uh, its actually quite a decent meta for him. Uh, Zero notwithstanding, a lot of the counters to Zero are in a really good spot at the moment though, with the Akali, with the Yone. We've even seen Silas come up uh, as shown already, but uh, Faker has played against BED, has played against Chovy, uh, whereas Zekka has faced off against Bulldog. Um, yeah. So that's, I, I love Bulldog, you know you know me, but uh, that, that, is a, that is a bit of a difference. And today here is the opportunity to showcase again that in case you forgot about it, the Elite Four have been the only representatives for the last, I think, since 2019 of LCK mids, maybe even 2018, um, being Faker, Showmaker, uh, Chovy, and, um, and BDD. BDD. And then the one who's not was Zeka, who went and then won Worlds, which still yeah. is <laughs> deeply funny, and um, I still don't fully comprehend, even a year and a half after the fact. Yeah, just go to Worlds and win, and then come back. And then be try, fine. Try to win other things, I guess, if you want. You don't have to. He's got a pretty good roster this time it's around. Reverse peanut. Yeah. <laughs> win everything, except Worlds. Yeah. That's the way it goes, sometimes. And we're just waiting for this lobby to get going and to jump into the pick ban. I will see, uh, we will see more priority on Corky. Mark my words. Now, Azir is very good, or er, yeah, Azir is very good in the hands of Zeka so far, statistically. He's three and zero on the pick. He's the one guy who actually has consistent um, wins on that, again, against weaker mid laners. But will he pick it anyway? Is it a comfort pick for him now? Will he decide, okay, I'm gonna just take it and see how it goes? Uh, if you ban away the Corky, if you ban away some of those uh, better counters and you pick it later in the draft, which is something that Ox has also been mentioning, maybe you could go for it. Some Life Esports are going to pick the blue side. And we will see red side, obviously, in the last series being of really, really high value. But if I remember correctly, most of our uh, west side teams have been preferring securing extremely high prior picks. The Milio is another one that we haven't really talked about because Corky has been taking all our attention, but I wouldn't be surprised if Corky just gets banned in every single game. Uh, we also have a sheet Valdus already filled in the Corky, which yeah, I already put them in my yeah, which for where they're gonna be banned. There's a little bit, a little bit of variety there, but Corky to me seems like a no-brainer. But that first pick Melio, as long as there isn't a reliable counter to that, the way we have seen with a lot of other uh, support picks, blind, I think that's gonna remain the meta amongst our best teams uh, because Melio enables so much different things. It forces a Lucian pick on your opponent's side. Because Lucian Melio is still considered the absolute top tier bottom lane as no Yordle being taken out just yet. Mm. A lot of peanut bands though. Yeah, a lot of peanut bands for T1. Uh, the Orianna takeaway means that maybe they still are gonna go for this Azir. The Lucian gets taken off the board, so potential red side Milia Lucian or something like that. Denied. Still first pick Lucian here if you are Homo Life Esports, if you would like. But what's this final ban going to be? Will we see the Corky band away? No, it's Sejuani, and Corky is once again ignored in a ban phase. Wonder if T1 want to opt into an early rotation rel, or whether they're saying Peanut's not going to prioritize that. Instead, we take away some of his comfort picks. This is an interesting pick because Zeus has absolutely been massacring people on it. 
And the hover showcases that they do know that it is in fact something that might be at the forefront. But it's going to be the Corky, unsurprisingly, pick topper. You do trade the Milio for that. That alone, though, not going to be enough to make it feel worth your while. Yeah. Let's see if they do want to go for that. Kalista also still available. They will lock that one up, and they're not going to take the Renata with it just yet. They're not going to blind the Renata, which has been a problem from time to time. They're just going to take Nico, which we do know that Faker does love his Nico. Did already pick up POG on that, and this to me is T1 saying, you're picking Corky, you're probably going for more scaling, as we're already seeing the Zaya Rakan sure to follow, because it is the light, who obviously is uh, probably our best Rakan by a fairly large margin. In general, one of our best supports, but his Rakan is, has been incredible for years. But T1 is saying, we do not care. This game is not going to go past mid game because the Nico, the Kalista already, this is a very, very clear move towards a really aggressive early to mid game style composition. Renata makes perfect sense. Renata obviously isn't going to feel nearly as good to Corky when we get to the mid to late game. But what we've seen from T1, I think it does uh. get all oh, that is. So <laughs> I, I, I think Nico there are. Nocturne. Yeah, I think there are a lot of picks that you can go with the Kalista that are still good. But the Nocturne Nico combination is obnoxious. It makes it so much harder to reliably play out any mid game team fight because uh, you can both TP behind enemy lines, you can make it even harder to respond to an eagle play, which already has been a big problem. At the same time, though, it does further solidify. Like, once you get to mid to, to real late game, owner isn't really going to be able to, to do a whole lot. Unless they find a way to pivot and maybe go for a 1 4 style, depending on what counterpick Zeus gets here. That could be an option, but. Unsurprisingly, the Renata does get taken away, and yeah. Karia won't have that 2v2 available to him. I do still think that Karia can play pretty much anything yes. in this lane. Uh, I think Renata, Glass, and Kalissa is probably like the S tier Ash. as a duo, but you could play Ash, you could play Jin, you could play a tank, you, you know, you could throw in a Nautilus, not sure if you really want to, but if you want some more hard engage to get on top of the Corky, maybe that's an answer. We'll be curious to see what Karia will look towards when it comes down to it. And a lot of tanks being banned away here. Maybe looking for a carry versus carry matchup for the top side. Something that Zeus... And, uh, and, and I was joking about it earlier. Obviously, Doran, there's a couple of really high stakes moments, but Zeus has been uh, the better top laner, uh, unsurprisingly, because he's been, you know, the, he was the best top laner at world. So that generally yeah. is good for your stock. Rumble is going to get taken away here after her, and I imagine to see Karia pick up his support here. Otherwise, it's going to be something really crazy. The Ash stands out to me because it's dropped in priority. Karia is definitely the best Ash that we have. Uh, when it was meta, it was permabent, and it originally came up as one of the ways to deal with the Rakan specifically because of the level 1 being as insanely oppressive as it was. Always ex also expected to have mid lane prio, uh, and a jungler who post 6 has a lot of potential to dive, so I think the combo works very well. Also alleviates some of the hard engage issues. I think only Ash Arrow by itself isn't going to be super exciting. And Aatrox, that uh, could be a Yone angle here for Zeus. And Humble Life just going for a very straightforward composition. The Rel would be the most obvious choice here. We'll see if they want to go in a different direction. Maybe something that can uh, deal a little bit better with the uh, pressure of this Nico. Lee comes to mind, but given that it's Peanut, I think a tank is most likely. For Poppy. But yeah, I mean... Huh? Those are the two. He is yeah. going to go for the Poppy, it looks like. That is a Peanut special as well, so... Had to throw it in there. Very good against some of the dashing, the Callista and stuff like that, and just providing a front line. So, is it Yone? I mean, picking Aatrox blind into Zeus is probably the most dangerous thing you could do because this guy is the Yone top player. And he's just going to pick it. He says, okay, you know, don't, don't have to be cute with it. I'm just going to play the champ. And this was somewhat unavoidable for, for Hanwha, because with, especially with Uder and Cassante gone, like, what actually are your blind picks? Rumble is also not there, so... Nice trap being set Born. up there. I, I, I wouldn't have hated it. But then you get Gwend. Um, or oh God forbid, Cho'Gath. I remember that that's a champion As. that exists in League of Legends. He, no, he doesn't exist anymore, uh, actually. So, Humble Life 
have a very clear late game win condition. I, the 1-4, I think, from T1 can be quite strong, but T1 is going to have to heavily rely on this mid-game spike. Very tough composition to actually execute, and I think that, that are a lot of opportunities for, for Hanwha there. If they can maintain good vision control, keep track of Faker and Owner, and make sure that they don't get caught off guard by any uh, Paranoia and Nico Ultimates, I think there is an opportunity for them to get to that promised land. And they have Corky, so just get to late and you'll probably win. You probably will. And there, there's not a lot of champs on the side of T1 that can snow, uh, soak rather any Corky damage at all once he picks up three items. So that's definitely going to be their win condition. T1 do not want to play that game at all. They're going to be putting on pressure and putting it on early and looking for some very nice team fights that are very tricky and annoying to deal with with Nico Nocturne. Let's jump out of the rift for game number one. Here we go. Game number one between Hawaii Life Esports and T1 always manages to bring us some fun games. We talk often about the D-plus Kia versus Gen G uh, matchup. That brought us some fun games just yesterday in Saturday's showdown. But also Home Life Esports and T1. Home Life have oftentimes challenged them to a pretty high level and brought us to three games and brought us to a close series. Yeah, I can't believe that was yesterday because the, 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 the amount of League of Legends that has happened between then and now is... Uh, truly remarkable. Yeah. It's been a lot. And uh, it's the final match of the week as well, Velbas. After this, we're already done with week two. That's weird. Isn't it weird? It's already two weeks. Yeah. Where did they go? What happened during those weeks? Oh, that's Who am I? Question we ask. <laughs> well, you are Brendan Velbas, as far oh. as I'm aware. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. Um I, who I am is, is is up for debate at this point, given the uh, amount of renames. Mr. Middlebrook. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so this uh, is yeah Ash level one. They kind of had to go into this brush because otherwise you don't get to step up to the minions, right? Um, but you just take a bunch of poke damage and then you don't really get to step up to the minions either. So um, Rakan, he can do some nice healing with his Q. It's pretty important that he hits those just to give them a chance to stay alive in this lane. But Kerry and Gumiusi were always going to be in that brush and get an advantage right from level one. Nice for the light that he does actually hit the Q. The saving grace for the Humba bot lane is that the enemy jungler is Nocturne, whose early ganking is, is, is very mediocre. If this was a Poppy, I wouldn't be surprised if Owner went for like a red buff into early level three and tried to dive bottom. Uh, trying to maybe catch Viper and the light because there is obviously a way being stacked here, but with Nocturne, you just want to full clear until you hit level 6, and that's really the end of it. And Guma and Carrier are perfectly capable of getting themselves a lead without any help, which, uh, given the matchup, comes as no surprise, but definitely is going to be a little bit rough for Viper. But they shouldn't have come as a surprise as Hanwa kind of opt into this the moment you go for Zyra Khan against T1's bot lane specifically. Yeah. And they had already picked Callista. <laughs> so. Yeah, you, you, you know what's coming, and you're just going to have to deal with it and see already see us being pretty rough. The poke is coming down. They already have a turret plate as well, and they know exactly where Peanut was just a moment ago, and the question mark ping comes down onto him right as he hits the crud. That's insane. I knew his puppy was good. I didn't know it was that insane. Oh, yeah. 91% win rate. He's, a, he's only lost twice in the LCK ever. Absolutely remarkable. That is. Oh, uh, hey! And, by the way. <laughs> but this is way less games, right? Like, yeah. this is still. Uh, but Owner's Lee Sin is the one where it's like. By the one where it's like, that's not fair, actually. Yeah. That's not, you, that's not cool. You Both can't of do these that. players win a lot. <laughs> so it turns they out. They, they have, yeah, I mean, they've, they've been the most winningest over the last two years. Yeah. By like a large margin as well. Mm -hmm. As Owner actually ganking on Nocturne. Um, it, this yeah, is, of course, a Corky, so don't think you're going to get a lot out of it. Unless Baker, Baker has to hit the root. Yeah, exactly. And even then, I mean... It's not... Yeah, it, there just isn't really realistically a way where you get anything but a flash, and I think even that's a stretch. Owner also identifies that. Just goes back home. As, uh, yeah, Viper 
Still not having the best of time. Uh, fortunately, this is a cannon wave, so he'll be able to get this. And when it comes to XP, I don't think he's as far behind, although the light's about to hit level 4, um, which doesn't bode well for Viper. Yeah. He's down a, a oh. good, just natural 16 CS as the waves crash equally there. So, <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. Zekka's doing a great job in the 1v1 here. He's going to force Faker to back. I mean, Faker does have TP, and Zekka already did. So, at the end of the day, not too big of a deal. It is quirky after all. We're not going to be looking for huge uh, gaps or plays or anything like that in this lane. Actually, Zekka went for a Halo Blades as well. So, pretty interesting. Usually we see uh, the fleet is the most common one. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've seen some first strike quirky as well, which is the one that really feels notoriously unfair when you get to mid to late game. Halo Blades, the early laning phase, particularly the first six levels, I think are going to feel really tough to deal with. As we only see, uh, I think it's, yeah, two... Uh, Void Grub's being taken. Void Gentleman. Uh, benefit of that, obviously the first one you're always going to get as a jungler to pick up the extra XP. So Owner gets that one. And it doesn't really slow him down on his inevitable level 6, no rush. He's trying to get there as soon as possible as a suspicious minion. No, it's just a normal minion. Just a normal minion? Yeah, he's just going for a little walk. Going on a side quest? Yeah. They do that sometimes. They go into the river. They do actually sometimes, yeah. Go fishing, you know. Fishing? Yeah. Huh. You catch like five fish, hand it into the quest giver. It's generally the way it goes. What kind of fish? Uh, carp. Carp? Yeah. I figured uh, Summer's River more, more of a... No. <laughs> more of a trout. There's also salmon in there. Ah, okay. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weird. The peanuts here, this is a ocean drake first, which is quite nice and would help T1 put on even more pressure in the lanes. And they will be able to pick it up. Doesn't look like Kamala AP Sports really want to fight this, although Peanut does go in for a little break the wrist and walk away, but it's not going to work as level six is owner, and he's looking for blood, and he will have it. First blood goes to owner as he says, well, you can't block this, Peanut. And Peanut cannot, for a fact, block that. Uh, completely unnecessary there to go in, because they were clearly backing off already. And uh, the crucial thing there was that owner had already hit six. So actually being, uh, or had, rather having the paranoia available there, I think is what really free peed it off. I don't think he was expecting his opponent to already be level six, because this is actually really early. If you look at the rest of the map as well, right? Um, being able to pick it up this early, actually done, uh, I think at this point, a double full clear, picked up two of the Void Grubs, and then also got the Dragon was enough to get him that ultimate available and uh, Peanut has to pay for it with his life. So far all according to plan for T1 picking up the early lead which uh, they need. They, they, they really do. So yeah. it's good but also a necessity. <laughs> that was a bit that was close. close. Nearly stopped both of their backs <laughs> and the auto goes all the way back into the fountain. Take another look here. Owner hits level six on the Drake, yeah. which is why, I guess, they supposed he wouldn't be six. I mean, this is a really early point for the Noxon to be six, right? Uh, but yeah, Pina takes the risk and gets promptly punished. We will now see Owner take up the final grub as Faker is uh, ensuring that Pina doesn't get anywhere near this. And early game comp so far. Not looking too bad. Yeah, looking pretty good. First Nocturne Ultimate is always kind of a breaking point to see how useful the Nocturne is going to be. And uh, he was quite useful on that first one. And he's almost got his ult back as well. So you can imagine getting some Ultimate Hunter stacks, get that one, and just try to get back out on the map as soon as possible. We got to dive in top as an ult is going to be used into Doran. Doran doesn't really care about that too much as in goes Faker looking for the knockup. Flash coming in. This is the second Nocturne and the F Arrow as well. You gotta be kidding me as the damage will come in. And that is gonna be the end of Zekka. And without the Ash Arrow, it wouldn't have been enough. You actually saw Ona taking a lot of damage there. Zekka was doing such a good job in the 1v1. It was actually sitting at, I think, like uh, 
10-15 CS lead, only one with a gold lead on the side of Hanwha. Carrier showing though why he was not uh, allowed to play. That uh, goes forward, oh. yeah. Fades call forced. And that is the ultimate from Vipergon as well. We got a world ender here as oh nicely predicted from Doran on the clap back, but the flash flash and Zeus does get away. Yeah, I think Zeus, the flash alone might not have been enough, but I think he had a third Q buffer there. If he didn't have that, he didn't make a little little jump over the wall. Could have been the end of him. Doran definitely punishing oh, nicely up. as No emotion. He doesn't, say he doesn't even watch. He's like, okay, I Not even a nice. I need to push Viper and delay back. I don't care about mid lane. Like, they can get my arrow. It's fine. Who cares? I don't need it. I need to dominate my lane. And you know what? Went back <laughs> and started pushing them back in. This plate is not going to be denied. And yeah. I curious here. So the good thing for Hanwa is that... Any mistake from T1 will get them back in the game. Uh, they have still an incredible amount of scaling, and this is a effectively close to melee comp into Corky, Poppy, and the Zaya. But simultaneously, Vibe or Zeka rather also didn't really have to go in there necessarily. They would actually start with him going in aggressively, yeah. same the way the same way they did with Peanut. And if you're an Akali, you know I'd probably get away with that one. If you're a Corky. And your main goal is just getting to your Malignants, your Eclipse, and your Mana Mune, then uh, it doesn't really fulfill your objective. Wave Clear is good though, so no dive going to be available here for the bot lane of T1, but a second Drake seems inevitable at this point. Yeah. And the Nocturne can, it's one of these champs that snowballs so hard, you start getting more and more stacks. His ult is up already, and he clears the jungle so quickly. He's up to like 90 CS, <laughs> not too far behind his solo laners, and he's threatening yet another play with his ult. And you can see he's up there uh, towards the top of the gold diff. So, the Poppy is going to be nice in the front line, but so far hasn't been able to do anything, and in fact was owner's first kill. So, Peanut definitely behind the eight ball on this one. Yeah, the Zeka kill. Uh, was a mix of, I think, really nicely played by T1 and a little bit unlucky. The fact the carry eye hits the arrow, that's what ends up killing him in the end. But uh, the Pina one, that is definitely costly because, as you point out, Nocturne, when he can start the snowball, is a big man. It says Doran forces the ultimate this time around. Yeah, trade of ultimates and a threat on the bottom side, and the fact that Viper and Delight basically don't exist yet means they just get a second Drake. And it's Infernal Soul. So no Ocean Souls here. It is just going to be T1 potentially ramping up into a massive soul when they're already pretty far ahead. Yeah, definitely subpar for Humble Life. We're probably looking at maybe a Chemtech angle. Not going to be the case. Yeah. Well, we got a TP coming in, trying to make a play. Meanwhile, Smite a wave on the bubs as they're trying to get all six. Guma, he still has Flash, but he's charmed up and he's just going to hold on to it. So nice play here from Humble Life Esports. Going to pick up that kill on Daguma. It is going to be six Void Bubs in the hands of T1, though. And they could use that to just put on more pressure with their early to mid game comp. Cross map is all right, but definitely a big win for Hanwa. It gets gold into the pockets of Viper, who is one of the members that was really put down by this. And it also showcases the one big weakness of these style of lanes, particularly as we get into the uh, mid to late game, which is overextending is uh, very easy to punish. Well done there by Humble Life to make sure that the gold doesn't slip too far. Because if they can maintain, as you know, like one, two, three K gold deficit, it's not going to be the end of the world. But really, I think the hardest part is going to come when we get to post 20 minutes. Because that's when you know T1 is going to use their lane leads to get Pryo, then choke out Vision around Baron, and then you have two options. Either you walk in and try to see if they're doing it, or you don't. And um, if you don't, then you probably lose Baron because it's T1 and they love Baron. And if you do, you need to be ready for the Yone, Nico, and Nocturne that are going to dive your back line. Yeah. Ash Arrow, Fate's Call. Just adding There's a some lot. more stuff in terms There's of. There's a lot, engage. yeah. Not necessarily backline access, but 
Yeah, it is going to be a lot of threats for sure. Zekka does not have the package. He is bottom lane. He has TP, hey, but go. That's fine. Don't let it go. They say, okay, we're scaling. We're gonna hunker down for the long winter. And maybe we can get Corky to three items. That's got to be their goal at this point. Corky and and Zaya. Just yeah. give them enough time, and eventually they'll be able to make it work. And especially into the T1 comp, this holds true. But I mentioned the Baron already. The second big problem, uh, which is uh, definitely more immediate, is in about two and a half minutes, which is a possible saw point. Yeah. At, uh, at, at like 17 minutes, meaning that you're going to have to fight for Soul at 20. Two, but that's not. <laughs> that's still not great. It's not where you want to be, ideally. Yeah, it's pretty fast. T1 have definitely done a good job of keeping the pace of this game up. Kind of just led by owner ultimates, essentially. Arrow is going to be shot on in. Doesn't hit Doran. Carry is here. Not sure about the Ash gank, but at least can stop the back. And he'll be annoying just like that. Giving his top laner now a little bit of a uh, extra lead up on that top side. Maybe can do some damage to that top turret. Already won mid, trying to win top as well. Doran doesn't have TP though. And this is the the one prize that they do have to pay for the play towards bot side. Says so might have an opportunity here, especially with the six little Kevins biting away at the turret. Not gonna be the difference maker, but I just like acknowledging that they exist. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be first turret blood here for T1. And now, long term becomes a question is was it still worth to get that kill on Guma? They got a dragon as well. Could have been, but losing that topside turret and putting Zayas this far ahead this early on is definitely a big problem. Yeah, and I am curious to see how Homolife Esports is going to fight these 5v5s that they need to. I mean, one Infernal Drake, the Infernal Soul Point, that doesn't feel great, but as you mentioned, the very uh, accelerated soul, uh, actual soul of the Infernal at 22 minutes, will they be able to fight that? What kind of items is Zekka going to have? If he's, is he only going to have Malignants by that point? It's another question to ask because can they realistically fight? Is uh, I'm not so sure about that. T1, if they do set up, you know, some good wards, some good coverage around that bottom river, I would imagine they should be able to control this area of the map pretty easily. So the one angle that I do think Humble Life have is that their chain CC is really, really strong between Doran uh, and, and particularly Delight and Peanut. There is a lot of uh, team fighting power there. The problem is that because all your lanes are so far behind, actually getting Pryo is basically impossible. As oh. the charge! He's looking for this, and now he's going to be denied to come back as Poppy was right there. Owner playing with fire right before the Drake. Maybe having a little bit too much fun with that Rift Herald. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they didn't know where Peanut was or if uh, they got caught off guard by the interaction there, but technically Owner flying through the air as he gets knocked off of Herald is a dash. So Poppy gets the press. Stefan's presence, and this could be a crucial breaking point. If Hanwha Life deny this dragon to T1 and somehow delay the timer by five minutes, that could be all the time they need. But they don't have that much setup. They, their own vision control on their own jungle is decent. They don't have a lot of control on the other side. Yeah, I mean, take a look at this. The 1v1 is getting out of hand right now. Doran, he has to pop World Ender just to stay alive, just to run. And the rest of the team here in the 4v4, Trying to set up. Zekka does have the package, but the lights are off. And where is Faker coming from is the question. He goes in onto the poppy. Faker does not come in. Now he goes in in a massive three-man ultimate. He gets the feather storm in. Yone is here. Zeus gets in from behind. He is going to be isolated, though. Nicely done. And it was actually the dragon going the way of Homolife Esports. But look at the follow-up here from the side of T1. The roots come Doran. in as Doran is getting massive. And now Viper frontlining. He gets the root onto Faker. And he wins the fight for the team. And T1, they further solidify their gold lead, but Humble Life keeps the game within touching distance because Peanut actually got the dragon. That is really big, and that alone won't be enough. We can see the team fight here. Crucial is that Faker draws a lot of attention, but they're also very aware that he initially was there. So instead, they wait for the damage to come through. By the time Faker goes in, it, he does do a lot, but because there is no Kalista at this point in time, there isn't enough damage. So Zayus gets focused, out, uh, focused down quickly, and then that flash from Zekka. If you have free items, you can get away with that. Not right now, but fortunately, 
for uh, Hamwa Light. Viper has been relatively untouched. Great sidesteps there as well to ensure that he's actually able to walk up. Picks up another kill. And we've now two kills on Viper. And five more minutes added to the clock. This yeah. game not broken open just yet. Viper's here to win. I mean, the way he played that His team movement? fight was actually perfect. Like, he feather stormed right when Faker came in, uh, dodged the first issue. Then he pulled back the feathers perfectly onto Yone, onto Zeus, who was flanking him. <laughs> perfect timing on that. Then he gets the extra root on the Faker later on to pick up the second kill uh, for the team. And I guess Peanut was, you know, he was the one who smited the dragon. So those were the two basically that won that fight for Hamalife Esports, essentially, and some of the advantages that they did get. So pretty insane stuff from Viper. He is here to win. That is for sure. Zekka has built his second hey, item. It's starting already, right? It's getting close. And as you highlighted, the only one that can reliably tank these is Owner with Spell Shield. Uh, the one issue that, that we do see, though, even though that team fight didn't really end up being a match, we saw just before then, is that Zeus is not matched. Like, no one can match this Yone. Uh, Zekka can wave clear pretty reliably, but if he ever gets caught, he's obviously dead. Doran is down a level, and uh, this matchup does not get any better from here on out, so he really, really needs to respect. His team fighting looks great there, a lot of sustain with the uh, Profane Hydra, but that alone, not going... Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Stuck around. The ult is used by Zeus, but Doran does dodge quite a lot. Has to deal with this Unbound Soul as the Q3 comes through Doran. Getting pretty low, but will survive. But this is my issue. Like, he dodged the ult. Zeus doesn't even have a second item yet, and he still lost that. Arrow just to stop a potential back, I guess. But Doran was way back in the lane, so it doesn't end up doing much. And it's just fine. That puts more pressure on Delight and Peanut to actually be able to go in aggressively. And I think, in general, Humble Life, they're going to have to reach the point where they're just going to look for fight after fight after fight because the situation inside is not really manageable, at least when it comes to Zayas. Infinity Edge done now. None of this, uh, I'm a and tanky a Yone. Oak. Yeah, no, he's, 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 uh, uh, he's probably going Shield Bow for it as well. So he's going yeah. full ham. No Jack shows. No Iceborne, actually going all in on the damage here. I mean, you might as well. It doesn't look like he's really being threatened by Doran right now. So if you actually begin to get kill pressure with some of these offensive items rather than the defensive counterparts, uh, you're going to like your position. You're going to like the way you look. Um, <laughs> let's see this. T1 is trying to group up here for the Baron, actually. And they have a Callista. No shocker there. Yeah, they're just going to start it. This is the way that T1 functions. And they will look to turn if necessary. Carry on trying to hold the door here for the team right now as Peanut is going to knock away the Nocturne. Who could just ult back in? Also got Zeus. And that's going to put an end to that Baron try. So that's the first attempt. Often more will follow, but successfully taken care of there by Hanwha Life. And even get a little bit mid prior here. See, they're able to do more than just that. And I, I, I think in the 1v1, this, ma this build from Zay is going to be absolutely ludicrous. We already see that Doran is really struggling, even uh, with the Edge of Night now finished. On the flip side, though, this T1 comp doesn't really have engaged. They're only engaged as owner, turning off the lights and obviously the Ash Arrow. But I think realistically, uh, it's going to be hard to reliably get value out of that unless you're already starting a fight. Uh, or able to burst down a single target. But like looking at, at Humble Life, I feel like it's really hard to use that because you have Corky, was W, Rakan, which is self-explanatory, uh, and, and then a Poppy and an Aatrox. Carrier? As Carrier? <laughs> Ooh. All right. He's trying to get some position in the mid lane, perhaps. Peanut, he's here. He's not going to get in, but he flashes anyway. And he puts that flash on cooldown. At least Atlas is happy. But everybody else on the side of Humble Life Esports is not. T1. Going to take down that dragon extremely fast. As there is the package now. Um. <laughs> was, wait, was Faker a Callista ghost? That was a ghost? Callista ghost, yeah. I didn't oh even boy. know you could do that. And now Hamalife Esports, they're going to start the They Baron. have package. They have package. They say, okay, you used a bunch. Here comes a, a very interesting ghost who is looking for the angle. Look at him there. 
Let's see if he gets on in. They gotta pull the trigger on this one, and Faker is looking for it. It's five man ultimate. You gotta be kidding me! As they get on top of Zeka, the follow up is huge from the Zaya. They go a little bit too ham, and now Guma trying to hop away. That is gonna be the end of that fight. As T1, they they take the lifeboat out of there as fast as they possibly can. And Viper goes untouched again. Oh, Carrier might be in trouble here. It's just gonna walk past the tension. Real ghosts or not? It's real. And yeah. nobody's gonna, yeah, nobody's gonna pop out of that bush. No one is that crazy, right? As a oh, incredible ultimate for Faker, but not enough follow up. And crucially, Viper again goes untouched. Humble Life actually doing a stellar job. Doran actually procking his Edge of Night as he goes over the wall into the Ash Arrow. Very, very funny. And it looks initially like T1 has the setup. Five men knock up, owner into the back line, Zeus is there, but then the amount of burst that comes from that Q3 from Doran there, absolutely huge. And then at this point, you can't really continue forward as T1. They do deny the Baron though, which is a big win. And even with the gold deficit, game <laughs> remains very even as Doran. Edge of Night coming up huge again. Yeah. Look at that! He's at the most damage in the game! It helps when everybody jumps into one little tiny circle. Tiny circle! <laughs> <laughs> and he's right there! But he's hitting that circle, he hits the circle, Yeah. No, it was great. It was it was well played. Um, but again, T1 really, they indexed into, okay, we've got to kill Zek 100%. And they threw everything into him. But you got to remember that Humble Life Esports have so many threats. Uh, with Viper, with Doran especially. Zeus is still 1,600 gold up. Yeah. I mean, very funny. A lot of members on the side of T1 are up. The only person who is not is Guma, and that's because Viper has gotten so much gold from just getting a bunch of kills. But we are about to, uh, as we said at the beginning of the game, we are about to approach the point where Zeka is going to become so much more of a problem than he is right now. Once Eclipse is done, uh, he's going to continually be able to, as we have seen, many times uh, proc Eclipse with his Malignants, meaning that the amount of damage being done to T1 is going to go from uh, quite annoying to completely bonkers. Completely bonkers. Yeah, I was going with uninteractive, but bonkers is better. And it's like you're getting top decked over and over and over again. Yes. At the same time, though, we are seeing that the combo in theory for T1 works, and that combo, I think, is going to remain a big threat, because if Viper ever doesn't have his ultimate, or is like a second too late, or Zeus clips him with an ultimate and Viper dies, that could very well be the end of it. But Viper hasn't done any dying in this game yet. I don't know if he's going to start anytime soon. Is Zeka? Zeka just runs at Yone. What is that? Yeah, that's Zeus just says thank you very much. That was very scrumptious. Hey, you're not a Kali, man. You can't do that. That's a fat Yone! You're the yeah. big carry! You can't die! Well, they needed him, and now T1 are like, oh, we can take a free Baron, okay. And oh, that is going contest. to get the teleport out of Doran. Can they actually get in here a little bit later from Faker, but he has Death Cap! Okay, he's ready for the engage if they want to go for the turn. Peanut looking for the knockback, looking for the bonk. He doesn't see anything as in goes Zeus, and he dies immediately as well. Owner getting into the back line just gets blown up as they do take out Doran, but this is potentially a win for Humble Life Esports. They stopped the Baron, and now TP's coming in. Viper, he has to go into that Feather Storm. Not much of a follow-up here on a Peanut. As Zeka, he wants to hit some rockets, but T1 is already running away. Ooh, still a win for Hanwha, though. They are able to deny the Baron attempt, even with Zeka making a very questionable play. But T1 in 15 seconds. That Drake is coming up, and I think that even though the immediate arrow... Oh, I don't want uh, to see this again. Yeah, this was... I no idea. <laughs> the, the W is not fast enough. You can't do that against Zeus. That is uh, really a colossal error, which leads to this situation. This cancel from Doran, absolutely huge. Faker tries to go in for the play, but he's not allowed to pass, thanks to his Aatrox. So you got to look at live. I mean, this is uh, Delight's trying to make a play here. They're trying to get on top of Faker, and he is going to be isolated Dead. now. Trying to frontline for the team. It's not going to work. There's a lot of sticks in this dragon. Can they actually get it down, though, is the question. As Zeus is going 1v4 in the back line, he takes out Saya, and they get the Infernal oh. Tornadoes. It's going 1v4, and they have to flash away from this one. Doran was not in the fight at all. He didn't have TP. 
And the TP advantage is going to be what turns this game on its head as T1 will take out Delight as well. And Hanwha Life were able to keep up. It almost looked like that was the moment where they finally turn it around, but instead T1 holds strong. Yes, Faker goes down and they say, who cares? We have enough damage on the rest of our team. Even if they didn't win that fight and they didn't get the soul, just the Baron alone could have been a difference maker, but... Instead, they get Infernal Soul. They get the Baron. And for Humba Life, a, a fight that looks like it starts off so well, with them immediately taking down Faker, so much of the combat power not being available there. Just watch. Yeah. Games. Just, okay, yeah, okay, this okay, is okay, what okay, I want to okay, see. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> go slow, go slow, he says. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, below, 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 so, so, I, so, so, so. I got him. Yeah, go, oh. go, 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 go. Unbelievable. So, 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 well, that's the... Uh, <laughs> Smith's top laner at Worlds. And you get to see his POV right yeah, here. Okay, 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 okay. At the LCK. He's asking if they can end, actually. Um, that That's kind of a bit much, even at this point in the game. I might as well just take the safe Baron, which they do. So now Infernal Soul, and he was already fed, but now he's even more fed and has Infernal Soul. Baker in a weird spot here. As Arrow's gonna come in, do they have the damage? He has to flash away. Might take away from their engage potential. I, 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 after seeing this new roster, I'm like, finally, Viper is freed. He's truly unleashed. And I, I, don't, I don't think, outside of the one mistake that... Uh, Just look at the scoreboard. Okay, uh, but <laughs> Endurance endurance and Peanut's defense, I actually think they've been playing well. I don't think they're the problem. There is, however, yeah. another problem. Zeus uh, may be a little bit too ham, but he is Yone, so he just gets to do whatever he wants. This is just the way the champ works. Doran here with the edge tonight, looking for an angle now that they did push back Zeus. But he won playing a pretty Still balanced... Still no Eclipse. Either, he but just got I don't it. even know if it's going to matter he at this point. He just got it. He just got it. The kiting is coming in. The feathers going to root down Karia. And now, let's see if Zeka can hit some rockets. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's one of them. Okay. And Karia says, I am going to leave now. But it's it's too late. Even even us, uh, cork, cor corky oh, enjoyers, got to admit that if the turrets already start falling, more like a corky respecter. Okay, I don't exactly I was, enjoy no, this I was, gameplay. I was, I, was, I, was being, I was being sarcastic, <laughs> fellas. Don't you worry. Okay, nice. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we got to clarify that. I, I don't think it's enough. Base at this point is in shambles. There's no map control, and you're going to need a truly Herculean engage from the light and peanut uh, taking down. At this point, probably Zeus. Probably the guy that you need to get. Yeah. And he's a Yone who uh, I'm pretty sure is about to finish his GA. I don't know if he has it yet. He was already building towards it. A shield bow as well. It's only he and Viper that are at 15,000 gold. Guma's not that far oh, behind. Oh, Death Stance, actually. But, yeah. Death Stance is pretty good. No, it's a great item. I'm just uh, was expecting him to go for GA, but instead, still a lot of extra tankiness for the Yone here. I think it's pretty worthwhile, especially the way that these team fights play out. If he is going to team fight, uh, there's a lot of burst damage potential on the side of Hamalai. Few sports can mitigate some of that. And looks like we might even get to Elder Drake ter territory here in this first game. T1 are pretty substantially ahead. I mean, it's 9,000 gold, the difference at this point in time. They have Infernal Soul as well, which is like, I don't even know. W what's the value of an Infernal Soul? Like five thousand gold. Uh, it's six thousand. I, I some like that, but also it, it skills with like look at the characters that they have. Yeah, it's, it's if you well, have like a bunch of, based on comp, of course. Yeah, but in this case, like <laughs> Fed Yone, yeah. a Fed Nocturne, <laughs> Nico with Death Cap, um, a Callista. Guma's in this game. He's there. Man. He yeah. is there. Uh, and, 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 and he's we, not the main. Carry, we make fun of him because he's he's not the no he's he's the guy that's like in the background with the main team. Yeah, yeah. You know they're like doing the the cool anime stuff, and he's like, I'm I'm I'm. He's the background dancer for for this game. You know, <laughs> the he, background. He has been. What anime? <laughs> what anime, Veldes? What anime? Yeah. 
Uh, in which uh, anime is he the background dancer? It's like in a performance. There's background dancers and uh, there's the, the main person that you're there to watch. I was going with an anime metaphor. I don't know enough about I don't dance. don't know enough about anime. Do you know about dance? That's new to me. No, but I know about performances. Okay, okay. I, a little bit. This arrow, let's see. No, it's going to sail wide. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> if that catches Zayus something, Zayus he is was dead. like, oh. Yeah, he is absolutely dead if that hits him. Also, if he got within range of, of Zeus as well, he was also dead. So the one thing you need to make sure now of ST1 is do not flip Elder. Everything else is fine. Uh, you can just have Zeus put in a side lane and, and bait them in and let that be the end of it. Uh, you do actually have a lot of control around the pit, so I think your re-engages should definitely be a possibility. As I, yeah, the minimap is not liking <laughs> Something going on. being a little spooky ghost. Yeah, that... that yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's just really funny. Um, how about like eSports? Yeah, don't, just don't start yeah, they're it. They're just not going to flip. And it can poke really well as well. Not as not as well as Corky, but decently well. So now it's going to come through and how about eSports say, okay, we're calling your bluff. Let's see if you can do it. Let's see if you can get on in here. They're going to get on top of Seca again. He's dead. And that's the end of the Corky. That ultimate, that was very unfortunate. And this goes the way. Wait. Okay. Viper. Do they get it? Viper. He's frontlining. He might be able to just scare oh. him. I know. He goes down. And now it's up to Doran. Can he do it with the Elder Dragon is the only question. As Zeus and Guma, I don't think even the Elder Dragon's going to help them at this point. The TP comes in from Faker. And we have the results of our first game. It looks like Baker trying to push in. Peanut is still alive, and he's doing the Wolves. Perhaps yeah, I, for I, some I, help. I, 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 we'll see if, uh, if, if Peanut makes it back to his base. But the Nexus, yeah. that one is going to go down. And what a first game here. Viper trying to say, uh, we're not going home. But unfortunately, oh, in this man. first game, they do, but they yep. had to fight for it. The bus, the bus driver of Viper was trying so hard, <laughs> but the bus just would not start anymore. And T1, as a team, they handled it pretty well there at the end. Had to challenge them on the Elder as Humlife Esports called their bluff. Zeus actually TPing into the fight. I thought maybe he would go for the end, but instead they just went for the team fight and it got a little bit dicey there at the end as Viper he had to try to front line with the Elder uh, Dragon buff and just carry the team, put it on and put the team on his back, but it just wasn't enough damage, even with the Elder Drake. At the same time, there's a couple of really easily identifiable mistakes on the side of Hanwha that if they fix, I think game number two can be very different. The Zekka, obviously, quirky angle didn't yeah, quite just, work just out. Just ban it. Yeah, just, just ban it. It's just fine. Just ban it. You don't have uh, to play it. Get rid it's of fine. it. Yeah. Get him on something melee. And then uh, we had a couple of early kills going over that didn't need to actually be given. We'll see if that is going to be the difference maker in the next game. I also would love Red Side. I feel like giving Zeus counter pick, it's too much power, Veldas. Yeah, they picked I the don't Aatrox, like they're it. like, we know what's what? happening, but we can't do anything about yeah, but, it. Like, again, I, I I don't think there's a great choice at that yeah. point. You can go like Jax, maybe, but at, like Jax is in the best of, of states, and two of the best blind yeah. picks were banned at that point in time already. It's so, team one, painful. they knew. Yeah, they knew. And Doran still did well, just wasn't enough. Yeah. Well, that was a really fun one. Very back and forth. How many Esports even finding some angles? But it was T1 to take down the victory in game number one. We have more games on the way, guys. We'll take a break and have the space. We'll be right back.
빡빡하게 쳐친다 이번에 아 잡았대 하긴 했어 13,000 13,000 자 누구 린지야 아니 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 태닥스 나도 갈게 쌍 갖고 보자 이거 나 콜키 본다 콜키 콜키 오케이 콜키 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 콜 이거 20초 돌기만 해 돌기만 해 잡아 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 내가 할게만 벌어줘 20초만 빨리다 오케이 견뎌 이거 아나 오늘 눈, 눈 컨디션 너무 안 좋아 나 힘들어 상대가 힘들어 지금 나도 눈 감아 나좀 잘게 어. 나한 번만 내려갔다 올게 이거 아 뭐야 이거 둘다 있어줘 아 왜냐면 나저 패에 방장인데 내가 졌거든 너또 방장 아또 방장이네 스크린처럼 편하게 하자 수동적으로 하지 말고 네 우리 한타는 빨리 심어 안으면 좋겠다. 어. 아, 상대 믿어도 취소일 어. 거임. 구만 씨의 그 얘기를 기억하면서 할게. 어. 편하게. <웃음> 뭐 할라 하긴 한다. 다이브 준비한다 얘네 근데. 어. 오케이. 내가 방문 있긴 하고. 가만 한번 까볼게 일단. 아안 된다. 일단 사볼게 이거. 나는 거의 죽었다. 어. 야 지금 다 죽어자. 나 이거 볼수 있냐? 오케이 오케이 나 이거 또 떠기래. 오케이. 아 풀게. 아 가비 가비 여기까지 막까지 앞. 오케이 사람 다들 죽었고. 아 내가 나오는 거 볼게. 오케이. 어. 먼저 봐도 돼. 진진 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 진진. 야, 저거 봐. 저거 저거. 공항 그게. 자, 이제. 나 벌려 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 벌려. 아이고. 야, 주자 주자. 저였다. 저였다. 나 이쪽 으로 열게. 어, 야, 캐네 캐네 캐네. 캐 잡았어. 야, 쳐주러 오면 안 되나 이거? 안될것 같아. 아직 이거 안될것 같아. 대장 해 볼래? 와, 저거 저거. 빼빼 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 빼빼. 사람 사람 사람. 얘 테라 다 없어. 와, 미쳤다 미쳤다. 나이스 나이스. 야, 우리 거의 다 왔다. 저거 하자. 저거 하자. 야, 이러면 진짜 한타 타방인데. 얘네 아... 믿어. 아, 네. 기회는 항상 있다. 게임 50분 더면 또 꺾이네. 찾아보면, 찾아보면. 이거 계속 반대쪽 돌려서 시간 끌어야 돼. 얘는 시야 측한데? 어, 누구 시간인지 몰라. 아, 아 괜찮아. 얘네 근데 많이 안 왔을 것 같아, 집에. 이거, 가, 이거 두 명이서 막아라 할 거야, 우리. 아, 예, 두 명이서. 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 아, 나도 왔다, 나도 왔어. 나, 저 바지를 놓고. 나 왔어. 얘 놓고. 아, 그래? 아, 그래? 이거 저 블랙 할때 볼래? 아, 아. 아지르만 잡으면 한타 그냥 이겨. 아, 저 아지르 놓고 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 오케이 오케이 다시 급해지지 말고 천천히 아 어차피 이거 후반 가도 우리가 훨씬 좋아서 상관없어 어, 그래. 맞아 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 상 걸자 상 걸자 오케이 에 봐도 없다 그냥 밑에 들으자 이거 봐도 없어 잘맨들어 이제 잘맨들어 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 이거 보자 아 이거 보자 야 캐네 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 그냥 들어와 봐 캐네 아야 바텀 라인으로 끄네 바텀 라인으로 아야 나왔어 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 아무도 없어 아무도 없어 나이스 아씨 이렇게 무난하게 드디어 드디어 이겼네 아 공주 잘려가지고 아 그만 떨려 미안하다. 나 이번 아 버스 좋다. 나도 잘했어 지훈아. 버스 좋다. 미안하다. 너무 잘했다. 버스. <웃음> 나 잠을 너무 못 잤어. 빨리 이겨줘. 나 빨리 이겨. 뭔가 날까 어제는 뭐 자기가 하드 캐리할 것 같다 씹 하드 캐리할 것 같다고 그래. 나 진짜 힘들어. 빨리 자고 싶어. 진짜 원딜러긴 하다 너가. 사람이 야 똑똑해. <웃음> 믿어본다. 아이고, 라 라크 쉽게. 아, 오케이. 야, 자, 만했어 야, 왜 이렇게 잘 먹냐? 형이야, 그 정도다. 와, 라크 3킬이야. 오케이. 쉣. 나 오늘 하고 싶긴 한데. 아, 근데 타고 있긴 한데. 한개 맞게, 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 맞게. 에, 사노플, 사노플. 어. 나, 나, 하지. 잡았어. 하자, 하자, 하자. 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 이조봐 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 나 이삼조 나 이거거든 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 와 김하라 와 들어 들어 김하라 당신도 나라게 할수 있다 
Welcome back to the space, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Wolf, joined by Ox and Huni. We just saw T1 win game one of this series against Hanwha Life Esports. It was a pretty back and forth one at times, but T1 did ultimately have a ton of control. We were happy to see the Corky finally make its way into one of these drafts. We weren't as happy with the performance, though, of Zeka on this pick. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll start talking off the draft. I thought it was pretty cool because we saw the early Corky pick. And then T1 kind of centered the whole draft around like dealing with that with like the early dive picks with the Nico and the Nocturne. The Xyracon comes out and the Aatrox and the Poppy. So, you know, Honor Life is what's new. They're dealing with a lot of dive threats and they pick all these great anti dive champions. And so T1's response was to just go for strong lane matchups like the Ash into the Xyracon and Zeus' Yone into the Aatrox. So it, it's cool seeing that back and forth through the draft phase. Yeah, I mean, if you see the HLE draft, like, it's just, like, the first pick and then two threes are Khan Corky has a lot of responsibility in the draft because it's, like, in 4-5, the top laner is getting a hard corner, especially against R5, I mean, the t just R5 with the Zeus. I think it is, like, really not easy for just top laner just can blind pick. I think the band could have been a little bit better, a little bit adjustable for next game, but still, I think I really like the, the T1 draft. Like, they actually had a whole team. The concepts are same that just going in, like, there's so many times Time that it's just like Corky was not even able to use the, a single package and just get popped and then so many team fights just have won that from the T1. And we saw a lot of proactivity out of this Nocturne pick in the early game. You know, we'll take a look at a reel of, of owner actually making a huge impact as the game began. And you know, this sort of advantage T1 picks up early made it very difficult to play out the game here as Hanwha Life Esports. And honestly, Nocturne is such a snowball-y pick because if you're getting the impact on the ultimate, you start getting the ultimate hunter stacks, you're able to ult more frequently, and really you're measured by the impact on your ultimates because really without it, you're not that powerful. And just if you're getting these successful kills, if you're getting the momentum, it goes such a long way for the team. I mean, it is really important for Nocturne that is like the first ulti, the second ulti, if it actually succeeds or it actually fails, that actually make the nexus, you know, like that actually make who win the game, who actually lose the game. Like that's the where I actually decide the game. But this time, I think the T1 had a really, really great plan with them playing really proactively that just be able to lead. Like if they actually had no lead and also not controlling a drag like this much, I think the game would have been way harder. Oh, absolutely. I would have to agree with you in a big way, Huni. Uh, the, the next big turning point, big fight in this game, of course, was around the soul. It was Infernal Soul, so a very critical objective here for Hanwha Life Esports to take. Walk me through this one. Yeah, so it starts off very scrappy. Uh, we actually see the Nico get deleted. Uh, not really having much impact in the fight. But the thing is, Zeus had just respawned and comes in with this beautiful flank. And I love his mixed focuses, really spreading his damage and chunking everyone out. Normally, you focus a single target, but he actually manages to deal so much. It's like he does the perfect amount over the course of the fight to take out the big threats. And then here, Doran tries everything he can, but the Yone just has so much stackable CC with that Q being available so frequently. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really insane, like, from the Zeus play. Like, he's had a third Q, like, be be uh, after he used the second E, and it's like, everything was really setting up for him. Like, even though it was like, the the before, there was a lot of the hiccup, like, there was a two times, like, three times that he actually got also pop in the team fight, but he didn't give up. He went full hand mode, and it's like, he actually won behind that, that actual fight that makes actually drag to the team one win with the Baron buff. Uh, and we did see Faker have a lot of great engages here. Are you guys leaning towards a Faker POG here, or is it all about Zeus? I think that fight sells it for Zeus for me. I mean, I feel like he played that kind of perfectly. I mean, Faker did have that big five man ult, but also there were some some moments like in that fight that we just saw where it was a little bit more of a struggle. Well, let's find out who is going to pick up that POG here for this first game in the series. Will be Zeus. Looks like uh, most people were sold as well. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Faker. Like, I also voted Zeus, but the thing is, like, if I was a Faker, like, I'll be, li I, I would be feeling like a little bit awkward because, like, every single time when he has like five man ulti or like big ulti, the follow up was like not actually hundred percent right. Like, it's not, it's not like even Faker fault that he actually w had a re insane engage, but it's just like the the time with the team and the coordination was like a little bit off that it made like a little bit worse. So I think the Zay was actually the the super play on him on the win is like and a silent lane in prio and also just one v one laning having just Yone just almost all kill the trucks multiple time. I mean this is like fair enough. Yeah, no votes for uh, owner in the jungle, which is a little bit surprising to see as well, just considering how much of a large impact he made, especially shutting down Zeka. 
Yeah, I think it's just honestly so much competition between the team for to get the POG. And I think as well, we saw uh, Zayas go for a really glass cannon build. We've seen like normally a bit bulkier builds, especially in the history of Yone, but this build is like such high risk, high reward. If you play perfectly, you'll get so much damage off your one shot people like we saw him doing a Zeka. And if you misplay, you will just get deleted. We're gonna have to see a better performance from Zeka and Hanolife Esports. They've chosen blue side and the casters are ready to go into game two. So take it away, Valdez. Thank you, Wolf. We are here on the caster desk, ready to break down game number two. And to be honest, after that first game, just give me two more of those, maybe like three or four more of those. Yeah. If we I, could. I love that throw as today. Well. Take it away, Feldes. I'm like, oh, yeah. yes. Do take it away, because I agree. Me away. Give me, Give me free games of that. <laughs> All we need is Zeka on a melee champion, and that's a 5v5. Okay, that's. Yeah. That's surely. That, that'll, that'll, that'll fix the trick. Uh, that, that'll do it. I think it would. I think it will. The second did have one win on Corky before that, and then that happened, so... Now he's one-on-one. Just ban it. I think you just ban it. And how many of these they're going to take blue side. Um, I was wrong about my Corky ban in game one. Will I be correct about it in game I two? I am somewhat surprised, though, because... What I if think he plays that, it again? How do we feel? Uh, bad. Very bad. It's still a good champ, though. It is. What yeah. if he says, okay, I, I messed up. Give me a second chance, coach. I, let me play the Corky. What's that or ban it? I don't think there's a lot of other options. My main thing, though, is that I think that game was quite close. We also still uh, see uh, a lot of happy faces as, as, yeah, okay, there's very obviously very different approach being taken here by Hanwha because they're banning basically everything that T1 played into them just now. And for T1, I imagine you just do the same thing. Ben Peanut, his champions. Also, lost some Peanut's Poppy. Didn't actually talk about it a lot. And yeah. I think he had a, outside of the one early game mistake where he died into that Nocturne Ultimate, he did actually have a, quite a clean game. Didn't end up going down at all, I think, unless he died just before the Nexus fell. But we'll see. This man, though, has got to step it up. Seka, even in his uh, 2022 season, had glimpses of what we would later come to see at Worlds. I don't really think we've uh, seen a whole lot of that just yet. I think. Definitely not in this series. So they're not going to ban Orianna, Varus, or Lucian. Uh, well, actually, they just ban Lucian. Okay. No Orianna, no Varus. Um, Rakan is going to be taken away from Delight this time around. That's a pretty smart idea in general. Also means that no Zaya Rakan, probably. Well, at least definitely not Zaya Rakan, but maybe no Zaya. So this bottom lane is going to look very different. And. A lot of big picks left available, especially that Orianna comes to mind. The Vi is there as well. And here we go. It's just Corky again. So this is what I was asking. How are we going to feel about this when he just slams it again? I still think the pick is obviously quite strong. Uh, and if he cleans up the play, then that could be enough. But it is a risk that they're taking. Now, Varus Ash is available. This doesn't give away a whole lot. Could even be Carry up playing Durrell. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong playing the Varus with Rel. Most likely, though, it's either going to be the Ash again, like we saw last time around, depending on the support matchup. And maybe that's what Humble Life is trying to do here, trying to make sure that uh, T1 don't get to both counterpick uh, in top, counterpick support, and outside of early mid, they basically have three winning lanes, which makes it very hard to play. We'll see what ends up being a bit. My expectation is this is going to go towards, the, uh, towards owner. Had obviously some insane plays, and I also want to see what is Viper going to end up on. <laughs> Blind Akali would have been very interesting uh, when they're already showing Rel. Um, Cassante is trying to give, I suppose, a, a better chance at that top lane. It means that you don't get the two side laners in Cassante and your ban in the second phase, like what happened in game two or one rather, and then you just don't have an answer to the Yone. Now, Orianna, not banned this time. It's left available. And Orianna for Faker is going to be great. I love that Senna ban. I was actually wondering whether they would be willing to go towards the Senna Seraphine. Viper was originally one of the guys that played everything uh, that he could get his hands on in bot lane back in what, 2018. The awesome dudes meta. Um, was, uh, was very happy to. With the Senna, a lot of those are going to get taken away. And for T1, would expect them to go towards probably a Gwen. That's generally what they've gravitated towards in this Cassante. Would also be very Zayas to just pick Aatrox. 
He's yeah. like, yeah, I can, uh, let's play Aatrox into this. That seems this. very quite Rumble, good, to be honest. Another option, Rumble Rel is uh, obviously a combination that isn't very fun to play into. We'll see what T1 wants to go for here, because they already have quite a strong core. Can either opt for more frontline, it's also an option, or really go all in. We also don't really know yet what this Varus is going to be. Most likely, it'll be Lethality Varus, but we'll see. Even with the Cassandra, I do think playing into Vi, it is really hard to reliably get autos off. But if they end up going for, like, carry as Kench, for example, that does really change the equation. There's that Aatrox you were talking about. Seems like we're all on the same page here. Didn't want to give him a chance to play that one. And still curious about what he is going to play in the top side. Might just be the Gwen again. Decent amount of magic damage in the comp, but you definitely want something to deal with the Mordekaiser. Oh, he's, he's going to have fun. Yone again? Okay. Just Yone again. Why not, he says. Why not? <laughs> That's not his slogan, Valdes. True, actually. It's <laughs> the team they're playing against. Um, so Yone, now 5-0. and zero. Feeling pretty good about uh, the Yone nowadays. Actually, it, uh, it did get picked up. It's six and zero now, actually, because it was six played in the first series zero. as well. So here we go. Uh, Felios and Milio. Really good round. I can't believe we didn't talk about a Felios Milio, actually. That's quite funny. It just feels like it it's could such happen a at any time. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, OK, you know. And and yeah, I was about to say. So this is one of the things we haven't really seen being picked in the Milio that much are things like Blitzcrank, things like Pike that have a way of getting on top and taking him down. Now, Varus Pike is as um, as volatile as a matchup as there is, because it involves Pike. It's pretty self-explanatory. Pike really yes. stands or falls by how much you get to do early on. Uh, T1 do have more frontline than they did last time around, though. This time, Owner actually, especially with the threat of that ball from Faker, really strong combo there. A lot of team fighting power for T1. On the flip side, though, on what lives comp, if you get to mid game again, not only do you have uh, what we saw last game, which is Viper on a hyper carry, but this time he has Milio yeah. added as well. A lot more range. Which gives him both a lot more range, also makes him way harder to reliably CC down yeah. and kill. And I also think there's less backline dive than there was. There is still the Yone, sure, but outside of that, there isn't really something like the Nico that yeah. we saw the Nocturne. No, turn, no, no. Turn. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, that's, the combo. Turn? that's okay. the combo right there. No neat turn. Yeah. How many esports going to be shelling from afar? They have at least one engage button. Couple. You know, you got the package as well. You've got a beefier front line. And on the side of T1, lots of wombo. See if that's enough. Here in the second game, I wanted to go to free Valdes. And it might just. We'll have to wait and see if Hong Life Esports can challenge them here in game number two. Here we go. Game number two. T1 looking for a quick 2-0 to move up in the standings. Humble Life Esports, they got to come back in this game if they want to try to force a game three. I would love a game three. I think that even though game number one had some individual underperformances, there were a lot of really high stakes moments. Humble Life actually did a really good job, I think, of keeping the game close up until the very end. Let's not forget if uh, Viper is able to just have like an extra second there, doesn't get focused down immediately the DPS could have been immediately game-breaking. And uh, if they win that fight, maybe they can push, at the very least get an inhib or two. And then all of a sudden, we're looking at a very different game. Obviously, main thing going to be is uh, Zeka, not because of the Corky, because it, we've said our fair part about the champion, but the individual play of the player, not really <laughs> enough. If you want to be able to match power of T1 and it's also the first really big test for Hanla. So I think for them, at the very least, bringing this to a game three is big. What is happening here? Yone. What is happening he here? To deal with him. And he goes very deep, and it just doesn't seem to matter. Owner already did a camp. 
<laughs> yeah, he's gonna invade now. So Peanut actually, uh -oh. starting with W, which obviously is the best for the early player. Oh, he got that. Thank God. He did get it, but he's also gonna take a big chunk here, and he loses the two mini wolves. So Peanut is just really sad right now. Yeah, we one out of ten on the happiness scale. We've seen this with Jaxus as well, where you can just walk into the enemy jungle with lethal tempo level one, and and they just you win the one v two. It's uh, it's kind of ridiculous. And that already puts Peanut on the back foot. Now, Peanut, in my opinion, perhaps the most tilt-proof uh, jungler in the entirety of the LCK. The the game he played against Canyon, or rather games, uh, definitely going to always be at the forefront of my mind in that regard. Mm -hmm. It's not great as Vi, who wants to rush to six to already be this far behind your opponent. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, just get back to farming. You're, you're going to lose your buff. It's not going to feel good, but... Just kind of move on, try to hit six as fast as you possibly can, and then just uh, look for the plays later on in the game. Carry not hitting a hook just yet, as this bottom lane is going pretty even for now. The pike, you know, you mentioned how this is definitely going to be pretty volatile as he's going to be looking for some plays, or at least threatening them. You can do this with pike as well, as the hook is going to go wide. But you can always have that threat as long as your cooldowns are available, where you just kind of run at them and they have to respect it. And kind of like a Blitzcrank feel. And Carrie is doing a good job of doing just that. And the... Or what, am I being one of the biggest benefits of the uh, Thalios Emilio, and we've seen this with some other hyper combination co uh, combos in the past, is just that... You're a hyper carry, but you also, in, in many cases, not in this case, but in many cases, just win the level one really, really hard because of Calibrum, because of the Milio range, and because of how good these eight carries are at spacing. And and we can see here as well, oh, Guma. We're just brawling, Guma taking it to Viper and losing, and Viper just stands up to them. This hook, flash forward, it's not going to work out. This Caria trying to turn the tides here, flash. Oh, the dodge was excellent by Zeus as he goes unbound. And he just hopped back, but he did have to flash to get away from that play. Still big win there, Peanut. Not disturbed, no real uh, worries for him. Smokes top, forces a flash, uh, does see owner now, and he doesn't have mid lane prio, so I don't imagine he's going to be feeling too good. It's Faker. Faker has sent Zekka back twice already. <laughs> like, Zekka's backing yeah, again here. I mean this is what Oriana does, right? And, and True. especially in you know, the Corky, like at least his ear oh, can trade no. back a little bit. But Corky early on, you're, you're not going to win those trades. It's just not really going to happen. As Caria, he is going to be quite annoying. He's going to get in there. Speaking of which, owner's doing the same. Leave Peanut alone. He just wants to farm, man. Yeah. And part of the reason he's able to do this is the top lane. Even after Zeus had to flash. He can just push the Cassante under turret, and the Cassante can't do anything to help out Peanut in that topside jungle. So, owner just gets to get in there. Faker, you know, what is a Corky gonna come over and like kill Darrell? It's not gonna happen at this level. And of course, Oriana can also push in. So, owner just gets to do whatever he wants. And what he wants to do right now is take down these Void Bubs. And Rel actually one of the best at clearing these out for the reason we're about to witness in just a second. Ooh, I wonder if he's gonna like. May, uh, keep all of them low, and then with one Q... Ah, missed the third one there, but you can basically kill all of them. Still out of smite, so yeah. uh, nicely set up. There's Caria. Caria looking for it. Hops forward. Is going to miss the hook. Caria not hitting a single hook just yet. Not that I've seen. The ult comes forward, and level 5 Doran gets out Scott free this time. A little spooky there. Doran does survive, but at the same time, this gold lead is only getting bigger. Zayus in this 1v1 completely un tethered, uh, unlike Yone, ironically. Carrier now back after his short trip to the mid lane. And the laning phase again from T1. Uh, nothing has happened, and they're up 1k gold. Yeah. Which, uh, being ahead in lane, does make sense with the setup that they have. Counter pick, obviously, in both uh, mid, uh, top, and bottom. But the extent to which definitely is... Uh, there should be a little bit more fluctuating. I think the Viper and the Light are not going to be too bothered. Same for Doran, but we'll see. I think particularly after last game as Zekka, you're really looking to have as much of a bounce back as you possibly can. And I do think you're supposed to struggle against the Oriana early, particularly Faker yeah. has been super oppressive on this pick early on. But 
It's mostly a mid game, I think, where we saw a lot of pressure. Uh, Ult's coming in. All out. Right. Is in some trouble as he is unbound. But now Doran not going to hit the knockup. The timing is not there. And he doesn't get the kill just yet. Finally gets in, but he goes down. Zeus gets himself into a rough spot, at least is able to trade it back, but Doran picks up the first blood. And Doran ends up going down anyway. Zeus not getting caught there. Oh, Hook finally came in, forces that flash. Level six here for the side of the T1 bot lane. In goes Viper, he's doing a punch he to Gooba. He doesn't even have six. He doesn't even have six, doesn't need it. He's got red, white, and that was enough to push them back. Only. I mean, Carrier just ignited on the play. Actually, the summoner advantage is T1s after all of that. Plus, they got the dragon. So there you go. And we do have both Cloud and uh, Camtech already here. And yeah, the main thing, Doran actually is able to predict where Zeus is going to go initially. But then here tries to go for a predictive Q, just barely misses the timing. And then thinks he has the kill there. I think always is going to take that extra turret shot, so the moment that Zeus, he follows Zeus, I think he is dead. Even if uh, he wouldn't have, like, done the little walk back. Yeah. But I, I'm not sure what the wave state was. I think that the first turret bot should still help him a decent amount. And after this, I think he'll be still behind, uh, particularly with the blade advantage still being there for Zeus, but it being a uh, a small win for the Cassante. But we are a we, we're in a very similar situation to last game, where... For Humble Life, it's about holding on. Last game, they were able to find some great mid-game team fights. We'll see if this time around, that is the same. Yeah, that is a good question. As Pina is hanging around the top side of the map here. You know, he has hit level six. He wants to make a difference somewhere. He got the flash earlier on from Zeus, but that was about it. Maybe trying to find the timing. You see Zeus's flash is like 10 seconds away, so would have been really nice if Zeus was in the lane. But he wasn't, and so Peanut's just gonna back. And look elsewhere. Carrier, meanwhile, just dealing with stuff in the enemy jungle. Here's Owner, actually, so the jungle who's up here and maybe makes a difference might be the T1 jungler. Doran is alone, he is gonna hop past them, but the stun comes through, and that should be enough, even against Cassante. And now that's Zeus picking up two kills. Unfortunately for Doran there, the moment that Zeus ults him, normally getting uh, that ultimate off from Cassante immediately can be ben uh, beneficial, but if he had that as soon as Owner shows up, might have been able to somehow find an angle over a wall that kept him alive. Not going to be the case. Doesn't have that cooldown available. Really nice timing there from Owner. And Zeus now, again, <laughs> getting fed on this Yone. It's just, is it the same game? It kind of is. It's not exactly, uh, because obviously the... Oh, Peanut! Uh, trying to get in here is Peanut. He's not in range, and guess who is? Finally does get in range, but Karia comes in, picks up the kill, and Faker's going to survive. And now Peanut's in a whole host of trouble as well. Tries to flash in front of the Q, not going to quite time it correctly, and Peanut does get out with his life. And Peanut getting out is nice, but Zeka ends up dying again. And we see a short moment of uh, of hesitation there, I think, as Peanut and Zeka go in. Peanut is like, can we do this? Because I think at that point, they also realize that Pike is on its way. But it's not going to matter as we see another look here at the moment that Doran uh, counters the ult with his own. Knows that he is dead. Not going to be able to get out of that one alive, unfortunately. And the lead and top grows in here. I think they realize that Pike is there literally like the moment and, and, and then uh, Zeka has to play defensively because he has to respect Faker's ult, but also with the Peanut <laughs> Dies to alone. Pike anyway. Dies to Pike anyway. Rel wasn't even necessary, and Peanut would have definitely died if Karia got that ult off. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I almost landed the Q. And, well, it didn't happen. Close. Didn't quite happen. I mean, Peanut was a Vi who had Flash and potentially Q. Uh, to get away at that point, so we don't blame you this time, Karia. Meanwhile, Viper trying to protect a control ward. But yeah, the mid lane situation um, was pretty dire before that, and now, I mean, Peanut's still behind. Zek is still behind, also died to Karia. And Faker has the most CS in the game. And we saw him stepping behind the enemy range minions, blocking missiles from CSing. 
And that's how you know the lane is done. <laughs> the lane is very due. Yeah, that's, that's like that's the key that's... sign. It's like, okay, the jungler can't hurt me. The enemy mid laner can't hurt me. I'm just going to shield all of your damage so you can't even touch my minions. I kind of love how Guma is yet again the uh, either enemy sidekick or backup dancer, depending on who you ask, because he's just, he's like 25 CS up. He's just in this lane. Carry us going on all these fun trips without him. Ooh, got some slows coming in from the Gravidem. Ooh, nice chains come out from Guma. And that is going to put a stop to it. Doesn't even get to one. We want to the death. Not allowed. Not allowed. No fun for Guma. Got to protect. And the owner's just here now. He says, okay, I'm going to get my bot lane out of this lane. Give them a nice time to back, I suppose. Although Guma and Carry are sticking around. Uh, still a lot of stuff available. You know, you got Pike ult, you have uh, big Wombo from Owner with Flash and ult available. Top lane also going in favor of T1 after uh, a bunch of skirmishes there. Zekka with the package. Can he get something going? There is Karrion nearby as well as Owner doing the Drake, so you got to be careful about this timing if you are Zekka as well. It's also no follow-up, so I can't imagine he actually wants to use it offensively here. But if you don't use the package, it's also kind of a waste. Ideally, you want to try and at least uh, get some value out of it. Maybe towards a Rift Herald comes to mind. Because this second Drake also going to T1. And T1, everything's going according to plan. But for me, the big difference between this game and last is that, again, I really like Hanwha's comp. But I do think T1 have a lot more power when it comes to mid to late. Even if they don't snowball, which yeah. they are. There's not as much K. pressure in no. the early and mid game. To, no, there's no uh, no Ash, you know, no yeah. no Kalista. Well, I'm saying there's Nico. not as much pressure to like end the game early on for no, D1 that's yeah, because agree. they have that scaling. Yeah, yeah, and they have really good team fighting uh, this time as well. As owner is getting very far into the enemy jungle, does have carry nearby. He got it. Yes, yeah, he got four. it. Nice. Mid lane is still like Zeka even had to build a hex drinker, which we do see occasionally, but it just delays your three item spike even that much more, and it's going to be pretty rough. It's going to take a long time for Zeka to be pretty, you know, in this game at all. On the on the plus side though, it's better than the last game so far. I think I actually it wasn't. Is it? He, no, he was, <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was not nearly as far behind. Okay. Um, but I'm trying to find an upside here. Do gotta say though, Humble Life looked similar to this in last game, and then when the team fighting started, that's where we really started to see, which is is pretty funny given that a large part of this team was of course Gen G. Baker's just gonna take the turret by the himself. Thing. Yeah, on the next wave it is gone. Um, that's gonna be first turret about going over to this Oriana. And I don't think there's a whole lot they can do to stop him. Teleport comes in. But I, that's not enough, and Owner is there, and the turn uh, is gone! <laughs> he almost missed his TP as well. Like, if Faker really stepped up and tried to put a couple more autos into that thing, it was possible. But I, I think maybe he wanted him to TP for the potential for Owner uh, to get in there. But either way. Zeka gets the way, gets away. He does stick around here. It's almost like he's watching Faker CS, and then he's like, oh, I guess I'll just pick up the scraps. I don't know I wish that what else I could do. I wish that could be me. Yeah. Maybe that's his thought process. <laughs> I wish I, I could have money. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and they did opt into this, and I think part of that is that, one, the pork is obviously an insanely strong pick, but on the flip side, it also is, uh, what was Faker, 19-game win streak, so you can't give it yeah. over. Which just again beckons the question, why not just ban it? Just ban it. Um, and, and maybe we'll see an answer in this game if Zekka is able to eventually take over. Well, especially if you're leaving Oriana up. It, it feels like, you know, Corky can have some better lanes, but not against Oriana. No, against you Oriana, know? it's... it's The blind Corky with Oriana available after you just had that game one performance. That was... questionable. Yeah. There's just a lot of different factors <laughs> coming together. It's 4K gore for this deficit. question. Uh, and, and that Hill Mary team fight, the, the team fighting prowess I was talking about, it's got to come soon. Kraken Slayer's done for Viper. Maybe the light with this Milio can get something going. Faker is pretty much invulnerable at this point. He has the arm guard. And I love that defensive item choice um, into the enemy comp. 
uh, especially you know that Viper's going to be doing a lot of damage, but also more importantly, it's like, if I can get Stasis very early on, I can just be even more of a threat. He already has his one item spike with the Ludens, and he knows he's very fed, so he just uses that extra gold to become more unkillable, essentially. A more defensive item choice, but I, I think it's a cool one in this scenario. Uh, especially because he knows that, okay, well, soul point fights are coming up. We've got Rift Herald fight is about to happen. So some big team fights are going to happen. And if they do isolate in 100 to 0 Faker, that is a big problem for T1. So he just says, I'll just pick up some stasis. And another objective going to get started up here. Uh-oh. Peanut's in the enemy jungle for some reason, and he might just be dead. There is a Cassante nearby, but it doesn't matter, as Caria is going to take him out. But he does go down at least, and it ends up mattering, I suppose, for Doran, who will pick up the kill. Gold positive trade is... Uh-oh, this won't be. Maybe? Yeah, what's going on here? Uh, just looking for a free Viper, I suppose. And it doesn't matter how many Melio ultimates and abilities you use, he's still going to die. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, unfortunately that one, not a, a gold positive shift, because the bot one, it's one for one, but you get a bounty. So that's nice. Uh, but then Viper dies in mid, and uh, it, it feels a little bit less nice. We just have owner moving from lane to lane, and then whoever is in that lane that is already winning just gets a turret. Now, first we had Faker, right? Now Guma gets to do the same. Thing. Yeah. Um, we gotta see some form of resurgence from, from Hanwa, because... It's it's getting to like 5, 6k. Peanut just queues in, not ready. And I think that the call here was probably that they are investing towards top side of the map and they're doing Herald, but uh, they're not. Caria and Zeus are both just there. And this, this, this chance not too bad. It's fine. Fortunately, this part is kind of rough. Viper, I think he thought that he was just on the edge. He did have his flash available. If he flashes the Shockwave, probably lives, but... Uh, not actually able to walk out of it does end up going down and yeah it's um it's a bit dire for Amelie life esports I, I think that they'll be happy that it's not infernal soul this time but yeah it might not matter because the lead is is much wider this game as well and it does feel a bit more suffocating your corky seemingly even more far behind <laughs> Started so early as well, right? With Zayus just going in 1v2. So they're gonna try to do the dragon. Peanut, you are you are this not is a single ocean dragon. Hey, maybe this is the Hill Mary. Yeah, I mean they, they have the package. Look at Viper's guns. They have package the package. As well. Okay. They say, okay, this is where we're gonna try to have to get a fight going. Maybe we can pick someone off. Carry it. This takes some damage. And now, I mean, it's T1. You don't have to fight this, but if they do look for an angle. They could go for it. Owner just looking for the combo. There it is. That's the kill. And there's the stasis. And Faker lives. And down goes Peanut. And now Viper's in the front line. He's taking so much damage. And down he will go as well. Zay is super low, but just flashes away. This is a total wipe in favor of T1 as they take down three members of Hummel Life Esports and the Drake. And this was happening the whole time. Yeah, I think Baron's gone as well. Somehow, even though the kill scores look better, this game is much more doomed, Veldas. Didn't even need Pike Gold in that one. It's just... <laughs> I, I, <laughs> There's not too much to say. I mean... No. Yeah. We, we really. kind of saw the writing on the wall like 10 minutes ago as well. And so now Caria, he's just bullying at this point, trying to get to Light, who was getting into the pit for some reason. Carrier is going to just hop They away. got Nash on spawn! Yeah. Let's take another look at this fight. Break it down for us, Chronicler. So, the idea here, obviously, is we're going to go in hard on Faker because he's a big threat, but they didn't do the arm guard check. So watch this. A and then Pina just dies to Duma immediately. Meanwhile, in the back line, Zeus and Carrier are creating a lot of, uh, of issues, and Zekka doesn't actually get that much value out of his package. Um, we see an attempt from Viper to do something, but he gets caught by the ultimate and just ends up going down. And uh oh, <laughs> Faker is just gigantic right now, and Viper just has to walk away. He does have Ghost, and okay, well that's interesting. Faker trying to put down a control ward in that bush, I guess. Not sure. Just been a bit of a misclick. Either way, he doesn't even have a control ward. So. 
Yeah, Faker just got two. He got a free lane. And the one time Peanut tried to go there, they actually lost in the trade. And Faker got even farther ahead. Yeah. Um, I think we can let go of any notions of this game somehow turning around, uh, Veldas. Game I, one was so good. It was so close. It was a lot of fun. Crazy game one, Yone yeah. moments. And now this game happened. Uh, game one, like, I, I actually think that obviously Delight and Viper with, with the highlights, but Doran and, and Peanut still had good games. Yeah. But this one is a classic, like, every lane is kind of losing in, in, in some sort of way. Even the jungle. All right. He'll marry Pete. No, no, okay. we got no one. Um, th they are losing the top side turret. Yeah. I mean, it's got nothing to say. It's, it's, it's 22 minutes in there. I think this zoom out is perfect. It's 11k gold. I think Dennis Strong was like, you know what? There's nothing I can focus on right now. Nobody's going to make a play. Hey, they're going to go in on a Faker. They saw him use his Zip. Faces, and they got him. And that's a kill. And now we got the flank coming in from Doran. This is going to be pretty nice. A couple of kills. His owner. Just sends it. Might as well, I guess. He's not going to take out Peanut, though. And that's going to be a couple of kills here in the hands hey. of Amalife Esports. Down to 9k. That's... You got to start somewhere. Yeah, I think Viper got a shutdown as well. Yeah, he did. On the face. Playable. Playable, Playable Veldas. This just is, uh, surrounds the Aphelios. Um, yeah, this is very straightforward. Faker just used his Zonyas, and then he gets like you don't. Yeah, and it was on vision too. Yeah. I'm not sure why he's that far up. Uh, and then nice TP from uh, from Doran as well to ensure that they actually can take down more targets. Ideally, would have gone like to get someone else, but Guma was already positioned well. Carry a spike, so it was really slippery. Hard to actually take down. Zayus wasn't near to play. Zayus is something we haven't really talked about at all yet this game, outside of the ganks he received, but he is up uh, 50 CS and. He is uh, sitting on like a 300 something gold bounty and is not <laughs> manageable in side lanes. But one problem at a time, Veldes. They killed Faker. They got a big shutdown. Yeah. Viper now has two items. That's how it starts. If it was going to become something, it had to start in this manner, essentially. They keep their inhibitor alive, they don't lose their inhibitor turret. Uh, they Ace get a shutdown. It's, it's a lot of gold. Who cares about Ocean Soul? Who cares about Ocean Soul? You've got two items now on Viper. Gotta start somewhere. Why did you put uh, Humble Life in your predictions? Fourth. Mm. Yeah, I had them behind KT, which, uh, again, <laughs> this is overreaction week one predictions that we're talking well, about. Well, if it, if, it, if it makes you feel any better, I don't know if I feel much better about putting them third. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Is I think it, game is one it, showed off I know, that I, they are a strong team. We're, we're in week two, right? We're, we're, we're going to overreact. It's impossible to know. We're, we're going to overreact to anything. This team might look completely different uh, if you give them another month. I'm not going to draw any grandstanding conclusions. But if it's just another split of T1 Genji for the fourth year in a row, actually, for a year, I guess. Probably yeah. will be, yeah. Probably will be. It's carry out behind enemy lines. Yeah, looking for the back line, but there's a TP coming in. Zeka has the package here. So they really have to respect that to T1. Come and on, Hanwha. In fact, they might just back off of this one. But let's get us see. to free. Trying to get in. The hook is on Azeka, but the package is pretty good. Owner isolated, but he's just so tanky. He gets into the front line with the package help. And Karia gets super low, but I don't think they care about that at all. As the damage from Viper is non-existent, he's totally zoned away. And that will be another T1 victory in this team fight. Oh, poor Viper. Yeah, you're... Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> Guma gonna take that yeah. one? Yeah. And that might just be it. They're just gonna push the bottom lane. Four people are down here for Hummel AP Sports. Not very long on and the death timers, though. I, I I don't know if you saw, Viper was was laughing, like, very loudly. <laughs> and like, what, what do you do after a game like this? Yeah. He just got clapped. There's not that much more to say. It, it, the bot unlike, lane loss, the jungle loss, the mid lane loss, and the top lane loss. Unlike last game, where it was a very easy uh, person to play, and this one, it's just the team they felt us. Yeah. It just ends up being that way. Doran is trying to buy some time here. He's doing a good job. I, I think they will get Doran, but they're not going to get the space. As Peanut's thinking about it, no stasis available with the heal. Nope, not quite enough as Zeus. Now he wants to go 1v5. He's having a bunch of fun. As uh, maybe the damage here from Viper could Peanuts. be enough. Did they go too far? As Peanut's in this back line, not able to lock down Guma. As the damage comes in, and Karrion nearly able to double it up, but not quite. As that will be another kill, just fed over to Viper. 
<laughs> Signs of life! <laughs> Let's go! Um... So they, uh, uh, I don't know why we get a replay of this one. This is uh, this is rough. So starts off, and and this is something that we saw Lucy to do as well. The turn possibility uh, for something like a rail is just absolutely devastating. Guma is just free hitting as is Faker from the other end, and uh, this fight is, is very over very quickly. But hear me out. That's that's Ocean Drake now going over to Humba. Okay, that's a that's Bounty Gold. They don't have vision. Wait, is it Bounty Gold? That's Bounty Gold. Well, it th is, yeah. No, Guma, no, 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 no. No! <laughs> Come on! Well, that was uh, pretty elementary. From owner, just over the wall, just, doesn't even cast anything, just smites it. As now, Zeus, okay, that shockwave was massive, and now Zeus finds the angle, picks up two, and he's looking for a third. Doran will be gifted over to Guma, as now Karia just following Delight around the map. Look at the base! <laughs> the minions got mid at him! Guys, look at these guys. He's having fun. Oh, man. Oh, Carrie, I had to do him dirty. I thought he would, you know, take him for a little walk. Delight's got a big smile on his face. This game is over, guys. <laughs> As they are looking for Peanut. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to be the 2 0 here for T1 tonight in a very extremely dominant game number two. They just wiped them off the face of the rift. And that is the 2 0 for T1. Game number one was like a great ride in a roller coaster, even though KT wasn't involved. It was flashy. There were moments where you thought that Humble Life, even though they were somewhat on the back foot, could pull it back. Viper had some incredible plays. They watched him steal Elder and then almost turn the fight. And in this one, uh, T1 just... <laughs> they just <laughs> massacred them, Valdez. Yeah, was that wasn't fair. We ran out of things to talk about very quickly. This won every lane, and then the game was done. Yeah. I mean, remember the level one, too? Where Zeus is just running yeah. at the two of them in the enemy jungle, 1v2 with lethal tempo, 1v2ing them. And then owner takes Raptors, and, and then he joins. And it's like, okay, well, Peanut is not going to have a big effect on this early game. And he didn't. They got the gank on the top side, so Zeus was always going to win there. Faker won mid lane by himself. Owner eventually went bot, and the lane was already winning anyway, so. Guma knew. He knew he was the backup dancer. He did a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. Yeah. Uh, Carry, I got to play uh, a champion that, really, if you go back to what, like 2019, 2020, DRX was one of his, uh, one of his most iconic, I would yeah. say. It was one of those games that we watched and play Pike where people began to believe in Carry. you Why know? Why you began to believe. I believe, yeah, it was like, Man, this guy is the real deal. He could be like one of the best supports in the league. And, uh, well, <laughs> now he's here. And he's one of the best supports in the league. And he just defeated Delight pretty handily as well. Another guy we talk about all the time. Delight even got to play Rakan. You know, I'm not blaming Delight by any means, but. No, so especially in the Must feel nice. For, Still big. From Karia's perspective to say, yeah. hey, we just, you know, we dunked on you a couple times and I was the better support today. After you uh, dunked on me in, uh, in two finals, I will not forgive you for that. Mm -hmm. And I think the counter pick was really big. For Hanwa, a couple of great points. Obviously, Viper, uh, and I think Delight. That second game was a little bit more rough, but I think it was also more matchup dependent. But game one in particular, bot lane, no notes. Uh, Doran didn't even really feel like he had any of the, you know, the classic Doran moments we often talk about. Just had a decent day, obviously overextends there, but outside of that, not the end of the world. But it was just too much. The only thing that outside of things like draft, which I think maybe different side selection could have helped, actually moving over to the red side, could have been something if you see how much T1 rely on getting with lane matchups. Um, but Zaka's performance today was uh, anything but inspiring, and that is one thing that they will need to shore up when they face up against any of the other top tier teams, because in game one, I was like, coming into the split, I was hoping Humble Life would be not, a, not, not just a fur team, but like you know, like, it would actually be contesting with one and two. In game number one, looked like they could be. Game yeah. number two, not so much. Yeah, I I think they put up a good fight, especially Viper in the first game. I, I feel kind of bad for him, but what are you going to do? Team game after all, and T1 definitely look much stronger than Hamalai Esports at this point in time. I'm going to be curious to see if Hamalai Esports can grow as a as a roster. I mean, these guys, I'm all sure of them have win. been around for a very long time. But as a five-man unit, 
it's going to be a different feel to see if they can reach a different level. Let's focus Cassante. Or he's in a good spot. Push bot and game. <laughs> also, Wagner is going to pick up POG. Faker is obviously the first one that comes to mind, but I think Owner. Uh, I think Owner also had an amazing game on the rail. Won every single lane. Faker. I, 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 vote Faker. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I'm saying it like that because I don't really. Yeah. You know how it works. But this game, I. Yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> 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 making some fun sounds. GG Nice. What's the call at the end? And we had quite the blastening happen there in game number two. It's the first time anyone has said that word ever in the history of mankind. Um You know what? Yeah. Zerky Zerky Sparky. <laughs> Zerky yeah. Zerky is cancelled. <laughs> Zerky's cancelled, yeah. It's done. He looked good before he had to play against Faker's Oriana. I'm not sure why that happened in the draft. I'm sure the space has perhaps a better perspective on that. Not sure if they do. Either way, let's hear from them right now and hand it over to the space. Thanks, Valdez. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit uh, here on the space. We left you guys last time saying we are going to have to see a better performance from Zeka. We're going to have to see a better performance from Hanwha Life Esports. They drafted the Corky again. And we did not see that performance really improve. In fact, it was a little bit of a, a gap in the mid lane. And gentlemen, I want to know your thoughts on running the Corky back, especially after what we saw from Zeka in game one. I just don't think they need to do it. I think they honestly could have banned it. I also think like the Corky priority has risen, but a big reason why the Corky was so successful was because it was often being picked into the Azir, had a very chill laning phase that you could just get through. And then when you hit level 16, you take over. But the Orianna and Faker's Orianna in particular was much more of a challenge. And you take so long to come online for this Corky pick. You know, a big aspect is you use the packages to secure Drakes. But if you're getting gapped in lane this hard, you're just never getting there. Yeah, I mean, if they was actually the one of pick the first pick quirky, I think it would have been more make sense. Like actually having more stronger jungle only, so make sure secure the mid lane is actually going well. Even like, I think I really like the T1 from the Pike pick with the virus, they just playing for Boprio and then it's back sure. Like we see sometimes, we see a few times actually carriers just come to mid and it's like even helping out the Faker out and it's like make sure the quirky cannot farm properly. And that had to be like HLE job, not T1 job. So make sure it's like, the, T uh, the Faker was actually just like 30 CS ahead when he has like the, the 100. Look, Zeka has a 70. That should have not happened. Yeah, it definitely felt like they were losing everywhere. And I think a lot of this due to T1's proactivity we saw in the early game. We saw, of course, the level one where they were able to put Peanut behind. And then they got all over the rift pretty quickly to spread that influence. Yeah, I mean, we saw like a very common thing we get from top laners nowadays, just uh, to the death, 1v1s, but Ona came up, just made sure it was secured to get that extra kill after we had the trade earlier. Uh, and mid lane as well, as uh, Huni was talking about, seeing Carrier move to turn what could have been a rough situation of Faker into a favorable one. Yeah, it almost be actually just too old, and it's like, if the, I think if Peanut actually died there, I think it would have been really, really disaster. And this is the where actually I think the game actually cannot be returned. Just, they just win as a 2v2, like, the, Vi the Viper still had a flash, but it's like not actually was it using it, and it's kind of saving it, and that make the game as it was even harder, and I mean, obviously also the Faker Doriana is like really, really fat, and it had a really high impact the game, entire throughout the game. We also, you know, we saw that those fights, those plays kind of snowball T1's lead and made it very difficult for Hanwha to hang on. And the breaking point ended up happening at this Drake fight in 19 minutes where Hanwha Life Esports decided to try to force this fight. It did not go well, did it? Yeah, and I think this is kind of what you have to do if you have the Corky. You have to really cement an advantage with the package. Zeka goes in here though, and I love how Ona, despite getting chunked by the package, turns it around onto the Aphelios. They take out that carry. And then it's just clean up from there. And, you know, a lot of the times the teams struggle against Corky is when he just outranges them massively. And I love that both games we've seen so many layered engage tools to deal with that. So you could never really have your carries be safe for 100 Life Esports. Yeah, I mean, for T1, they had like was really, really great the, uh, the positioning wise. And it's like, it's just so smooth because uh, based on how much they're leading the game only. And also, like, 
they were, I mean, I wouldn't even say the hiccup. Like, they were just kind of enjoying the game, like, after 20 minutes. Because, like, 20 minutes, already it was, like, 11,000 gold differences. Gold. It's just, like, you can't really deal with that. I mean, also, T1, of course, playing some of their most famous champions in, in roles, right? Obviously, you had Zeus play uh, the Yone top. We did, of course, have Faker playing Orianna. So, arguably, even a better matchup into the Corky. We'll see who ends up picking up this POG. Let's take a look at that right now and see if it is going to be Owner or Faker. It will be Owner, in fact, who picks this one up here. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I voted for Ona. I feel like Fake had a really solid performance, but also I think Zach was kind of underperforming, which definitely gave him some favors. Not to criticize Fake's play, he played excellently, but I just think Ona was so active. And I think in all these engages, he really set up the Orianna Shockwave, like this one uh, that we saw before, where he ends up getting kind of knocked about a bit, but still finds the window to turn it around and secure the Shockwave onto Viper. Yeah, I mean, both both players really play really well, be jungle deal, and which is like, I mean, I kind of felt bad also the game one that Faker kind of, you know, he could have gotten, but it's like he kind of, he played really well. Even game two, I think he played really well with a just, I think just laning, just gapping 1v1 is that badly. Like, I think it's crazy. I think the split bot is like expected. Oh, uh, Media went for one for Karia down there. I mean, I think respect in this case because he did roam a lot. He did make a, a large impact, save that play uh, in mid as well. And then two votes for Zeus on the Yone. Not shocking considering once again, he had a pretty nice performance there. Some mistakes from Doran, but was able to layer some of that CC, of course, with uh, the Rel. So ends up being a uh, very close vote at the end. But guys, every week we do take a look at our best ceremonies of the week. So we're going to roll this forward here in just a moment and show you guys this week's best ceremonies, starting with Showmaker. Nice little cue on, like, take the picture. Pretty solid, yeah. I would say. Uh, <laughs> my effort. I like, pull. I like the pull. The confidence. He's like, oh, I'm here. I'm in the LCK right Pull now. is here. I like it. I think it's pretty good. It's kind of chat. Very Chad. Oh, I like this, yeah, when they all came on with the glasses. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. It's one of their sponsors, too, so I thought it was a really nice touch uh, to bring these out here. Very, like, very clean. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like the pool party vein skin has like glasses, like the same color, yeah. same tint. Graves, as well, I think, has very similar ones. Is This will be Canyon. He said he'd do it. He delivered. He delivered. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't quite have the same expression as Showmaker does when he goes for... Goes for the punch, but still, still solid. Uh, the Cuz classic. Thank he you. loves to do that. But we do guangos. Yeah, nice little touch there. Oh, Guma. Oh, we've seen this one before. I love how the oh, cameraman the gets in. Good. I love how the cameraman gets into it as well. Sponge. Yeah, it's like the casters were talking about this a bit of a meme uh, related to this one. Um, you know that we have seen before, but. Let us know, chat, who you think the best ceremony of the week here was. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. What about you two? A favorite? Ooh, uh, I'm kind of liking the little Guma dance, you know? I'm kind of vibing with it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of vibing with the DK, it's the sunglasses, the glasses. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I'm vibing with that. Yeah. All right, I like the glasses as well myself, but we do, of course, have Deer once again standing by with T1's POG interview. So Deer, take it away. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Zeus and owner of T1. Congratulations! Let's hear how you feel. Zeus? In today's match, I feel like I can recall so many moments where I didn't do well, but I think my teammates really covered it and they were able to hang on for me, so that's why we got today's win. And owner, how do you feel about today's victory? I know Hanwha Life Esports was on an undefeated streak. They have a good momentum going on, but we're able to bundle up as a team and uh, overcome their undefeated streak. And I'm really happy that we got today's win. And you're right, you guys looked very prepared against such a strong opponent today. So how was the pro practice process like? I think we investigated into uh, what kind of picks uh, Hanoi Life Esports plays or their play styles. 
And I think we were able to get that advantage from all the info that we had from the team. Uh, and Zeus, you picked Yone against Aatrox today, and in this matchup, you're on a six-win undefeated record, including international matches. So please share any tips that you personally have. Uh, I guess rather than having a tip, I think I just play really well and work really hard. And yeah, even before I can actually mention anything about tips, I feel like I did tip so bad. I think uh, before 20 minutes, I was not doing very well. So, so I can't really share any tips uh, as a player who didn't do so well today. And we noticed some great mind games going on at one point. So let's take a look at this replay. And Zeus, instead of looking at Corky, you decided to go into Zaya. So, Corky, uh, I think Corky wasn't exactly the good target because Zaya was someone who, or Zaya was the champion that was fed. So I think that's why I went in for Zaya instead. And how did you react to this, Zeus, or owner? Uh, I said, nice. And Zeus, at the start of game two, we noticed that you were bullying the enemy near their blue. So what was the strategy here? You know, I had no thoughts going in, but I saw that I noticed that it was Cassante and Vi, and I I thought to myself, maybe something fun can happen here. So I had a lot of fun in that moment. Yeah, you guys had a great result there. And owner, were you thankful that Zeus boomed the enemy jungle? How does that make you feel? You know, I was having a really good time jungling thanks to him, so I think that's probably why we ended up getting a victory. I think if I were him, I think I can do, I can pull off that play as well. And owner, you also had an amazing Drake steal. So let's take a look at the replay here. Did you fly over here thinking that you will get the Drake steal? I noticed that they're. Uh, their jungler was not there, so I knew that I could steal it. And I think the plan was to open up a team fight right after I get the steal. And so, during the entire game, we noticed how pro proactive when you guys uh, were. Zeus and owner, you both were very proactive in roaming. So if you can sum up the key to T1's macro in one word, what would it be? I will just say T1. Zeus, you don't seem so happy about that. Good answer. Uh, yeah, it's not really an interesting answer. So T1 concluded week two with two consecutive wins, and you guys will be against DRX and OK Savings Bank Breon. What is your resolution, Zeus? I don't believe that the opponent is what matters. I think we'll have to, I'll have to practice a lot because I was personally disappointed with myself today. An owner? So regardless of the opponent, I believe we have to do a good play ourselves. So we'll make sure to prepare for next week and play well in the remaining matches. And Zeus, any word for Helios? Who who added on to your plays today? Uh, thank you so much for, you know, always taking the time to analyze my plays. I hope that I get to see you in person soon. And this will be the end of the interview with Zeus and owner from T1 and back to the space. Thank you so much, dear, as always, for a great translation. Really cool interview there. Like to see the respect as well, knowing bro. It's definitely going to be a, a weaker opponent, but saying... And we take every opponent very seriously. We will be preparing very well. And I, I thought, uh, generally speaking, pretty nice interview. A lot to, a lot to hear there from those two players. Hanwha Life, with this loss, though, dethroned from the first place they held so long. Yeah, and I think this is always sort of going to happen as, like, it depends on the schedule, depends who you're going up against. Like, T1 obviously were low in the standings, but their one loss was obviously to Gen G, who looked so on form right now.
Yeah, I'm really looking towards this, the win streak that Genji has a 4 and T1 has a 3. Like, I don't know how long it's going to be, and I think I'm eyes on it. Well, let's take a look at next week's matches as well. Anything that really stands out to you guys? I think for me, I'm looking at Firex against Nongshim. I know a lot of people are going to look at the teams at the top of the table, but I feel like it always is interesting how the sixth place sort of battle ends up playing out. And I feel like both of these teams are probably aiming to sort of line up around there in the standing. So a match between them always has huge stakes. And I think roughly, I think Firex has the edge at the moment, but roughly similar in power level. So it should be a close one. Yeah, I'm the one of the persons that looking for top of table, like what the, uh, Ox said. Like I'm looking forward to see the DK against the HLE. I think it's going to be really fun. And it's going to be the deciding whether the who's going to be actually, you know, at the west, the west side of the team who's the stronger. We also, of course, do have challengers. So, you know, this is something you guys can check out on our personal streams. We'll be Chronicler streaming this tomorrow, and then Ox will be streaming it on Tuesday. So look forward to that. It's been a great week of LCK. We finished with a banger. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on The Space, and thank you guys for watching at home. We'll see you more. We'll see you next week for week three of the LCK. Enjoy the break. <laughs>